Oh yeah, everybody. It is a Saturday, which means it is a fight day at the Fight Club. So let's get the party started. Let's go here. What's going on, everybody? Yours truly, Jay Smoothie, here to give you the commentary for not one, not two, but three events today. I'm going to be going live, of course, give you guys commentary for Zhang versus Joyce. A special boxing match over on ESPN Plus, brought to us by Queens Barry Promotions and Frank Warren's old ass. Then we will go over to Bellator uh, for Johnny Eblen and Fabian Edwards, and of course, we will be covering the UFC Faziv and Gamrut. So we got three big cards on deck. I have currently like three screens in front of me. Only two of them have fights right now. The UFC is not on. Zhang and Joyce's undercard is on right now. And, of course, Bellator's uh, prelim fest has pretty much begun. Uh, so let me go ahead and get the animal room up here. Shout out to everybody that is already here. Let's get the whole lineup of everybody. Let's see if we get this up. And here we go. Let's see. Shout out to Skate, uh, Pullman, Gary is here, Nightbot's awake. Vietnamese Style is here early. Good to see you, bro. And what's going on, Cayman Rider? Cayman Rider also here as well. So we're really just going to get things started here, I believe, over on Joyce and Zhang. Let me see what fight is on right now. If they even updated it. No, they haven't updated shit yet. Okay, so I'll get back to that. The main card for Zhang and Joyce doesn't start for like three hours, so we got like time on that anyways. Right now, the only event really going on is Bellator at the moment. And their little prelim fest. They actually had a submission just go down, and we're about to get... Good lord. Prelim number 12. 12 fucking prelims. And they still got three of them bitches left, and they still have a whole main card left. My goodness. Let's see what everybody's saying in there. Hell yeah, appreciate it. Good to have you here, bro. Let's see. Cayman Rider says, Gamers underdog, 2023 underdog takeover. He might hit again. It's, it is possible. It's going to be a very good fight later on tonight. Good to see, of course, Guilty. Hope you're doing well, my dude. Uh, Gilby says, hell yeah, Rush Hour MMA, best commentator with my main man, Jay Smoothie. Let's go, let's go, my friend. Let's go, my friend. I hope you're ready to go. I hope everybody's ready to go. Jay Limbs on Jay Limbs. You ain't lying about that, man. Twelve of these bad boys going on in Bellator right now. Uh, Zeng and Joyce, of course, going on. The undercard over there. And the UFC doesn't start for shit. It looks like another two hours or so. Hold on, let me fix this, by the way. Adjust the clock here. And, hold on, let me do a little creative editing here. Oh, there we go. And, let's do that. Fit me there. Fit me there. Okay, yeah, I think that's just about good enough right there. But, hey, hope everybody, of course, doing good that way. Let's go ahead and cheers it up and get things started. Sipping on some beer today. Some more Blood Orange IPA. I got a, oh, shit, hold on. There we go. Let's give myself a little bit of, a little bit of room here. Uh, let's see. There we are. Okay. Yeah, I think that works. Let's put the clock like right over there. All right. But yeah, this should be a good day, though. We're gonna have a long. It's gonna be a long day of fights, though. Long fucking day. Bellator doesn't start for two hours on their main card, and of course the UFC doesn't start with their prelims for another two hours, so we're really just getting started here. Uh, let's grab this. Let's see, fuck me, KFC, he's a, uh, a skate, let's see, cheers, cheers, but aren't IPA sounds good as hell, says Teddy. Good to see you, by the way, Teddy, it is, man, it is very good. Haven't had beer in a little bit, figured I'd go ahead with a little IPA, because why not? Cheers, everybody. Good to see you, Steve Sparks. Hope you're doing well, my guy. Good to see you, my dude. Let's see. Crypto Finance Moises, Utama, and Anime Busita finish. I don't know who the fuck those people are, but I'll look. Hold on. Let's see if that's a Bellator thing. What are those two fucking names? Moises Utuma. Oh, I think it's boxing. Let me check. Oh, nope. They haven't fought yet. They have not fought yet. 
No results on that one. I believe they're just... Let's see, which fight is this? I believe the fight they're in right now, which is in round number seven, looks like an eight-rounder. I believe right now it is Zach... Looks like Zach Parker and Khalid... Actually, no, wait, hold up. I'll find out in a minute who that is. Scroll up a little bit. We got, like, this shit all over the place. Actually, no, wait, I think I was right. I think it is Zach Parker. Okay, so they're, like, right there with it. Uh, let's see. Cheers, filthy fucking animals. Go buffs. That's right. The fucking buffs start at, like, uh, 3.30. Got that bitch already on ABC. I'm ready for him. Let's see. ABC, right? Yep, it is ABC. I was right. Why are people betting on Jake Collier, says Akata Police. That is an excellent question. Why would anybody bet on Jake Collier? They must really hate Muhammad Usman. They must think Usman is fucking garbage or something. Let's see what's up, Teddy Sparks. Okay, there we go. Let's see what's up, Teddy Sparks. Last night. Zane Joyce card. Yeah, it hasn't happened yet. Has not happened yet. Uh, as of right now, zero results. The results are literally right above my head. And yeah, no no results yet. Right now, we are looking at Karrion Clark over on the Bellator card. The Zane Joyce undercard, of course, is underway. But yeah, he has not fought yet course when that fight and when the more important fights on the card do happen i will update everybody i pick collier tonight usman ain't shit says paul man i'm about to say a lot of people don't like usman they they just look at the brother and they're like oh uh i think it's a little uh lacism to be honest yeah it could be could be a variety of things maybe they don't have faith in his gas tank maybe they think he's too much of a back alley brawler maybe they don't like him because he's nigerian it could be a variety of things Website, you looking for results? Tapology.com. Here we go, folks. Round number one for Clark and for Gorney. Early pressure being put on by Clark. We have two cards going on right now. We have Bellator going on, and then we have Zhang and Joyce going on right now. Uh, I'll find out what fight that is. They don't even have their fucking names up for that undercard, but I know it's not a teammate. Oh, damn, now Clark's gonna take him down with a single leg, and he gets him down. Shit. That is crazy. Crazy shit now by Clark, and now Clark, of course, gonna do his lay and pray. Let's see, thanks. No problem at all. Cheers, by the way, everybody. Uh, let's see. You see, we we'll want that. Oh, they probably don't want Collier to win, but shit, if it did, if it did happen, it would certainly, it would certainly make things interesting for them. No doubt about that. At least when it comes to trying to book a guy who won tough and then ended up losing. Good work by Clark on top, by the way. Fans start to boo a little bit. Good up kick by Gorney. Gorney with some nice up kicks. Good scrambling by Clark. Clock on the ground, 3.25 to go. Let's see, hold up, let me send this out real quick. Let's see. Still Clark, just kind of holding him there. More lay and pray by Clark, and of course the crowd is not happy at all with that shit. Down to about 2.50 to go. Good ground and pound now in the, in the half guard, I'd say, for Clark. Now he returns to the full guard. Good match. Oh, big up kick now by Corny, and it knocks Clark back. Holy shit. And now Corny just holding on to him. He almost knocked him out with a fucking up kick. That is, that is true Bellator shit right there, getting knocked out by an up kick. Either way, in any matchup in the UFC, it's a win for the promotion. Eh, the promotion don't give a fuck. They'll, they'll, they'll book flies fucking, you know what I mean? It, it, it don't really matter to them. They made so much money, they don't even care. I'm surprised Clark actually didn't knock out Gorney with that. That up kick was fucking nasty. I actually know that Gorney didn't knock out Clark with it. Gorney is on top. Can he float over to the half guard? Not quite. It's like a little half guard thing right there. 
About a minute 50 to go. See, Dane got me a care package. UFC hat, one hat, power slap shirt, two fight kits, Hallerhead shirt, and a Nate Diaz shirt. Solid man. Hey, that's good. He's taking care of his, uh, his fellow Caucasian brothers in arms. That's always good shit. That's always good shit. Down to 130 to go. Work by Clark now. Clark holding on to the head of Gordy. Oh, yeah, let's go with the head. And now he's going right over the back with it. Oh, he's leaning over. He's leaning over with Gordy now. Maybe going for a rear naked choke. Maybe. Oh, very good job. Let's see. I'm Mexican. Full on or only half? I actually didn't know that. I always thought I always figured you were white, but I never really knew. Uh, and 50 seconds ago, at least he knows he takes care of people that aren't white. That's always a good sign. Even though I'm pretty sure if it was a black person, he definitely would decline. Look at that work by Clark. Oh shit, Gorney's gonna get choked now. I don't. Not only did he give up his back, he pretty much gave up the dominant position he had. When he landed that fucking up click on Clark, and now he's going to get choked out for another. Down to 25 seconds to go. He's going for a rear naked choke. Can he get the rear naked in? Wow, he's not even going to get it in all the way. And by the way, some fights over on the Joyce and Zhang undercard just ended. Who the f They don't even have their names up. That production by Frank Warren is fucking terrible. Let's see, true, 50 Mexican, 25 native, 25 white, oh, see, I didn't know that. I did not know that, Skate. That is actually pretty good. That is good shit. And that's cool that you have native. I actually have native blood in me, too. I think it's, uh, I believe the tribe is called Blackfoot Indian or something like that that I have. And I think it's, I want to say like 20%, 20, it's, it's mainly African. But, of course, uh, Native American, I'd say it's about 20% in there. Thanks a lot, Paris. <laughs> That's a good mix, though. At least it's not, like, at least it's not, like, three random, like, races in one, you know what I mean? But 50 Mexican, 25 Native, and white boy, it's not bad. At least it's not, like, like, fucking, like, Mexican, Irish, Asian, like, five, six fucking mixes in there. That's a pretty good mix. That's pretty solid. By the way, is the ground done? Oh, I don't even think it's done. By the way, let me go over to Zang. Wait a minute. Oh, wait, they got one more round? Oh, I thought that shit was done. <laughs> oh, shit, okay. Fuck, I was not paying attention with these damn discount fights that they got and shit. So, hold up, let me put this back up here. Round. Uh, round two. I keep by Clark. So yeah, let me see who the fuck is done over here on this card real fast. Oh, there's another takedown by Clark. Uh, let's see. That's definitely not Anthony Yard. I know that. I think it might... Oh, I think it's this guy. Okay. It's this dude right here. It's this homie. Okay, it took me a minute. I'm like, they don't they don't have their names up on the Queensberry promotion. It's very amateurish of Frank Warren to do that. 50% THC, 50% alcoholic. <laughs> there you go. That's a good mix too, Pullman. Discount fights. <laughs> Yo, you know what's so funny? when when If PFL doesn't buy out Bellator, all of these contracts you see on these like 15, 20 fight cards, they're all going to be for cheap, man. They're going to be at a discount, fucking 90, 95, 100% off on every single fucking contract. This is like the, oh wow, they got a, they're doing a little timeout here. I think they got a clash, wait, what the fuck? Get poked in the eye or something? Hmm. Cheers, by the way, everybody. I'm hitting the gumbo. I got the gumbo pack with the blood. Orange IPA. Haven't had beer in a bit, so fuck it. Let's see. We talking 10-10. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. On the low-low. <laughs> Cheers.
True shit, man. Ten for ten. Oh, they're taking a point a point away from dude. Excuse me. Some of them will end up on contender. Oh, I believe it. I wouldn't be surprised if they took a guy like uh like Kai like like say like a guy like Kai Kamaka. Um, that one heavyweight whose name is, like, James that has, like, two, three fights. Like, some of the guys that, uh, Bellator have as, like, younger talent that they couldn't develop. Oh, yeah, they're gonna throw them on contender let them fight for a spot. So, I can absolutely see that happening. By the way, the boxing match is now over. It looks like up next, between Alois Jr. and, uh, that motherfucker's over, the Romanian... So it looks like the guy who wanted a Tuma and a mine. That one looks like it's about to happen next, but I will let you know, of course. Some of them are a contender. Hit the dispo this morning. Purple Churro, Shoki, Power Ups. Ooh, amazing, man. That's some good shit right there, bro. That's some amazing shit right there. That's a good takedown by Clark. An excellent takedown by Clark, actually. That's some good shit, man. You got pretty. You, you hooked yourself up right there. And you know what? Considering it's going to be a long day of good fights, that's actually a, uh, a good selection to, to pick because the main events are actually pretty solid today. Even though Bellator is, I mean, at the end, let's see. Watching Peter Queeley get knocked out is always funny. Same with Charlie Ward. He's a good bum. Man, Sewer on this card. He's, he's an example of a guy that I think will end up on Contender Series. Like, when I think of Contender guys in the future, he's probably one of them. Uh, let's see, main card... Chikeli Hamasi. Yeah, it'll be a nice, fun, sloppy brawl. Mads Brunel, Weichel. Weichel's gonna retire. Brunel, they'll probably... Eh, they'll probably put him in contender. Oh, Lord, this is a terrible bathroom break fight. 4-0, 9-5. That'll be boring. What's going on, Bones Daily? Great to see you, playboy. Hope you're doing well, my guy. Aaron Pico and Pedro Cavallo. Pico, I can see going to the UFC. Like, not even contender. I can see him being just straight up signed to the promotion. Same with Johnny Eblen, same with Fabian Edwards. I can see, like, these three, like, straight up being signed to the UFC. But even so, man, you can just tell with all these, with, with literally just this entire Bellator card being stacked up with 20 fights. And, wow, it's fucking over. He just choked that guy the fuck out. Clark finally ended it. I think I don't know if Clark helped his value or hurt it there, but at least he got the finish. So, let's get that backup round the fuck out of here. Let's get this out of here. Let's see. Peter Queeley. Why? How are the Irish fans still cool with old boy? I'll tell you what. The, the, the bar for Irish fighters is very low. I'd say Ann Gary is probably the closest they have to any sort of savior. And what's sad is that uh, Gallagher never... Gallagher was supposed to be that guy, but he tried to be too much like McGregor, and he ended up getting his ass kicked. As a result of trying to be like somebody that he just couldn't be. Oh, and speaking of Frank Warren, there's his old ass. Over there for Queensberry Promotions. About to happen on ESPN Plus in exactly about three hours from now. Looks like, uh, let's see, Ituma is going to be next over on Zhang and Joyce. This fight for Bellator just ended. Clark with a beautiful submission right there. A little arm and triangle that is now 12 wins for him. Actually, no, that is like 12 prelims down. My bad. Oh, God. I remember Charlie Ward. Charlie Ward, Mansoor, and then Peter Queeley rounds out a 15-fight prelim lineup. 15 prelims, bro. That's got to be like a record right there. I know Bellator loves their prelims. Likes to put 10 of them, but 15 of them bad boys along with five main card fights. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. Still, we got nothing but fire, though. I like that card. The UFC card is going to be fun, too, man. Fazeev and Gamrut's going to be a, a fun time. Bryce Mitchell is going to be fighting for pride against Ige. Karate Hottie, if she loses Michelle Waterson, that might be the last time we see her fight, period. Brian Battle on this bitch. Charles Jordan always fun. Miles Johns, good time, Tim Means, and Andre Fialo, I like that. Cody Garbage, a.k.a. Cody Brundage, against Jacob Malkoon. Of course, Jay Collier, Muhammad Usman. 
can can the bigger and stronger uh, Usman brother, I believe he's the younger one compared to Kamaru, can he be anything that his brother was? I'm going to say no, but it'll be interesting to see if, if he can try. Uh, OnlyFans model Hannah Goldie is on this card as well. And Mosserat, who for some reason was not on the Mexican Independence Day card last week, found her way onto this UFC Vegas card. So that should be all right. I am looking forward to this ESPN card. Even though this is another Apex special, I see a lot of names on here that I actually want to watch fight. More than I could say for this discount Bellator card. And for Zhang and Joyce, there's only two fights on this card that I give a shit about. Number one is Anthony Yard. It's weird, man. Anthony Yard always looks good against low competition. He'll have a step up every now and again, and he'll sink or swim, and then he'll go back to lower competition. He just fought uh, fucking, uh, not Kovalev. It was somebody else that was supposed to fucking beat him, and he ended up putting on a very good performance. I, hold on. Let me see who it is. Let me see who it is. Let me see. The last guy you fought. Artur Better Biev. That's who it is. It was Better Biev. He put in a very good performance against Better Biev and only lost because his corner stopped it. Um, yet he's going to fight a complete, like, 22 and 8 fucking basically punching bag now. You go from Better Biev not even aiming for another champion. You're just going to go right back to the Uber drivers and shit. And then, of course, Zhang and Joyce in the main event. I think Zhang is going to destroy Joyce. The The cap that I saw, the over-under, was 10 and a half rounds. I'm betting the under. Zhang and the under is the move, everybody. If you want some extra money in your parlay, Zhang and under 10 and a half. I think it's like minus 120 for Zhang, which is disrespectful. He should be a bigger favorite than that. Um, and the under 10 and a half, I think those are two very good additions to your parlays today, folks. Take it now and thank me later. Count the money later and enjoy the money later. Speaking of Zang and Joyce, there is, uh, I see Frank Warren on my one screen. Uh, Frank Warren literally looks like he needs a diaper change and a spoonful of applesauce. Where is his nurse and his caregiver at? My man looked way too old to be out there taking interviews without somebody looking after him. Uh, let's see, it was cracking. Goldie also knows female Michael Chandler. That's true. That girl on more juice than, uh, than, than Chill Sun and during his prime. Uh, no shame. Everybody loses the better be of... Exactly. That's why I'm wondering, why didn't Anthony Yard, like, just fight another champion or another contender? Now he's fighting a complete unknown. It's like, damn, bro, he, he killed your confidence that bad? Got not the fuck out. Says AJ, good to see you, AJ. Better be a fight. Nope. Uh, but a guy better be have fought is fighting. Right above me, of course. You see the results right above my head. Anthony Yard, the last guy that... Actually, I believe his last fight was against better be have and he lost. Fighting Silva in the co-main event. This is the big boxing fight of the main event. Zillian Zhang defending the interim WBO heavyweight title against Joe Joyce. That, of course, the big boxing fight for Bellator. Big main event for Bellator, Johnny Eblen and Fabian Edwards for the Bellator middleweight title. And then for the UFC, their main event, of course, is Rafael Fiziev and Mateus Gamrut. The UFC has not started yet. It will be starting in about an hour and a half. Bellator currently on right now with their long-ass prelim lineup. They're now in prelim number 13. God damn. Uh, and then, of course, Zhang and Joyce kicked off on YouTube their prelims. Actually, their undercards are free on YouTube right now. Uh, so we're kind of checking out Zhang, Joyce on a card, Queensberry Promotions, and Bellator MMA right now. Oh, shit. What's going on, Weedy? Speaking of boxing, fans and boxing, good to see you, my dude. I hope you are doing well. Right now, we're taking in both the undercard of Zhang and Joyce and, of course, Bellator 299. Uh, what's up, everybody? 20 fights. Bellator 12 done. <laughs> How about that? Bellator with a 20, yes, everybody, 20 fight lineup. Look above my head for the results. Look at that, 20 fights. 15 fucking prelims, everybody, 15 prelims. Main card doesn't start till fight number 16 for Bellator. That's where Bellator is right now with their everything must go. Uh, everybody's contract at a discount sale going on right now. I'm smoking on gumbo. 
I'm sipping on some blood orange IPA. Mm, I love it, man. Love it. It's going to be a marathon, man. I went on a little earlier today, for those wondering about the time. Uh, went on a little early today. It's actually a really bad rainstorm where I'm at, so it kind of put a wrench in some of my plans to get shit done, like grocery shopping and get my laundry done, get my car cleaned up, detailed, and vacuumed out, and do the whole car wash thing. I was going to do all that for the fights, but uh, the rainstorm fucked all that up for you, boy. So I pretty much been chilling all day. So I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to go on live and I'm going to hang out with the animals an hour early today. We're going to go eight hours, everybody. It's going to be like an eight hour show today. Cheers, everybody. Middleweights uh, up next with Charlie Ward and Mr. Gregory from France. And actually, folks, hold on. Let me go grab. Yeah, let me go grab a beer. Actually, another beer, because I just realized mine is like halfway empty. So give me one second, everybody. All right, I am back. Cheers, folks. Don't need the Punk and AG previewing every single fight. I know, right? They really love to spam them pretty much doing all that. What the fuck? Let's see. Did the prelims end for Frank Warren? Did it end already? The undercard? Oh, it did. Okay, so now we are awaiting Zang in the fucking uh, main car to start on ESPN Plus, which is not till 5 o'clock. Cheers, everybody. Here we go. Blood Orange IPA. I'll go out the bottle this time. Let's put that cup over there. Alright, so now, folks, we're over in Bellator prelims for now. Of course, when the Zang and Joyce card picks back up, we gotta head right back over there. It says, what up with Streamlabs, Jay? Shit's hard, isn't it? Uh, not necessarily hard. It's just, it's a lot of things to set up. Gotta make sure you set it up, you know, with the account. Then you gotta make sure you have the alerts that sound properly whenever a donation comes through. Then you gotta make sure it's on the screen, and you gotta make sure the voice is at a certain... Like, you have a certain voice that reads it out not too loud, and does it at the right time. Sometimes it'll do it on time, sometimes it won't. So it's a lot I gotta work with with Streamlabs. But don't worry, bro. I will have it up pretty soon. I'm pretty close to it, though. It's just a lot to work with, but I'm figuring it out. Uh, halfway to record score, 450, and 450 Nita says, Getty didn't see Ward fight Fabian last fight. Uh, no, he did not. Fabian fought, um, I believe it was, uh, actually, I think he might have, I think. No, it was the fight before that. Yeah, I was about to say, last time he lost to Mike Shipman. Uh, Edwards, that did happen, though. That was about almost a year ago, about 10 months ago. So, yeah, you technically are right, Skate. Fabian's last fight, I believe, was Gay Gar Musasi. Let me see. Okay, yeah. It was Gay Gar Musasi, then Charlie Ward, then. Oh, that's right, I forgot. He beat Leona Machida, too. He beat up an old Leona Machida. I don't know if I can forgive that. 
Now that I now that I'm reminded of that, I don't even know if I can forgive him for that. <laughs> but nonetheless, that is actually a very good stat, though, Skid. I did not know that. Uh, let's see, soccer, boxing, MMA, on all at once. Oh wow, you're going all out. I have and Gary, I'm kind of like you, but like the American version. MMA, boxing, and American football. You got on soccer, I got on the American football right now, the college version of it. Uh, figured shit would be easy, or so everyone else uh, could have it. Yeah, I thought it would be too, man, but it's actually quite the uh, quite the little setup. But I am figuring it out at least, so it's all good. Uh, let's see, that fight uh, was too competitive, <laughs> this is good. Uh, that makes sense. That was a, a very interesting fight. I'm surprised it was as competitive as it was. Let's put that to the side there. Let's get this out of the way. There we go. Now I got a little bit more room over here to work with, so let's clean this out. Let's take another hit of the bong before we get started here. Right now we have Gregory uh, Babine about to fight Charlie Ward. So we're looking at 20, damn, 22 and 11 versus 10 and 8. Wow. One guy who has 22 wins, 11 losses, that's like 500. Actually, no, just about. And then you have another guy who's 10 and 8 on his way to, actually, wait, is that 10 and 6? Oh, it's 10 and 6. Oh, that was 10 and 8. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fucking tablet just fell over. All good though. Here we go, folks. Round one. I don't need that one till later. Here we go. Here we go. Round number one with Bellator. Good side kick to the body from a Bane. Have there for a Bane. Good jab from a Ben. Kind of overextended there. Now restart. Oh, there's a good left from a Ben. And now Ward fly back. Oh, Ward just got knocked out again. He fucking got knocked out. And now a beat all over with Grab. Oh, 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 he's going to knock him out again. Wow, Ward tries to get out of it surprisingly. What are you trying to do? Like a north south choke? No, he's inside control. What the fuck is this? Going for a guillotine? Oh, no. But Bean's still holding onto the head. Charlie trying to get him down. What the fuck? Charlie trying to explode. They're rolling on the floor. Bean gets it over, but Bean got the leg in it. He fucking got him. He fucking got him. Wow. Wow. He choked out Charlie Ward. Holy shit. Wow. Oh, man. He's like, what the fuck? That is hilarious. That is the typical bum right there. Bum fight. Why is it ESPN showing the full fight card? Only see Brock get starting at 4 p.m. here in the States is Marlon. Yeah, I guess they're preferring football over UFC today. I have no idea why they would want to do that. Bunch of casuals when it comes to fighting. Let's see. It's much healthier to vaporize your weed. Uh, I don't really give a fuck. As long as I get high, that's the only thing I care about. Let's see, Ward is a bum. <laughs> it's a skate. <laughs> He really is. Look at this shit. He had it, though. He had it one, too. He was hitting him, and then bam. It was the punch, really, that sent him to the floor that really ended his night and ended his life. Cheers, by the way, everybody. That was beautiful. Beautiful. That was beautiful. Funny that Charlie really tried to charge the guy. And yet all that ended up happening was he ended up almost getting choked. Then he tried to land a couple punches, got dropped. Uh, and then when dude had to choke in again, Charlie's like, oh, no, I'm going to try to fight it. And then, nope, he just ends up tapping out like he always does. Sad. It's fucking sad. Slap grandpa, ba-boom. What's up, y'all? What's going on, Alex? Great to see you, brother. Hope oh, you doing well, my dude. We're hanging out right now. We're waiting for Zang and Joyce, which starts in 
talk about three hours from now. Just about three hours. Oh, hold on. Let me charge my... Get, make sure my laptop is charging here. There we go. Don't know why it was not charging, but I'm glad it is now. Uh, and right now, of course, while we wait for the main car to begin, we are taking in Zhang. I mean, we're taking in Bellator. Bellator, Dublin's little everything must go. Please sign these fighters so we don't have to sign them ourselves. Say it. MVP got subs now. Oh, shit. <laughs> hey, good to see you, Shayway. Good to see you, amigo. I hope you are doing my good, my friend. Salute to you, sir. Salute to everybody. I'm drinking. Hold on. I have gumbo in the in the bog. And I have a blood orange. Hold on. There we go. Blood orange IPA right there. Salute. Let's see. Salute. I'm awake. Indica in the morning, stupid. Why would you smoke an indica in the morning? I'm glad you're awake, Dane, but holy fuck. Why would you smoke an indica in the morning? That is dumb. At least you're awake, though. You are awake, and right now we are just enjoying the uh, the Everything Must Go sale at Bellator. Still on the prelim lineup. And mind you, two prelims left. Mansoor and fucking Peter Queeley's bum ass. Zhang and Joyce, their undercard is done, I believe at 5 p.m. Eastern Time, which is about two hours from now, is when that big boxing match will go down. UFC doesn't start till 4 p.m., so we still got like another hour and 20 minutes before uh, the UFC starts. So right now, we're taking in Bellator. I am taking in Blood Orange IPAs, and I'm taking in some gumbo strain here in the bong. Mm. By the way, hold up. There we go. Uh, of course, they're showing the shit that happened in Maui. That was pretty fucking crazy, too. Put that there. Clean that out. Boom. Okay. What's going on, Gino Alpha? You can see Gino says... The guy they gave Queeley such a bum due to six losses on the Italian regional circuit and Italian MMA really just started. Oh, wow. So they're really trying to, uh, I guess, give Peter a win, huh? How bad is Peter Queeley's losing streak? Let me see. <laughs> Jesus. Knocked out. Decision. Lost a bendo of all people. Knocked out by Pitbull. Last win was two years ago. Where he beat Pitbull due to a doctor stop. It's a cut. Literally a doctor stop, that shit. And for this Italian guy, the cyborg, why'd you steal Chris's name? Uh, Renega Choke. Von Flew. Last loss a year ago. Got knocked out. Knocked out again. And a sub. Wow. <laughs> so they basically gave this guy a sink or swim type of fighter. Okay, so they're trying to really do Mr. Uh... Mr. Queely is solid here. He, if he loses here in Dublin, oh, that's going to be hilarious. If he can't beat this Italian guy, then he better be the first one they cut when that fucking merger happens or when Bellator folds at the end of the year. He better be the first one cut. The first one. It ain't been too bad of a card survivor Bellator. It's true. It's just too many damn fights, bro. It's just way too many fights. I would love to do more of this card, but it's just so many prelims. What promotion books 15 prelim fights? 15 of these bad boys. And then they're going to throw five main card fights on top of that. <laughs> like, that is just that is just a level of, of ridiculousness that I don't know if I can even comprehend. That is so wild to me. Damn good card, though, but yeah, man, just, whew. You want to talk about it going out, uh, basically, an everything must go clearance sale. You're looking at it right here with Bellador. Cheers, folks. Number 
the shit right there. I see Shea Wig. Sorry, this auto correct. Oh, don't be sorry, amigo. We we understand you quite well, my dude. All all's good. Out of his eleven wins, only four of them have been against guys with winning records. <laughs> what? God damn. Only four? Wow, that's yeah, that's that's beyond bad. <laughs> Holy hell, that's not even journeyman level. That's just full on like why are you still fighting level? Holy shit. Why why do they book the guy? I don't get it. And more importantly, why do Irish fans show up for him? He's not that good. Y'all y'all deserve better than that fool for real. That's crazy to me. They literally got that man Peter Queeley as the fucking like headliner here and shit. Or not headliner, but like one of the main preliminary acts. That's just wild to me. Absolutely wild to me. They're at the commentary desk right now, and now they go to the back locker room. Daniel Whitechill. Oh my god, he looks like he's old. Looked like he'd been around a minute. Has a lot of fights for a guy that never made it to like the, the bigger show, but I gotta say, at least he made it to Bellator. Because he's still a serviceable fighter. Shares a salute, my friends. There we are. And now, folks, we await... Very next play card. Where can I watch these fights? On Bellator's YouTube channel. As for Zhang and Joyce, I think. Assuming it's Zhang and Joyce. Uh, let me see that one. Oh, I forgot the zone is doing that fucking Misfits card today, too, which is fucking hilarious. Go back up here real fast. Let's see. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's just Bellator now. All the Zhang and uh, Joyce cards are just waiting for the main card now. Bum tour. <laughs> Bankruptcy. Everything must go sale. On YouTube right now. Showtime later. Very true. My fellow Dane, Mads Brunel, going to go a Viking tonight. He is fighting a bum, so he better not fucking lose. Not even a bum. Actually, no. Whitechel's not really a bum. He's just old. How old is Daniel now, anyway? 42 and 14, 56 total fights. Oh, yeah. I mean, 29 versus 38. Oh, yeah, he's at the end. 42, 14, win-loss, win-loss, and you're 38. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that should be a showcase for meds. It should be. Keyword should be. Should be a showcase. Salute, friends. In terms of uh, lines, by the way, just a little something for everybody to sprinkle on. I know my degenerates, like Dane, are watching, so folks, let me give you a little something to throw in your parlay so that way you don't go home uh, without any money. Hood up, where is it? Ah, here it is. Let's go to the bouts. Ben Davis plus 900, Gabriel Silva minus 2,000. Oh, my God. I forgot the Anderson Silva son fighting a media member. Shout out to Ben. Let's see. Anthony Yard minus 5,000. Oh, yeah. Don't waste your money. Okay. Here we go. Right here, everybody. Plus 100 for Joyce. We're going to go minus 130 for Zhang. And I saw it was under 10.5 yesterday. Now they're moving the line down. Oh, yeah. That under is going to hit. Minus 105, minus 130 for Zhang. Add it to your parlays, everybody. Speaking of that, oh my god, yeah, the algorithms are at full work right now. Holy shit. Um, but yeah, 130 for Zhang, minus 105 for the under 9.5. Fucking hammer it. Got Mansoor, and this one says Gino Alpha. Man, it's pretty good. What the fuck, Bellator app? <laughs> oh, man. Does the, is the Bellator app even, like, useful since, like, they're, at least over here where I'm at, I never see their cards on it. Even though I think they do have their prelims on the website, I think, but I could be wrong. By the way, everybody, hold on. 
Oh yeah, they haven't updated shit yet. So it looks like I think like this fight on down's pretty much done. That fight on down's pretty much done, and it looks like they're gonna have like one, two, three. F okay, they're gonna have five to the. Okay, I see what the fuck they're gonna do now. They're gonna run about like five, four fights maybe to the main event. Unless the those uh, prelims are going to be untelevised, but knowing how Queensbury rolls, they're probably just going to throw like three, four fights out there. Weird how close the odds are. Joyce got smoked last time. He did, man. He got destroyed last time these two fought. Just looking at the comparables between these two. And this was a six-round knockout, too. It's not like, yeah, see, eyes swollen shut. And funny enough, that's how he beat, that's how Joe Joyce beat Daniel Dubois. Jabbed him so badly that the eye closed up. Beat Carlos Takam, easy fight. Uh, he beat Christian Hammer, easy fight. Jo Joseph Parker, that was a, a, a performance, excuse me, that impressed me. But the holes in his game were there. He tried to be George Foreman and just knock people out like later in the fight. And then he ran to Zhang, who has hands like sledgehammers, and it literally destroyed his eye to where, basically, what what he did to Daniel Dubois is the same thing uh, fucking Zhang did to him. Destroyed his eye the same way. As for Zhang, draw with Jerry Forrest. I think in a rematch, he probably beats him. Knocked out Craig Lewis, beat Scott Alexander, lost to Philip Hedrovich, who I believe is going to be a mandatory for Usyk next if he doesn't fight Fury. And then Joyce just got fucking just wrecked by Zhang right here. And Zhang, of course, is the interim WBO uh, World Heavyweight Champ as a result. And if he wins again today to Zhang, he'll be a mandatory for Usyk in the future. Assuming that he doesn't fight Fury. No idea if he'll fight Fury or not. But if he doesn't, at least Zhang will be waiting in the wings. Whooped up on Joseph Parker. Zang got robbed on the cards and his only loss. That is very true. He did. Jesus Christ. Working overtime right there. Let's get that the fuck out of here. There we go. Thank you there, Skate. Uh, let's see. Grabbing some Lion Fight merch tonight, says Dane. Well, you should be able to, considering it's probably going to be at a discount. And Jessica Rose Clark ain't going to be on the card, so they're probably going to just look to give shit away. But hey, you'll be able to get an autograph from her, if anything. I like Lion Fight, too. Only thing is, though, one Muay Thai has ruined me to the point where now, if Muay Thai doesn't have four-ounce gloves, I can't look at it. So I love Lion Fight, but uh, just like RWS and other promotions like Thai Fight League... Actually, I think Thai Fight League already does it. Let's get the four-ounce gloves on him, huh? I don't hate Lion Fight, but... Just seeing one Muay Thai makes me want all my Muay Thai and four ounce gloves. It's like ruined me to that level now. Yeah, I think Head of His Lost to Zhang says Weedy. That's interesting. That fight was closer uh, than it actually did look on paper. And uh, honestly, in a rematch, I would be interested to see that. I got 25 on Goldie, Means, Battle, and Rodriguez payout 408. Woo! I like that, Gino. We like some good parlay lineups around here. Goldie, not bad. Tim Means, I think, could have a good one with Fialo. Battle's a good one. Rodriguez, I like a lot, considering uh, Karate Hotties, like, on the backside of her career, so to speak. So, I certainly like that a lot. Uh, let's see. Throw some on Zing. While you're at it, says Skate. Yeah, I think so. I see Beta Juice Uncle says Andrew Michaels. Where? I don't see him. Oh, and now we get fucking uh, Mansoor now about to walk out. Let's see. I don't know boxing much. Says Alpha Zang, I do believe, is worth the bet, though. Only if you're confident, of course, I would recommend that one. J.J. Wilson walking out first. He's one I could see going to either PFL or UFC when it's time for that whole bidding war. Especially when they're going to shut down. Can you give us your thoughts on Super Tang now that we have a day to simmer? Uh, felt like it was a good fight. That lived up to the hype. Problem is, the weight missed by Super, unfortunately, ruined the five rounds and ruined what we were supposed to get, which was a five-round title fight between two of the best in Muay Thai. But what I can say is, now that we got to see three rounds of it, 
when they do rematch, which is what Chatri wants at 1 165 in Qatar. Uh, hopefully, if Super can make it this time, I think we're going to be in for a fun rematch. And I think in the rematch, we're truly going to find out who's the best because that weight miss just kind of it, it, it kind of fucked up everything. Superlek is the rightful winner. Uh, and I'm sure with the money that's on the line, Superlek will have no problem taking a rematch. But man, if he can make weight this time, hopefully we can get what we actually deserve. Because three rounds for that just wasn't enough. As great as it was, we need more of that. We need a five-round title fight between those two. Three rounds, it was like take, three rounds was like take a real intention. We needed five rounds, take a real intention. We only got three, and then they went their separate ways, and we were left with nothing. At least with this fight, we can get what we deserve this time. So, yeah, I need, I need two more rounds. So, yeah, we needed two more rounds. Yeah, man, it just felt empty without it. Felt empty without those two rounds. Let's see, super fat, says you know. Uh, I was impressed by Rod Tang. His defense was masterful. Seemed like it was his downfall. I didn't throw enough in the 2-3. Yeah, so that that is also interesting as well. Uh, in the first round, he cut up super lek pretty bad. Second round, it was a little bit like concerning to see Rod Tang get clipped like that. Got dropped. Ate that fucking strike on the ground. Third round, to me, I will say this. Third round, I could see it for either fighter. It was that close. I could... Super Lek, I understand. Rod Tang, I understand, too. However, that knockdown made made the difference, but I am with you, though. That fight did express some concerns in Rod Tang. If that fucking weight miss didn't happen, oh, it would be so much easier to decipher, but that weight miss really cast a shadow over it. Also, a draw... Should be one more round, but yes, fight was amazing. It's a shame, too, that one Muay Thai doesn't have draws. They either do split or unanimous decisions, which is always weird to me. Because a fight like that, you could easily rule a draw. Musumechi versus Mighty Mouse. Grappling. Title gonna be so dope, says Gino Alpha. It is gonna be dope, man. I think that'll be a good one right there. And what's funny is, um, Mikey was, uh... No, it wasn't Mike. It was DJ, who won a grappling tournament recently. He, like, ran through the whole fucking field, so that's going to be fun when it goes down. And here we go, folks. Mansoor, Barnawea, and, of course, J.J. Wilson. I was waiting for them to say his last name because I wasn't sure how to say it, but it's uh, Barnawea. Interesting that they still consider Mansoor a, a prospect here since French MMA is now starting to take off. And they go back to Michael C. Williams. Prelims now, of course. They're moving to the lightweight division. Only this and one more prelim left. Thank God. Thank God for that. Let's see. Seven out of nine wins by sub or KO for J.J. Wilson. DJ wins. That'll be that'll be dope. Two sport world champion. Have him fight Takeru after. Oh well, it's escaped. Could happen. It could very well happen. It's not like he's a terrible grappler either. Considering that DJ's, he has one of the best submissions in UFC history with that fucking flying armbar he got on. Um. Ah, oh, who is it? He got it on. I for I forgot who the fuck he got it on. But uh, that flying armbar was one of the best, so it's not like he's lacking ground game. Oh, I think it was Ray Borg. Ray Borg. Ray Borg, so I'm thinking of. Round number one, everybody. <sighs> Round one, everybody. Bonawea and Wilson. Now J.J. Wilson already trying to go for a takedown, but Mansoor Bonawea able to stuff it, turn it around, keep him up only for the moment. Good knee by J.J. Knee now by Mansoor. Clinch by Mansoor. Good knee now by Mansoor to the body. Down to 4.30 to go. Good knee by Barnoni. Actually, no, that's by Wilson, excuse me. Wilson 
holding Mansoor up against the fence. Trying to level change now is Wilson, but there's the defense by Mansoor. Able to keep himself up, only for the moment. Oh, picks him up, dumps him! Fucking dumps him, does J.J. Wilson. Beautiful work. Oh, wow. Dane's got the whole parlay. Fucking Mansoor, Levon, Shaquille, Mad, Sinead. Oh, the under on Aaron Peak. Okay. I was about to say, what the fuck? But, okay. That's not a bad parlay right there, Dane. Let me see. How much is that? Let's see. Okay, yeah, that's not bad. Very good numbers there. Oh, shit. Look at JJ now kind of advancing in the position. On Mansoor here. Oh, yeah, Mansoor. Oh, what the fuck? How did Mansoor flip that? How did he flip that? JJ was in full fucking mount. He was about to be in full fucking mount, and he just flipped it. Unreal. DJ wins. That'd be dope. Just for champion. Have him fight Taker after. Yo, Taker gonna need somebody to f fucking fight. He's definitely gonna need it. Oh, wow. Now JJ Wilson. Looks like he's trying to go for an armbar, maybe? Trying to go belly down with the arm bar. See, nice reverses, Weedy. I love it. Trying to go for that arm bar now. By the way, folks, two hours away from Zang and Joyce going down. Zang and Joyce going down in two hours. Good work by Barnoni. And, of course, when Zang and Joyce are about to hit the ring, I will commentate that fight. That fight's going to happen first. That main event will be first. Fabian Edwards and um, Johnny Eblen will be the second main event. And then, of course, Fazeev and Gamrut will be the third main event later on in the night. So that's how it's going to go. Queensbury first, Bellator second, and then UFC is the third and final main event of the day. And the way the timing lays out, it's all going to work out well. There's a lot of fights on today. Zepeda fights over on zone, And I believe uh, Connor Ben found his way on that card earlier this week. I also saw that Kermel Moulton, that guy that fucking Floyd was saying to Lee Wood, hey, defend your belt against my prospect, is about to make his debut. He found his way on the Charlo Canelo undercard, which I will be bringing to you guys next week. See, so Takeru getting pieced up by Nongo in the gym. Oh, I saw that. I saw that, bro. On Beyond. I don't know. Listen, man. Takeru better stick to kickboxing. I, I hope to God all of his fights are in kickboxing. Because that's his best bet. In Muay Thai, he's going to get destroyed by every single tie in the promotion. All the ties are going to run him over. If he's going to do Muay Thai, he better fight like a Scottish guy with no talent or something. Or fight a guy from like Algeria or something who can't punch. Because he's going to get his face caved in otherwise. Mansoor trying to get the crank right there. Like a neck crank. But JJ able to escape for the moment. Barnaby just kind of controlling everything for the moment. Right now, nothing on Zang and Joyce. I think we're just waiting for the main event to kind of happen here. Which, of course, that'll be a five. Crawford does a fight. Spence or Canelo? Who would you like to see him fight? If Charlo can get past Canelo, I would love to see him fight Charlo. Uh, he's not going to fight Boots Ennis, obviously, even though I would like that. Um, another name I want to throw out there, the winner of Brian Mendoza and Tim Zhu, even though I think both those guys get destroyed by him, I think they put on good fights before Crawford destroys both. Uh, and I would say kind of the only other one I'd maybe consider, like, that I would think about. I thought of, well, actually, no, he turned it down. I was going to say Frank Martin, but Frank Martin already turned down the fight. He's, he's a bitch. He's a duck. I would have said Frank Martin, but that's but he, he already turned it down. Let's see. I like Crawford for his boots. Obviously, he won't fight him. Zoo, Ben, Eubank, Thurman. Eubank would be interesting. Connor Ben would be interesting, but only in the UAE because if Connor's not on his, uh, his juice, he, he doesn't stand a chance. Thurman, same thing. He better be on some vitamins or else he's going to get destroyed. But you're right, though. Those are all really good fights for him. Even though a lot of those guys get destroyed, I like those opponents for him. That's a good choice to skate. I don't think he fights any of those guys. So yeah, it would be a shame. Mendoza going to beat Zoo. I'm calling it now since Gonzalez. Wow. You know what? 
I, I, I'm looking forward to that fight, Weedy, and you're actually the first person I've heard say that. A lot of people think Zoo's going to destroy him, but I'm like, I don't know if that's going to happen. I think it'll be a better fight than that. You're the first person I've heard to say he'll beat him outright. Oh, wow. Is there a bare-knuckle Muay Thai anywhere? BKFC is going to have it November the 4th when Bukau and Sanchai fight each other, so they will have it, but it's only for like one night, which is sad. But at least they'll have it. There we go, folks. Round number two. I don't even know how Feldman got Boo Calvin Sanchez to even agree to that. Here we go. Round number two. Mansoor opening up with a long jab. Kick to the body now by Wilson. Another kick to the body by Wilson. Nice one, two now by Wilson. Already firing back right after the kicks and the punches. Good clinch right there by JJ. Oh, he just spiked Mansoor on his head. Oh, shit. Ah. Oh, that hurts bad. He spiked him right on his head. I don't know how you're going to respond to that. Jeez. Wow, we, I think Zoo destroys everyone without a big name, but I'm a boxing casual. Mendoza's going to be the best fight that Zoo's had so far. Zoo has been fighting a lot of weak opposition so far. Uh, I would say Tony Harrison is, like, the most notable opponent that he's fought, but we all saw how he just ran through Tony like that. Mendoza's going to be a fun fight for him, though. Wait, I didn't consider Feldman making switch to Bare Knuckle Muay Thai. I might find his cook habit for that. Well, it's only for one card. Don't get too excited now. It's only for one card, unfortunately. It's like a BKFC Asia card that they're doing in November. That's like the only time they're doing it. They need to do more of it, though. I don't know why they haven't done it. By the way, good groundwork by Mansoor and by JJ. Let us scramble in by JJ now. Mendoza's on a little upset streak. He got with Salsa, oh wait, with Salas in Vegas, a man who resurrects boxing careers. No, I'm sorry, resurrects careers in boxing. Seems like he's going to save for Mendoza. This is Weedy. You know what? You're absolutely right, and that's one of the reasons I've been impressed with Brian Mendoza as of late. And I think it'll be very interesting when it uh, when those two clash. What's going on, Chase Bishop? Good to see you, bro. Hope you doing well, my friend. Hi there. Good to see you, JD. Hello there. Good work, by the way, by uh, uh, fucking Mansoor. Seeing a bit of a grappling clinic here by Mansoor. They're both rolling around a lot on the floor, surprisingly. A lot of groundwork. Ishmael Salas is a coach. Uh, people go to after a tough loss is weedy. Uh, I'm talking. I'm talking full time switch. How fun that! It'll never happen. Oh, I wanted to. Hey, skate. I'll go double with you, bro. I'll. I'll. Whatever money you put up, I'll match it. I want that too. You speak good English. Thank you. Uh, where are you in? I am in the U.S. of A. Washington D.C. Nation's capital in the U.S. of A. Uh, why are Australians so dominant? Says Alpha. Uh, depending on the sport, but, uh, <laughs> I, I guess maybe it's that hard of determination. I'm not sure. I'd have to ask, uh, Kiwi about that one. Uh, would rather watch Carla Rose 2 than last night eat KFC card. Real shit. <laughs> oh, look at that, because, let's see, they are, they eat KFC McDonald's and stop eating Vegemite, says JD. <laughs> I like that. That's a good explanation, JD. Let's see, J, I'm si 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 bro. <laughs> Shit, let's do it. Let's go half, man. Let's match up on that money and let's get Feldman to do bare knuckle Muay Thai full time. That's the only way their company will be saved because bare knuckle boxing ain't it. The fans have spoken. They want more strikes than just boxing, it seems like. They want the, the game bred bare knuckle MMA experience. By the way, JJ is now on top of Mansoor here on the floor. It's all the Vegemite they eat. I'd rather get hit over the head with a baseball best case. <laughs> Oh, shit. Bro, you know what, Alex? The, the Last night surprised me, man. Never thought Feldman would put on a bad card, but they he, he proved me wrong last night. Last night was one of the worst. I think it might have been, not one of the worst, but, well, not the worst, but it's one of the worst. It's not the worst, but it's one of the worst cards for BKFC I've ever looked at. And I never thought I would see that happen. Five seconds to give, by the way, in round number two. Been a boring grappling fest here. By the way, the Zhang and Joyce undercard already happened. Well, the televised portion of it. 
Now they have untelevised fights, which I haven't even found on the internet yet. But I'm going to wait for the main card at 5 p.m. And when it hits 5 p.m., uh, my coverage of Zhang and Joyce will uh, begin. We'll also start with the UFC at that hour. And Bellator's main card will be on at that hour. So, like, from 4 to, like, basically from, I'd say from, like, 5 o'clock to about 7, 8 o'clock. It's about to be three fights on at once. For a good two hours, it's going to be three events on at one time. And it's all going to be which one is more entertaining. That will uh, determine which one I put it more, I say put more focus into. And round number two is now over. Thank God for that. That was boring. Cheers, everybody. See, check cash apps, escape. Oh, shit. Oh! Hold on. Let's see. Let's go for it. Let's see what it, what it is. Oh, shit! Here we go. Skate with the 20. For gonna be a long one. Uh, get you some grub with this 20. Hell yeah, my brother. Bet. Bet, my man. I'm a, I'm gonna order me a pizza and shit. Thank you, Skate. You want a trifecta, my friend? You got it. Appreciate the 20 spot right there, my dude. Dropping some in the cash up. So, let's, let's do this the right way. You know what? Actually, one second. I have a beer here, but you know what? We're gonna we're gonna do we're we're gonna do a shot for this one. So everybody, give me one moment. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go get my shot glass and my 1856. One second. All right, I'm back. All right, folks, I'm back. Cheers, everybody. Boom, salute. This one's for you, Skate. Ay, 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 ay. Part one. Let's go for part two here. Let's see, Jay's gone for liquor. <laughs> I love it. Cheers, everybody. Part two. And now, let's go for part number three right here with the bong. Let's see. There we go. By the way, JJ and Barnioni still doing a lot of... Oh, my God. Fucking Mansoor getting grounded and pounded on the floor now. They were doing a lot of scrambling, but man, he's struggling on the bottom. Cheers, everybody. Perfect. That one was right. That one was for you, Skate. Appreciate the 20 spot, my dude. Down to 240 to go in this fight. Actually, like 230. Where I, oh, wait a minute. Wait a second. Wait a second. There we go. Got to get that shadow out of there. Actually, wait a second. Okay, there we go. I'm like, why is that shadow still on the screen? But there it is. It's all gone now. By the way, JJ looks like he's completely out of fucking gas. He's like, he's looking up at the clock like, how much how much time I got left? How much time? When you start looking up at the clock, that is that is a horrible fucking sign. JJ was peasing him up for a few seconds. He's weird. Yeah, I was about to say, it seemed like he has the better striking here. So I was a little surprised to see Mansoor struggle on the ground. Now Mansoor, of course, on top. Been a bit of a ground battle between these two. Not bad, though. Now Mansoor just kind of on top of him. Going to keep that right arm trap as Mansoor. 
Mansoor holding on tight. More ground and pound now for Mansoor. Gonna make sure this shit adds up. JJ Mansoor, worse than it should be. <laughs> I'm actually surprised by that. I thought this would be at least a decent prelim featuring two contracts that I think maybe like uh, both. I think may not the UFC though. Maybe the UFC for like one, maybe for contender. But I would think maybe like uh, PFL one championship would be interested in these two. Especially if they wanted to tap into the, um, if they wanted to bring, like, another Aussie fighter through, another New Zealand fighter from Oceania through, another Oceanic fighter, I should say, through, in JJ. Or if they want to tap into the French market a little bit, does one with, uh, Mansoor, that'd be an interesting pickup for one. The UFC, if they want to continue their France, their little takeover of France with all these French guys they have, like, Gone and Saint-Denis and shit like that. Uh, Mansoor would be a nice little name like they, that they could have for their preliminary lineup. JJ, don't really know where he fits in, I guess, because of the Oceania ties. You know, the UFC could book him in, like, UFC New Zealand, UFC Australia, somewhere like that. <coughs> so both, both companies, UFC and Juan, have uses for him. PFL, I don't know. PFL... They'll add them both, let them, like, in the tournament or whatever, but they'll get lost in the shovel. Oh, my God! Fucking JJ going for the armbar on Mansoor! That is tight! Oh, my God! Oh, that's a tight armbar, though, for JJ! He lean it back on it! He crank it on that! Oh! Oh! Oh, JJ fucking the arm up! He's gonna rip it! Ah! Oh, Mansoor's trying to fight it! Ah! Oh! Oh! He almost had it! That close! Close, but no cigar! Oh! Armbar. Man, oh man. He. Oh, so close. Oh man, so close. I thought that was his. That was his, man. Fuck. That was his. It should have been anyway. That's fucked. Oh, he got burned there at the end. That should have been his. Good job of surviving, though, by Mansoor. We're going to see who wins this shit, but... Whew. Oh. Kidding me. That was fucking spectacular. By the way, let me check something. Any updated results on that? No. Wow. All right, there we go. I'll leave that up there for now. Shit, man. Good armbar right there. That was crazy. See Rashad FC all day every day. What's going on, Flores? Good to see you, Flores. Hope you do well, my dude. Great to see you, my guy. You already know how we doing, my dude. Let's see what the judges got to say about this shit. First judge. Twenty nine, twenty eight. Winner by decision. Oh, they gave it to JJ. Nearly got that arm. Oh, man, nearly got that arm, but shit. JJ gets the win. Gets the win by decision there. Let's see. Oh, they're going to update it in a minute. Good shit, though. They did give that to JJ. JJ nearly snapped the arm, though. Nearly snapped it. Goodness. Let's see. We go down here. Oh, Anderson Silva's son knocked out that media member guy he was fighting. Oh, damn. That's a shame right there.
By the way, JJ with the very emotional and impassioned speech right there. There it is. Decision win. One more prelim, everybody. And then when the main card starts at 4, that is when the UFC starts at 4. And then at 5 o'clock, Zang and Joyce. And when that main event starts, I will be doing commentary for that. So I might have to miss a fight or two on the UFC card. Actually, no, I shouldn't have to. First two fights are... Actually, no, wait. Oh, yeah, first two fights are bathroom break fights. Thank the Lord for that. Okay, good. That gives me some extra time there, then, when covering Bellator and Zang. Okay. Shit, that works out in my favor. I am good with that. So Wilson gets the dub. And now, folks, the final preliminary fight of the Bellator card. 15 of these motherfucking bad boys, man. What in the fuck? How you gonna get 15 of these motherfuckers right here? 15. That's just insanity, man. Fucking insanity. Oh, shit. There it is, everybody. And now we await for Peter Quilly and more to arrive. Let's see here. Let's see, let me scroll through. There we go. Put this one on the side right here. So, yeah, up next we got Peter Quilly and the Sheet. This should be interesting, at least in terms of watching somebody just get knocked the fuck out for our entertainment. I think we should be good here. I think we're pretty much primed to watch somebody get absolutely fucking ran through here. We're due for it anyway. We're due to see it. Let's see, we got, uh, hold on. I see Zang and Joyce. Of course, there. And then, let's go down to. The UFC right there. Hell yeah, let's do the shit, man. By the way, let me... Hold up. Let's do another cheers, everybody, for those that are here. Since we are waiting right now. By the way, I think it is almost... Is it almost Buffalo and Oregon time? Coach Prime. Deion Sanders. Got a game today. Yeah, 10 minutes, Colorado, Oregon. Put that shit on my TV real quick. Yeah, there we go. Now I got MMA, boxing, and football in front of me. No boxing fights have happened, though. We're just kind of waiting for the for the boxing to take place. I like that lady they got up on the desk, though. I'm loving that lady they got up on the desk, though. That's some good shit. Hopefully they got a job for her when Bellator folds up. I would hate to see her go on the unemployment line just because... Uh, Scott Coker decided to phone it in years ago. Here we go. Let's set that back up here. Boom. I'm going to go hit the bathroom real quick, by the way, before I take this next round. So, everybody, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. Boom, I'm back. She got some big chompers, teeth, like a row of headstones. <laughs> I love it. I love it. You ain't lying, though, my friend. You ain't lying at all. Plug this in real fast. Let that charge up. Boom, there we go. Perfect. And you know what? Let's put Zang. Zang and Joyce card right over here, just in case.
I love how they have like the Showtime crew doing an interview, like they're interviewing a guy in a suit, and you wouldn't even realize it's an MMA fight until you see that Bellator logo on the side of that microphone there. Put this over here. Okay, this should, be, in terms of quick knockouts, I expect Peter Queeley to get finished in at least two rounds here. This should be like a quick, I'd say, sort of prelim. And considering the fact that Bellator literally has 30 fucking minutes to get this prelim in, and I'm actually surprised that they don't have, excuse me, I thought they were going to have post limbs because of 15 prelims. I thought they have a post limb, but no, they were able to fit all 14 in. So now they're going to take their time and get this 15th one out there. And then again, I wouldn't be shocked if they said, Oh, wait, we got some fucking post limbs we want to put out there. Then they just throw the post limbs out and shit. Would be crazy, of course, if they did that. Let me go over here real fast, though. Let's put that here. Uh, brightness high. Oh, just regular shit. All day, every day. You know it, man. All day, every day, indeed. Right now, we kicking back. Cheers, homies. And by the way, just kind of, I'd say, just like picks-wise, just to make some picks for, for the fuck of it. Obviously, I'm going to go for Michelle over Queeley. I'm going to go for Hamasi over Chikeli. Actually, no. Opposite. Chikeli over Hamasi. Mads Brunel should win. I don't care for these two, but uh, uh, Sine Kavanaugh should win. Aaron Pico should win that because Carvalho is not what he used to be. Shell himself. And then Eblin should be able to beat Edwards soundly, even though I think it'll be a good fight. He's fighting right now. I got my prize picks on the line. This is Drake. Oh, so let me know what they are. Nobody's fighting right now, bro. <coughs> Excuse me. Nobody's fighting right now. Uh, it's a lot of stalling at the moment. They're about to bring out Queeley and Michelle right now. They waited a good 5-10 minutes before bringing them out. But at least they are now on the way. Queely now on his way out. Let's put this up. Let's see. Michelle walking out first. See if Zhang and Joyce is on right now. See if they got the undercard working, that is. Let's see. By the way, spend a bunch of UAE guys to emerge. Uh, and PFL Saudis about PFL pumping cars with zero zero Arabic guys crush cans. I believe that. By the way, I do have the Zhang and Joyce undercard now that they're not televising anywhere else. Let me see who's on though. I think it is. Let's see, that's ten rounds of a fight. Is that Ezra Taylor? No, no. Oh damn, somebody got knocked down. Okay, let me see. Nope, it's not Yard and him. Taylor McIntyre? Ah, yeah, I think it is Taylor. No, wait, I think it is? He's got, like, USA colors on. Oh, he's just he's got the Apollo Creed shit. Yeah, so I'm thinking it's Taylor McIntyre right now. I'll put that up for now. Since that is a... No, wait, that's an eight-round fight. Okay. It's O'Leary and fucking Kane Gardner. Which I believe is the matchup happening right now. Or is it, wait, I saw Kali, oh wait, no it isn't, I about to say, these motherfuckers are starting to blend in a little bit, okay, it's that one, I have Bryce for more strikes, 39, Jacob Malcolm with 37, well here's the problem, the UFC card hadn't started yet, UFC card not on yet bro, that shit don't start until like 4 o'clock, so you still got like a whole 30 minutes where they start over there. By the way, somebody with the... Oh, Peter Queeley now getting his fucking song on. He's walking out to... Oh, my God. He's walking out to Zombie by Cranberries. Why? <laughs> he's not a legend. He's not the Korean zombie. I hope Peter gets knocked out for ripping that song off. He's not worthy of walking out to such an epic song. 
Oh my god, that's terrible. Peter's gonna get knocked out in front of his people after walking out to Zombie. That's embarrassing. At least when Zombie got knocked out by Holloway, he had some class. This guy, look at this. He looks like he got off a fucking bus stop. Literally looks like a bum. <laughs> he looks like he drives either a bus or a cab for a living. By the way, over on the Zang Joyce on a card, which I had to pull up a little side stream for. Yep, it is Khalid, by the way. I can see Gino. I hope Peter gets slept. Absolutely. Oh, they're talking to Joe Joyce back there. Joe Joyce looking healthy for this, but uh, I think he's going to get slept. Okay, so I found the fights now. They were untelevised, but I found it. Parker and Khalid are fighting over on the Joe Joyce and Zang undercard, so I'll update you guys on who wins that fight. Bellator, we have Peter Queeley and uh, Daniele. And UFC has not started yet. Starts at 4. It's only 3.30 my time right now. So when they start, I'll let you guys know what happens there. Oh my god, they're singing the zombie song with them. I can see Gino. Yeah, he just laughs. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, everybody. See, I hate Irish fans now. <laughs> James Saturn, good to see you, brother. What's up, y'all? Happy Valley Saturday. Jay Smooth, cheers. Cheers to you, brother. Good to see you, as always. We chilling out right now. We're enjoying Zang Joyce 2, Bellator 299. By the way... Sorry about that. Everybody in the Discord, if you... I found where the Zang Joyce card is, so hold on, I got you. I I got you. I'm going to point you guys in the right direction. If you're in my Discord right now, I'm about to show you where to find this bad boy. Hold up. Let's see, there. I'm looking at it on TNT Sports right now. I had to go to TNT for this bitch. Here we go, everybody. By the way, use that same source for Bellator and UFC if you need it. All the homies in the Discord. Of course, if you want to be a Discord member, all you got to do is join the channel and boom. You're in there like swimwear. Shout out to all the animals hanging out right now, by the way. Shout out to all you guys. Hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. Who's boxing next right now? Right now, boxing is Zach Parker and Khalid... Uh, Gradia. And then right now over on Bellator is Peter Queeley. Oh shit, James Saturn gonna look, looking good, bro. Good to see you, by the way, Ken Ryu. Oh damn, my boy Aaron Pico fighting today. Wow, Bellator is closing his door, save money on any promos. They are, man. Everything must go sale. And Ken, there's something else that might have your interest. Fucking Genghis Khan's, I'd say, relative right here. The the WBO champion, Big Bang Zellian Zhang. Let's see, what part of China is he from? He's from Zuk, uh, Zoku, China. Fighting out of New Jersey, funny enough. He's, he's an East Coast guy, too, in New Jersey. You might run into him during one of your fishing trips, funny enough. Zhang defending the belt against Joyce. It's a big one, man. It's a big day today, Ken. We got that going down. Bellator going down. Peter Quigley about to fight. Aaron Pico fighting the brother of, Fabi of uh, Leon Edwards fighting. Also, Rafael Viziv. Mateus Gamrut, Bryce Mitchell fighting today, Karate Hadi fighting today, Brian Battle, Charles Jordan, Miles John, Tim Means, and Fialo, Jacob Malkoon, and look at this, Muhammad Usman and Jay Collier of all people, and Noe, Hannah Goldie, even Maserat found her way on this bitch, so, bro, it's a stacked up day, man, across the fucking board, just fire, 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 and... The fucking fire is only beginning out here, man. Here we go. I won't miss the giant China man. If he's at the beach, he bigger than most with bro. That's that's got it. Hey, do you think he's a relative of Genghis Khan? There's not too many big China. Actually, let me see how tall he is. Let me see how tall he is. Cause he's a big motherfucker. 
By the way, round one of the Queenly fight just started. So, for record, bro, he's 40 years old, a little older. 6'6", six, six, bro. 6 feet 6 inches tall. And how much did he weigh in for the fight? Let me see. 6'6", six, six, uh, no weight for this, but I believe the weight I saw was like 250, 60, 77 pounds, something like that. 277, I think. Man's a fucking giant. Oh, Queeley already got fucking fouled. Already got hit low. Jay, how about all these future UFC title fights coming up? Looking forward to Jerry and Alex. Yeah, man, Jerry and Alex, Pantoja, Roy Vall, uh, Covington, and Edwards going to be a good one as well, man. I'm looking forward to it, brother. Three big win, way better win, won't get a dog baby for six months. <laughs> Real shit. I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna claim it though, bro. I think he's got this one. He's got this. Ken Wayne gonna eat tree. You know what, Alex? I'm telling you, under six and a half rounds. That's the bet for Zhang today. Zhang gonna get it. I hate Peter Queeley. Go home, bro. You suck. F out of here. Real shit. Look at Queeley. Oh, they got a cut already for Queeley. That's bullshit. Ah, oh, they bullshit and they already wiping away blood from Queeley's eye and shit, man. Fucking bum. Bum city. Bum city. Let's get this main card started. This man is a joke and a waste of time. Yeah, look at this shit. He's quitting. He's a quitter. The fight just started and the man complaining about fucking blood and eye. Let's see. Zang timeline looks like this. Genghis Khan bangs a Russian woman in the 1200s, send this Mongolian offspring banks, 45 generation Chinese women to birth. <laughs> Yo, I, you know what? I think, I think Ken nailed it. I think we found out how this guy's like damn near the size of Yao fucking Ming. Oh, the fight's over. Fuck Peter Queeley. Fuck Peter Queeley. <laughs> fucking bum. Fucking bum. I'll tell you what though, man. Funny that we're talking about this guy. 25, 5, and 1. And look, he's no joke either. In terms of just the record, he's no fucking joke. I mean, look at this shit. He, sw he literally destroyed the eye and orbital of Joe Joyce. He lost a decision. Actually, he was robbed in this fight. Uh, straight left. Another knockout. Another knockout. This was a majority decision, but that was bullshit. That was a little bit of a robbery. Check hook there, won a decision, more knockouts. So it's like the guy can go the distance. The guy can get knockouts because he has heavy fucking hands. Six foot six Chinese dude. You don't see motherfuckers built like that. Peter Squealy. <laughs> Why did he? Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, fuck. I just saw it now. I just saw it now, too. So, it was the toenail, as as uh, Sharp Toenails, as Dame mentioned. Yeah, so, he kicked him, and the toenail scratched Queely in the eye, and he cried about it. Ah, what a bum. What a bum. That man, that he, he's doing the cats in Gano. He's crying about getting kicked in the eye. Boo! Pussy shit, boo! Just post on Twitter, get out of here. Zane B label China brand from New Jersey, but suspect as hell. <laughs> Funny you mentioned that. I thought about it, but I was like, huh, maybe he just wanted to get in the USA and escape China. But yeah, he's not there. He's he's a USA guy for the moment. I do appreciate the kick from a global rules perspective. I do too, Dane. Ah, they call it no contest. Boo! Boo! Nobody's going to buy your contract with Bellator Folds. Boo! Peter Queeley, retire, you fucking bum. Boo! Boo! Bum. Absolute bum. We ain't got no time for that. And just like that, Bellator's prelim fest is fucking over. And thank God for that. Thank the Lord for that. Let's get that bullshit the fuck out of here. And let me get the UFC feed at least up here. Uh, for when it is ready. Uh, there we go. See, you can't become heavyweight. Uh, boxing champion training in, an, in a rice paddy. <laughs> DQ cheated. Sharpen those corn chip looking toenails. Real shit. 
You got to sharp them. You got to fucking go get to the fucking... Um, speaking of Asia, you got to go to the fucking Asian lady and let her take care of that shit over at the shop. I don't know what the fuck this man was doing. He he, he didn't take that trip over there. Zane probably in Bogota every night in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Don't speak one word of English besides all in it. <laughs> Yo, it's it's so funny you say that, Ken. I think I literally that's your man right there. Homie's gonna be Americanized in about three, four years once he gets that big money fight with Usyk after the. Uh, that was such a Queely Bellator thing had to happen. Jay said it all real shit. That is true Bellator fashion. That whole get out of clearance sale, everything must go sale. That's exactly the type of shit. Ain't nobody gonna buy that contract. Uh, don't buy his contract, send him to LF Gay, real shit. Send him somewhere to LF Gay, send him to CES. Fucking send him down to Risen and send him to that bum league where he can get his head smashed in. Me and Zhang had the same homeland, New Jersey. Hey, shout out to Jersey. I'm in Washington, D.C., by the way, so shout out to all my East Coast people. Uh, but I, I, I'll tell you what. If, if you didn't see the first fight, by the way, of him and Joyce, watch the highlights of that real quick. Because one thing that Zhang has, he has the heavy hands. He has a chin, but it's the hands that are the key. Because Joe Joyce is a, he's a tank of a human. Most big heavyweights couldn't crack the guy. Like Dano Dubois, who destroyed, nearly destroyed Usyk with a body shot, couldn't even hurt this man. 36 versus 40. Look at this though, they're both giants. Both 6'6", six, six, both 80 inch reach. I think Zhang weighs a little bit more. I have to see their final weights. But these are some massive motherfuckers. One thing about Zhang, though, folks, is that he's 40 years old. So it's like he needs his title opportunity now. He's interim WBO champ now, but if he wins this, he'll get the uh, mandatory. Oh, with Usyk. Ain't no dealer going to question Zhang if he's serious at the casino table. is too big, too yellow, too dangerous. Every China man suspects he's a PH of these days. Uncle Z has the global power. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you, ain't nobody going to fuck with Zhang. You're right about that. That man is untouchable. He's untouchable considering you don't see guys that big. Like, really, I haven't seen a giant Chinese guy since Yao Ming. Yao Ming is literally, like, the only Chinese dude that I know that's fucking a giant and actually looks intimidating in a room. This guy is six foot six. Freddy could kill people with punches? Fuck that. My neighbor was main event in Contender Series last Tuesday. He lost, though. Who was he? Tell me, tell me his name. Everybody, by the way, the UFC is starting in 20 minutes. Everybody, 20 minutes for the UFC and the Apex, which actually has a really good card. And by the way, at four o'clock is also the start of Bellator, headlined by, of course, Aaron Pico, co main event, who I think would be a good pickup for the UFC when Bellator folds. Johnny Eblen, Fabian Edwards, two more good prospects for the UFC when they fold, and then, of course. The, uh, I believe 5 p.m. Eastern time is the scheduled walkout for Zhang and Joyce, as I see their undercard right now. Khalid and another dude are fighting at the moment. Uh, I'm gonna be Zhang Entourage. Oh, Ken, you gotta get on that Entourage now, brother. Zhang's gonna need you, man. He's gonna need you to help navigate the east side. I'm gonna hit people, then run behind Zhang. <laughs> Bro, i hey, yo, Ken, you should interview Zhang on your fucking fishing show, bro. Take Zhang on a fishing trip on the East Coast and interview that man. I'm telling you, man, you'll take off. Ain't no one in New Jersey going to say, which yellow man hit me? Real shit. Real shit. You got to take Zhang on a fishing trip, and then you got to feed him, like, damn near all the fish in the ocean because that man's 6'6", six, six, and he's fucking massive. I'm telling you, you do that shit, bro, Zhang, literally, Zhang will be like, Ken, I can't do this fight without you in the corner. He's going to be fucking rush hour dojo certified. Let's see, Madge Brunel. Oh, Gane, Dane uh, speaking in Danish. Uh, educate me, Dane. What does that mean in Danish? Speak, uh, teach me some Danish. Or, I don't even know how they say it in Denmark. All I know is a little bit of Spanish, little bit of a little bit of Chinese. But teach me some Danish. I need to learn a new language. New Jersey, only two hours from NYC. Bro, that's easy right there. You Hey, look, if you invite Zhang on your fishing trip, not only is he going to be aboard the boat, bro, all you have to do is put Zelly and Zhang in the title of your fishing uh, video, and it's going to fucking go viral. Everybody in China is going to be like, oh, shit. If 
I take Zhang on a fishing trip, we're going to bag all the fish, no size limits. Ain't no long on the fish. Police can say nothing. Real, bro, you could literally, you can literally just like clean out fucking Long Island. I'm glad the prelims are over. Real shit, man. Same here. I'm ready for the main card. Cheers, Danish fighter with a better record, says Dane. Okay, so Ski... Wait, Skull, Mads Brunel. Me, bro. Kempar, Denmark, Wit. Skelduski, Bedir. Oh, I find that. <laughs> that's going to be one of those where I'm going to have to practice it and say it like ten times, and then I'll get it. But that's good shit. That's a good start, though. Actually, let me screenshot that. There we go. A good Danish sentence for me to... For me to practice. That way, Dane and I can one day communicate in Danish, and he won't feel like such an outcast. Uh, glad the premiums are over. I wonder if Zhang is big in China. You know what? Uh, considering the fact that most Chinese athletes are, like, tiny, besides, like, Yao Ming, he's probably got to be, like, the biggest guy in China, or at least the second biggest. So, you know what? I think that alone, he, like literally stands out in China. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure they definitely know who he is. Sang's a beast, is JD. Seems that way, man. Admittedly, outside of Martin, the hitman, Capman, we don't have much. You know what, Dane? It's funny you say that because the only other the only other fighter you really have is like... Yeah, I say that's about it. Mads Brunel's a good talent, though. They're feeding him to Weichel, which, you know, people like you and me know. Uh, Weichel's been around for a bit, but he's not exactly a guy that's really going to go anywhere at this stage in his career. You know, we're talking 42 and 14. The man's just, at this point, he's just racking up mileage and fights. So if Brunel can put on a good performance here, maybe he can attract interest from PFL. Maybe Bellat maybe like, you know, UFC will think about it if they go to like Liverpool or something. Or if not, uh, if they don't put him in PFL Europe or UFC, imagine Mads Brunella won championship. I mean, shit. 145, I mean, featherweight in one championship, they could always use more featherweights. So he's not a bad one to think about. Uh, Zhang eat nice Chinese restaurant food. Oh, no doubt. He eats all the egg foo young, all of that shit sumo wrestlers eat. He eats all the shark meat. By the way, shark meat, from what I hear, is fantastic. I had it, I had shark at, like, a Jamaican spot, like a J Jamaican Caribbean restaurant not that long ago, like a Jamaican bakery that, like, opened up near me. I had, like, like shark, like, uh, like some baked shark. That shit was pretty good. That's, like, an animal I would eat. Honestly, if I could eat anything outside of just the normal cow and, of course, chicken, you know, being black, obviously chicken. Steak, I'd add there. I love venison. Venison's a good meat as well, but, yeah, shark I would love. I'd love me some fish, but, like, the only fish I really fuck with is, like, salmon. And, like, catfish is all right, but it really depends on who cooks it because this might be a surprise, but there are some black women that don't know how to cook catfish. There are some black folks that will fuck catfish up, and I know that sounds insane because I come from, you know, black culture, but not all black people can cook catfish the right way. It really depends. Salmon, you can easily do it, but catfish, you got to have the right motherfucker handling that shit. You know what I mean? Shark meat, I think, is really good, though. I had shark not that long ago, and uh, I would consider it. And since I love me some gains and love me some weights, I would definitely eat more shark. Big in China, XSL. You know it, brother. Anna Elmos was called the panda, short, white, always two black guys to beat him. <laughs> you know what? That tells me she's short, stocky, and built for it tough. That means she could probably take a good face fucking. And considering that face ain't much, it probably could use a good fucking to at least look somewhat appealing. That's how you transform a four and make her into a six. Just let all that, let all that face fucking exposure, like from her fucking, those tears from her eyes and all that shit from her throat just run down her face and she'll look somewhat presentable. Oh, and the son of Anderson Silva just brutally knocked out a damn media member. Holy shit. <laughs> Shout out to Ben Davis. Ben Davis is a good dude, though. He actually likes what I do. He subscribed to my channel. Fun fact, Ben the Bane Davis is actually a fun fact. He He's actually a fan. He's fighting on that Misfits card, like Misfits 009 or whatever the fuck on DAZN. And he just got knocked the fuck out. 
Uh, let's see. In China, they eat dog. So that's not saying much as West Coast. Eh, that's a good point. They eat just about anything that ain't watered down. Jay, do you like orange soda? I do, but not as much as grape soda, which I would say is probably more of a black soda than orange. The only one that's more black than orange is grape. I'm more of a grape soda uh, type of guy. Uh, but orange I do like, though. It's got to be like orange, like creamsicle or something. But like straight up, it's got to be like grape, which I think is probably the only soda that's more black than orange. Speaking of orange, I am drinking an orange IPA, so I guess I am fitting the stereotype in that regard. Uh, as we And by the way, Coach Prime and... Oh, shit. Okay, Colorado and Oregon just started. I think Oregon is actually going to uh, test on the day. I don't think Coach Prime and them going to have a cakewalk today. Coach Prime been very confident after beating up on a lot of these bum teams, Nebraska, Colorado State. I think Oregon going to uh, gonna push them boys a little bit. Sturdy girls, they can protect a good face. Fuck, it must be protected. Absolutely. That's the one thing that makes them go from like a five to like an eight in no time. I met him a few times here in Vegas. Oh, shit. That's good shit right there, Dave. Uh, Big Trouble in Little China. Fruit Punch Soda is OP. Tiki Punch for me. So skate. I should ask you, Skate, since you are Mexican, um, uh, do you like regular soda or like jaritos? Or like, do you prefer like Mexican Coke? To regular Coke, because regular Coke is trash, but give me a Mexican Coke with the cane sugar all day. Oh, give me that or a Jaritos. I'll take that over American Pop any day. Jay reinforcing that purple drink stereotype. Well, at least it's grape soda and not like the purple lean stereotype, which is a terrible one. But then again, a lot of... A lot of dumb motherfuckers usually, like, they, they've kind of ruined lean in a way. Lean used to be the shit. It used to be fun. Uh, back in college years, before I even streamed. But nowadays, too mainstream. They ain't watered it now. I know, right? He's like, orange, not grape. Hell yeah, grape is probably the only one that's a little more black than orange, I'd say. The only one that's more black, I'd say, than orange soda. Tahiti treat. Uh, got some soda, purple stuff. Oh, hell yeah. You know what I like? I like me some tahini. I'll take, like, a fucking, like, margarita, sprinkle some tahini on that bitch. That'll be amazing. Yes, I drink the F out of Jaritos only because 35 grams of sugar versus 50 grams of sugar. Cook. That's true. I'll take a Jaritos over like any American soda any day. Uh, Popeye's Church's KFC. Ew. Uh, it's funny. It depends on what year you would ask me. But since you're asking me today, uh, I would say Popeye's. It used to be Church's, but uh, Church's is like, I'd say number two now. KFC fell all the way off. Don't know what the fuck happened there. Uh, but they fell all the way off. It would be like Popeye's 1. Uh, it would be Church's 2, KFC 3. I don't know what the fuck happened to KFC, but yeah, they are they're not what they used to be. Bring back Ecto Cooler. Ooh, let me get Ecto Cooler. Shit, that's like 10 tablespoons of sugar. <laughs> Harold. Ooh, Harold's ain't too bad. Uh, DC. What's up, DC? Is there a predicted, predicted walkout time for the main event? So, uh, the Bellator main event, we're looking at three hours. For Zhang and Joyce, we're looking at, ooh, only one hour. One hour away from Zhang and Joyce, so you don't have to wait long. And for Bellator, we're looking at, let's see, it's about to be four, about two, three hours. So you don't have long to wait, depending on which one you're talking about. Colt 45, Shields Hall Liquor. Oh, Colt 45. Shields I barely even see in a lot of stores that I got. I usually see Colt 45 everywhere, so I usually go for that if I ever want. Uh, so the malt. I ain't KFC in a long time. I do. I get the strips. Yeah, man. I don't know what the fuck happened to them. It is, it is not what it used to be. I'd say KFC, like, early 2000s was goaded, but after, like, post-2010, ugh. It fell off. Even when they got rid of the wedges and they have them little bitch-ass fucking french fries. Not with it. Uh, if I'm buying, it's got to be Fat Tire or Coors Banquet. Ooh, it's not bad. Uh, let's see. Same media. You've been there a long time. Thank you. I just found a new home. Hey! Welcome home, DC. Cheers to you, brother. And since you found a new home, make sure you grab yourself a lady while we're here. You got everything. You got a, you got a brunette. You got a couple blondes. You got a redhead. Actually, you got quite a few brunettes, about five, six of them in there. 
have a black lady, white lady. Well, they're white too, but they're like tan, tangerine flavor. And then, of course, you have the little dark horse on the ground here, the blonde. Uh, so, hey, you, you have found a good home indeed, my friend. Make yourself at home. Have a drink in a long-ass time. Old E says, Dane, love me some Old E. If I don't have Colt 45, I'll take OE as a backup. Just like if I don't have Hennessy on deck, I'll take Remy as a backup. It's usually how I do it. GDR retired, says Alpha. I think so? I don't remember the last time GDR fought. It's gotta be like, what, two two years now? Something like that? I said, yummy. Hey, Pullman! Great to see Pullman here, man. Hey, I assume you are back, my friend. Great to see you, my guy. Uh, we are waiting for Bellator's main card to start, which starts in five minutes exactly. Oh, hold on, let me... Yep, there we go. Ah, Peter Queeley. He's not going to be signed by any big promotion uh, when Bellator folds up. That much we can tell you, especially after that little performance there. Uh, and then we have UFC Fight Night a little later. That's not on until... Oh, shit, that's like five minutes. Okay, let me refresh that. So, we're going to have the UFC about to start. Bellator's main card about to begin. And then Zhang and Joyce about to start in one hour. They still got their undercard fights going on right now. Aloha Kanaka. Great to see you, brother. Uh, I got to listen at work next two hours, so I'm off. Hey, good place to listen to, my brother. I'm going to keep you updated on everything. Got to be retired. Uh, UFC main card pretty solid. It is DC. I love it a lot, man. I love everything about it. Fiziv, Gamroot, give me that. Mitchell Ige, I'll take that, but my head. Rodriguez, Watterson, Brian Battle, Charles Jourdain, Miles John, Tim Means, Jacob Malkoon, Mohamed Usman, and Collier, shit. I'll take that all day. Zigzags are raw. Oh, gotta go raw. Gotta go raw. I was a big zigzag guy college years, I was in college, like, we're talking, like, fucking 2006, maybe, so it's been a long time since I was in college, but I was a big zigzag guy there, I've been on, like, raw cones and rolling papers, I'd say for about, I'd say since, like, 2020, well, actually, no, I'd say about, like, uh, I want to say, like, 2015, I'd say, 2015, because I started experimenting for a little bit. I was on zigzags and swishers for a Yeah, them swishers, bro. Them swishers got me through college, too. Whenever I couldn't get the paper, you had to get that little cigar. You had to fucking wet that bitch. Then you had to slice it open with some scissors, get all the guts out of there, and then break down your wheat, put it in the middle. Yeah, I was on that shit for a minute. Thank you, by the way, Skate. At least we know the algorithms are working. At least solid fight night. It is, man. A solid fight night card, and you know what? I actually like this fight night mainly because, folks, remember, uh, just a little side note, we don't have UFC next week. There's Risen Tonight. Uh, there's Contender next week. We have one Friday fight and then one fight night. Oh, that one fight night card is going to be rough. It's like five ladies fights at the top of the bill. I hope it's not boring. So... A rare thing is going to happen on the channel next week. I I literally hate that I have to acknowledge this, but I do. My boy Cedric Dumbe from Kickboxing is going to make his uh, big-time MMA debut. He's already fought in MMA before, but he's now going to debut on a big stage against some guy they picked up for PFL. And then next Saturday night, oh... If you want to make some money next Saturday night, I got you. There's no UFC next Saturday, by the way. The next UFC card that we got uh, is not until October the 7th, which is Grant Dawson and Bobby Green, so we got a little bit. But next Saturday, it's going to be PFL and then Charlo Canelo. We're going to make some money on that. All my PFL Europe heads, I'm going to need you to report because I will be covering this fight. I hate that I have to cover PFL, but for, for Cedric, I'll do it. I'll, I'll suck it up. So, yeah, we got two cards on Saturday. You looking forward with the Canelo? Oh, yeah. Canelo, Charlo, I'm looking forward to that because I want to see Canelo fight somebody legit, and Charlo's as legit as it gets. It's better than him fighting, like, John Ryder or fucking Yildirim out in, like, Hard Rock Stadium in Miami. Like, that's bullshit. Uh, I don't know what it is. My sister can roll the best blunt. You ever smoked? My blunts were trash. Yo, mine too, man. I could... My blunts were better 
in college. But then again, in college, I was a starving college kid. And a, a blunt was just a fucking treat. So my starving ass would just be rolling the best blunts ever. But, like, nowadays I roll the cones because I'm just too lazy. But before, man, I used to be fucking precise on that motherfucker. Roll it up. Seal it. You'd had, I'd had the fucking lighter under that bitch, you know, put it in the oven, you know what I'm saying? Keep it together so that, that, that bitch don't fucking, that bitch not too wet before you hit it. Oh, yeah, man, I used to go through the fucking ringer with them damn blunts back in the day. But these days, I'm always on the move, so I get the cones now. I'll get a cone. I got, like, a grinder over there. I'll fucking put the shit in my grinder, put it in the cone, roll it up, and then I just fucking good to go right there. And by the way, folks... Bellator about to start. UFC about to start as well, everybody. All right. It's fight time, folks. No more waiting. And actually, hold up. Pull this up for the UFC. And then let's put Bellator up there. Mob Town. I never heard of movie. Oh, at least it's done now. Okay, so there. All right, everybody. We're about to get fights now. Bellator, UFC. On and popping. And folks, before we get started, I'm going to go take a piss. Everybody go to the bathroom now. Refill your drinks now. I'll be right back. Do not go anywhere. Boom. We're back, everybody. And folks, it is now boom, boom, boom. Triple head their thigh. UFC about to pop off with a couple bathroom break fights to start off. So you don't have to pay attention to the UFC yet. Unless you want to see Hannah Goldie or Mouserat. Unless you got a, unless you got a hard dick for any of those ladies. You don't really need to watch them. Uh, let's see, I've been thinking about buying a tablet. Anyone got good recommendations on Galaxy for that? Uh, if you want something cheap, I would say Galaxy is good. I have a Galaxy for what I watch for a lot of the fights. I use this as well. This is like a cheap version. It's called TJD. I use a Galaxy as my main one. I have an Amazon, like, you know, like one. And then I got this backup one called TJD. This is like a cheap one right here. I got this for like... Like, half the price of one. And again, you only need it for certain shit. It, it does all the basic stuff. It's not as fancy, but it gets the job done. I got the main fancy shit right here that I watch, my sh that I watch a lot of the fights on. Then I got this backup one for other fights. TJD is cheap, but it works. Especially if you don't want to spend that much money. Uh, Montessorat. <laughs> By the way, uh... Also, Bellator just started. Bellator on Showtime. 
Also, we have another fight on Zhang's undercard here. Who the fuck is that? I think that is... O'Leary and Amai. No, wait, I'm sorry, not O'Leary. O'Leary and Gardner, I think. But I'll find out in a minute. Effie O'Leary. WBC International. Okay, yep. All right, folks. On the mainstream, I think for ESPN Plus, they're gonna have three fights on there. Looks like Taylor and McIntyre, Yard and Silva, and then Zhang Joy. So they're having, uh, let's see, Pierce O'Leary against Kane Gardner right now. So Galaxy Tab is a good one. Yes, Galaxy is a good one. If you want like a cheap one that's not as much money as Galaxy, look up TJD. Uh, that's a good one. If you want, uh, like, if you want, like, like, Galaxy quality for, like, half the money, TJD's good if you want to save a little money. Uh, but Galaxy, definitely the best. Or at least the best that I've used. Pierce O'Leary, the Shamblock Swindler. <laughs> Real shit. By the way, here we go, folks. Round one between O'Leary and Gardner. Nah. That is the first fight here, so you know what? Oh, shit, hold up. We're going to start off with this one first. Oh, Larry Gardner. I'm only going to commentate this till the UFC... Well, the UFC has two ladies fights beginning, so... I don't know how much I want to see that, but I'll just update you on these two bathroom break fights right here. The real UFC fights don't begin on number three. Bellator, they're going to stall for a while until Chikeli and Hamasi get out there. So we're going to start off with O'Leary and Gardner. Costco has Galaxy tabs on sale all the time for hundreds, says Dane. That is true. Actually, you know what, Dane? That is actually correct. I haven't been to Costco in a good minute. I'm usually a Sam's Club guy because I like to be frugal and shit. But you know what? Costco, I believe, does have good ones. You were right about that. Vamos, says Fred. Vamos, my dude. Hope you're doing well, Fred. Hope you're doing well. Starting up. By the way, I think this is a 10 round fight, actually. I put it as uh, 12 rounds, but it's all good. Sweet Caroline, I need Vidal victory. Uh, this is Fred. We're waiting, of course, for uh, the UFC to begin. I mean, for uh, Bellator to begin. Did Vidal win? I don't think Vidal is even. Oh, no, I don't think he's fought yet. And, of course, for the UFC, what do we got? Yep, Monster of the Doll. Yep, they haven't fought yet, but uh, it will start in a little bit. Sweet Caroline's Maddox. Good to see you, Maddox. Hope you're doing well, my dude. Good jabs by O'Leary to open things up. I got the O'Leary fight in front of me. I got UFC there. I got Bellator up there. Three fights at once, everybody. Get your screens up now. Get your screens up now. It is about to be absolute madness. O'Leary leading with the jabs right now. Double jab, good hook to the body by O'Leary. By the way, let me turn this down a little bit. Since we're getting bathroom break fights here, let's turn that down. And then, since I'm coming to this fight, let's plug it in and do this fight real quick. Double jab for O'Leary to the body. Hurt to the body, says Weedy. Oh, yeah, he's getting that body. Good jab to the face now by O'Leary. By the way, don't worry, everybody. I'm going to get to the first Bellator fight when it begins. They're kind of stolen right now, so I am doing the first fight that I see on the ring in front of me. By the way, the UFC is going to have two bathroom break fights back-to-back, -back, so uh, UFC fans, when Collier Usman is on, I'm going to start to really crank up the commentary over there. Good jab now. Ooh, the zangin' fucking <laughs> algorithms are working right there. Good jab for O'Leary. Double jab for O'Leary. Three, four, five, ten seconds ago. And there's the end of the round for O'Leary. O'Leary takes that. Cheers, everybody. Oh! Beautiful. Cheers, my friends.
good shit right there. End of the round. That should easily go to uh, Mr. O'Leary. O'Leary was very aggressive to open the round right there, hunting him down, backing him down, bullying him into the corner. By the way, it looks like our first fight on Bellator is now about to start. I see two people in there, but what the fuck? They're like not even... They're not showcasing the walkouts. They're like showcasing... The fucking, like, uh, like, they're just having the walkouts in the background, but they got McCarthy and, um, Mauro Ronaldo just kind of talking, even though they have two fighters in the cage right now. Very weird by Bellator. They're showcasing the announcers, not the actual fighters. And Hamasi is now inside the cage for Bellator against Chikeli. So I will give you guys commentary on Chikeli. Uh, when, of course, it happens. There's a couple jabs right there by O'Leary to the head. Going to the body and the head. Damn it, I missed uh, that. Looking at tablets on the other side. <laughs> LOL. It's all good, brother. Don't feel bad, man. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad, Skate. We're all a team here, my brother. Don't worry about it. We're all a family here. If anything, it just means that the algorithms are working, and that's all I want. I just, I just want to make sure that them fucking algorithms are working for the day. We want a, we want a nice sized crowd for all the fights that we got going on today. And by the way, meteorologist style, you have the clock right over here, and you have my name and phone number over here. As a matter of fact, let's make that bitch a little bit bigger, shall we? Let's see. Actually, wait. Let's go down here with it. Put that there. There we go. Now we got... See, now I'm able to configure myself in the middle there. And... Hold on. We got a little bit of static there. Okay, there we go. All good now. All good. So, yes. The phones, of course, are open for those that want to call in. I got my phone all charged up over here. Yep, phones all charged up, ready to go for those that want to call in. Call in at any time that you want. Come down now. now we got Hamasi, by the way, being introduced. All right, folks. Bellator time here. Bellator time. We're on showtime, by the way. Hamasi and Shakeli are about to go to battle. Let's put that down a little bit. Let's put this back up. My Masi's trash. <laughs> He's as bad as... I mean, lying, brother. Brian Miner, of course, the ref for this. Oh. Here we go. Here we go. Round number one. Of course, they're going through all the dumb fucking rules that they got. Hamasi trash. <laughs> Boy, do get knocked out quite a bit, Donnie. Here we go, round one. Round one. That's why I like who's this gate. Hey, don't blame me there, brother. Good jab by Hamasi at the gate. Low kick now by Jaqueli. Good low kick by Jaqueli. Jab by Hamasi. A jab there by Hamasi. Good side kick there by Hamasi. Jab by Hamasi successful. High kick by Hamasi now. Masi and of course Chakeli right in the center. Waiting on somebody to make a move. Good high kick now by uh, by Chakeli. Good high kick by Chakeli. Good word by Chakeli. Now a jab by Chakeli there. Standing right in front of Hamasi. I like this. Both guys want to throw. Nobody wants to do anything stupid. Nobody wants to do anything crazy. Great jab by Hamasi with 40 seconds to go in the round. Well, 340 to go in the round, I should say. Oh, good 
one too now by fucking Jakeli. Holy shit. I really bagged up Hamasi there. I got Hamasi thinking about life for a minute. Another jab by Hamasi's there. A lot of movement by Hamasi. Oh! Jakeli just fucking burned up with a front kick to the face. Oh my god. Hamasi's out cold. That boy out cold. He out stiff. Holy shit. Oh! Oh! Oh my god! Hamasi got knocked the fuck out by an Anderson Silver style front kick! Holy shit! Oh! Fuck! Oh my god! Jakeli just murdered! Fucking suck! Fucking uh, Saba Hamasi with a fucking front kick from hell! That's some Anderson Silva shit, man. Fuck! That's some Leota Machida shit, too, man. Holy fuck. Oh, my God. He's snoring. Anderson Silva, Chandler, Leota Machida style murder. Real shit. Real shit. Machida, Anderson, Chandler be proud of... Ooh! Ooh! He putted him like a football! Ooh! That's a fucking football kick. That's a punt kick. Oh! Ooh! Oh, 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 fuck, oh my god, yo was not, yo, yo was literally stiff on the fucking showtime, oh, oh my god, Hamasi just got knocked the fuck out by Jakeli, man, holy shit, Stiff as a board, kicked the saw out that man, wow. Showed it to him just before he did it again. Stiff, says Dane, out, fucking stiff. Like a damn shirt sprayed with starch, man, holy fuck. My man literally frozen on that Showtime logo. Oh my god. Oh my god. Fam, what in the fuck? What in the fuck did we just see? What was that? My man just got straight fucking kicked in the face. Full on kicked in the fucking face, man. Holy shit. Oh. Oh my god. That was beautiful. Like a flipping off like a flip it like flipping off a light switch. Stretcher, full on. Bring out the stretcher for that fuck. Oh my god. Hold on, I gotta go back here now. I gotta get my fucking head right after that. Hold up. Oh wait, hold up. Three. Alright, here we go. Round four. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Hold on. Round number four now. When it comes to the UFC, I see that it's a couple of bathroom break fights, so we're going to take our time before we get to that. Let's see. Dead. What up, Rush? What up, Andrew Gray? Great to see you, my brother. Welcome back, my dude. Welcome back. Back like an air left. Charlay. ATT most overrated Jeff. She is Charlotte to Kelly. She's got a murder one case. You ain't lying about this shit, man. Oh my god. On Bellator, we just witnessed a damn murder with Kelly knocking out Saba Hamasi. And by the way, over on the Bellator card, we are in round number four. By the way, first fight, Moserat and Vidal is now walking out. Moserat and Vidal are making their way to the cage. Good shit right there over in Bellator. And by the way, up next, which I will be commentating, Mads Brunel, Daniel Weichel. When that fight is in the uh, in the cage, I will be commentating that. I'm just kind of doing a fight to fill the time here, so to speak. Good jab again by O'Leary right to the face. O'Leary with a straight jab. Uppercut to the body. Nice jab to the body. One, two now by O'Leary. This is on the Zhang and Joyce boxing card. We're doing three at once right now, everybody. We got Bellator. Joe Kelly just murdered Saba Hamasi. Absolutely destroyed.
fucking Hamasi. I think he's gonna send that man full on to the hospital. And then we have Maserat and Vidal now about to happen on the UFC card. We call that, uh, uh, let's see, the Corey Katie posture and medical speak. Oh, God. It's like that fucking fencing pose shit. You, you ain't lying about that. Man, full on, man was full on, uh, dead deer right there. I gotta smoke the Habasi pack after that. That man definitely did. They showed that replay. Ooh, god damn. Ate that shit like he was dead. He, he dead over the Showtime logo. I don't know if he's gonna get signed after that happened there. It was awesome. Hamas has no idea where he is, what's going on. That's true. And he definitely ain't gonna know after the uh, UFC declines him for a contract. This is a good right hand by uh, O'Leary, and O'Leary really jabbing him to the face. Uh, Gardner really can't really, uh, handle this guy, it seems like. O'Leary, from what I've seen here in the fight, has been dominant through four rounds. He's just kind of taking it to him right now. Jab by, o by Gardner. Good one, two by O'Leary. Ten seconds to go. One, two by Gardner. But look at O'Leary just avoiding this dude. He making fucking Gardner look like a scrub. And by the way, folks, uh, the UFC now officially underway. It's bathroom break material, though. As right now on my screen, Vidal is about to enter the a octagon. Omaja said, who, Mike Jones? <laughs> Either like Patty Pimblett eating everything after a fight. <laughs> Real shit. Real fucking shit, my friend. Real fucking shit, indeed. Plug this in real fast. Ooh. Yeah, plug that in. Actually, you know what? You know what? Let me put this on the phone here. There we go. Put this on the phone. That way, when it's time for Joyce and Zang, my tablet will have a little more juice to it. So let's, let's do this real fast. Round number five now about to happen for Zang, for O'Leary and Gardner. Okay, so let's get rid of this shit. Let's get rid of that. Let's go to MMA. Oh, no, my bad. Yeah, there we go. Let's go to that. Let's go to that. Let plug that shit. Plug this bitch in. There we go. Yeah, there, okay, there we fucking are. So I'll put that there. By the way, we are about to have our, uh, actually, I'll check in on that fight in a minute. Because right now the UFC, of course, has started. We're in round five uh, of, actually, no, round, yeah, round number five now of this fight. I will put this over to the side, actually. Let's get rid of that and that. That there. Let's charge this bitch over in the side here. Yeah. Oh yeah, there. Okay, yep, there it is. So jab. Then of course I got the UFC in front of me. Couple jabs now by O'Leary. Like a few jabs there. Okay, you know what we're about to do now? Hold up. We're going to go right to the UFC with this shit, so let's get rid of that. Now that the UFC is up and running, as it should be. Five. And then, let's go here for the UFC. So here we go, folks. UFC now about to start. Kick now, a low kick there, jab by Rendall. Jab there by Rendall. 
Went on really hunting down Vidal. Low kick by Vidal. Good jab by Vidal. Jabs. Oh, catches a kick already. Oh, I thought she could take it. Turn into a takedown for a second. Going low as Vidal. Low again for Vidal. Jab, though, by Rena. 1 2. Rena going with a low kick. By the way, what is that promo belt was running? Shit. We got three fights going on right now, and I believe the end of the round just hit in the boxing fight. Let's see. Down to four minutes to go. Yeah, by Vidal. Rendon is a nice one, too. Now they're really exchanging soft strikes here. What the fuck? At least Rendon is pressing forward, though, trying to make it a little bit aggressive. There's a low kick for Vidal. 1-2 by Rendon. Backs up Vidal. Jab now by, uh, by Rendon. Another 1-2 by Rendon. The Mexican woman being very aggressive, just kind of walking forward on her. Low kick for Vidal, but a jab by Rendon is flush. Another low kick by Vidal, but a good counter by Rendon. Vidal moving and circling. Just trying to keep the distance and trying to stay away from Rendon. There's a good jab to the body, jab to the head by Rendon. Rendon straight jab to the face. Right hand, a good counter by Vidal. Good right hand by Rendon and a good counter by Vidal. Vidal with a missed hook right there. Both land low kicks. Good low kick by Vidal. Another chopping low kick by Vidal. Really chopping away the lead leg. Nice three piece by Rendon. Down to 240 to go. Swinging hook by Vidal. Just misses and Rendon able to really counter her flush. We're going back on the aggressive nature. And, of course, Bellator going back to their uh, little desks there. And, of course, in the boxing fight, what round are we in? Round six. Okay, round six. So we got six out of ten. So four left over in the boxing fight. And I believe it's only three... Actually, no, two fights left to the main event. Let's see. Two, ten. Let's see. Eight, like Patty Pimblett and everything out of her fight. Uh, oh, my God, her nose. Uh, what's wrong with it? Uh, Fabian Edwards is getting humbled, says Maddox. Yeah, I think he will be. Johnny Edwards is going to be a very tough grappler to deal with. And Fabian Edwards with pressure doesn't always handle it well. And Eblin is a very pressure-forward type of wrestler. So it's going to be interesting to see how he tries to handle that. By the way, Rendon trying to take down Vidal. Rendon has Vidal right up against cage wall here. And I am referring to the UFC, of course. We are on the UFC. We're on ESPN Plus with that. Also, uh, Zhang and Joyce will be on ESPN Plus as well. And, of course, we have Bellator over on Showtime. Rendon still trying to operate himself in the clinch, and they break away. By the way, folks, speaking of Bellator, oh, boy. Good, I can no longer, I can finally ignore this. We're going to get to our next fight, Mads Brunel and Daniel Weichel. So the clock is now reset. Let's get ready for that first main card fight for Bellator. By the way, somebody did die in that last fight, so let's... Oh, Boom, there we go. All that blood. Uh, actually, let me drag it a little bit. Oh, no. There we go. Oh, no, not quite. Ah, there it is. There it is. So let's drag it a little bit more. And then push it up. Okay, there we go. Now the blood is a little more, a little more visible, a little more easy to see. There we go. I'm walking out right now is Daniel Weichel, who is 42 and 14. That is a crazy fucking career to have, considering that I don't really think he's been at like the top of any like. He hasn't really been at the top of any MMA promotion, but he's just a, he's a serviceable guy uh, that's going to step up, take a fight when needed, and will certainly do anything for the company to make it better. He was always a serviceable fighter, but yeah. Interesting that he has so many fights, but just has never really been at the mountaintop. It's always been good to watch, at least, though. Let's see. 
here. Daniel White show now in the cage, and now we await Mads Brunel. Some Denmark shit. Shout out to everybody, by the way, all across the world. North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Oceania, and Antarctica. I hope everybody, of course, is enjoying themselves. 23 likes, 23 viewers. I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves early here in the animal room. Let's see John Most. Says, who you got? Hitch and Zepeda, undercard. In the undercard, Connor Ben versus Orzico. Some Mexican never stop 32 and 3. Uh, Connor Ben and Zepeda. Don't know a lot about that card, but I know Connor Ben and Zepeda, so I will go with them. Um, by the way, speaking of fights that are about to happen, of course, we are about to witness Mads Brunel and White Chul. Both men are in the octagon. By the way, let me turn this down a little bit because this fight is not all that amusing right now. It's a typical bathroom break fight, I'd say. Let's go over here for Bellator. And by the way, O'Leary uh, is about to end his fight. Only like three rounds left. Ben fighting tonight. Yeah, he's fighting on the undercard of the Hitch and Zepeda uh, card. He was a last-minute replacement. Not replacement, but a last-minute addition, I should say. Fighting some, some bum. Uh, let's see. We're all backing my bro Mads, right? Uh, I'm picking him for this, yeah. Only because Daniel Weichel has been around the block, and I don't exactly feel like he's either going to win this fight or really win any meaningful fight moving forward. It's kind of at the end. Uh, Why does Suspect Chin? Yeah, Suspect Chin, uh, he does have 42 wins in 56 MMA fights, but uh, again, when you've been fighting that long and you haven't exactly been at the top, it's kind of, uh, 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 it, it kind of determines where you really are in the sport. And he's not high level. He's like mid-tier, I would say, like at best. So yeah, Mads Brunel should be a showcase uh, for him. Should be a win for him. Like a nice little showcase victory for Mads here. Let's move over a little bit. Right now, White shall be introduced. This should be very easy. Well, not easy for Mads. Well, not too easy for Mads, but it should be easy enough. Maybe faces a little bit of resistance, but not a lot. Weichel is a veteran, so maybe he'll he'll make it somewhat interesting, but I don't see him putting Mads in any serious danger. I think Mads will pretty much just kind of run away with it. By the way, O'Leary's fight is almost done in round number 7. About to be 10. 7 out of 10. So here we go, folks. Cheers, everybody. <sighs> Seven, three rounds. Mads Brunel, Daniel Weichel. Round 1. Round one. Already I see the movement from Weichel. Brunel eats a couple jabs there. Brunel with a nice low kick, but a good counter there by Weichel. Weichel already with uh, lateral movement and just utilizing the punches, straight jabs. Brunel slowly stalking forward on him. Jab by Brunel is flush to the face. Let's put that there. Good jab by Mads Brunel, right to the face as well. Oh, I just suspect Chin, the King Whale, scribe because of the bong rib. Welcome, King Whale. Enjoy yourself, my friend. Glad you enjoy the atmosphere. Beautiful low kick by White. Chill, of course, good low kick by Brunel. Absolutely got to do it when you're definitely covering three events at once. That's for damn sure. Boo punches his <laughs> weedy Gonzalez over on the UFC. Is that fight still going on? Yes, it is. Like in round two, I'm surprised. Good kick to the body. Oh, nice little catch of a kick and a trip there by Brunel. Actually, no, by uh, Weichel. And Brunel's back up. That was by Weichel with a little catch of the kick of the trip. So now they're right back up. Right back in the center. Potter striking. Nice kick there by Brunel. A little low kick there. Good jab by Weichel. Weichel thinking about maybe another, another explosive move there. But Brunel, of course, doing a good job of walking him down. 
Utilizing three, four, five pieces straight. Using the punches right now. Kick by White Jewel, semi blocked. Hook to the body. Whiffed on the hook to the head from uh, from Brunel. And White Jewel going low. Uppercut now from Brunel. Uh, nice to have you here, King Wheel. Hell yeah, man. Nice to have the homies here. Uh, Danish and from Las Vegas to sustain. Oh, yeah. So you've really got to ride for your guy here. White Jewel saw the tie fights, I see. Oh, yeah. Especially with the man, the way that man's trying to approach the striking here. Definitely in the time mood. Bang, come. Oh! Take down now by White Shield. That is not good for... Oh, shit. Full fucking mount by White Shield. That is not good. That take down to the full mount. White Shield. Oh, shit. He's scrambling with him, though. Brunel able to get out of the position. Scrambling with him. And now White Shield going for a guillotine. Brunel is defending well, though. I don't think he's in danger. I don't think he's in danger. And now Whitesell flattens out into a side, actually like a side mount there, but no. Now Bruno tries to get up. Oh, snatches the head, does Whitesell. Whitesell leans back on the head. Leans back on the head. Trying to get a, trying to get a fucking guillotine in here, but. Okay, yeah, the head's going to slip out. That head of Brunel is going to slip, yep, and there it is. It slips out, Brunel is now in a half guard. It's now in the half guard. He could easily transition to. He can easily transition to the side mount. Actually, to side control. Maybe go to full mount here because it looks like White is not going to be that dangerous when it comes to defending on the floor here. It just looks that way. White getting spread out on the floor here, not doing a lot of movement. This is all Bruno with the top position, about a four a minute forty to go. It's only a round number one. This is good work by Brunel. Brunel tried to move into the, move to the side control, but says, nope, fuck it, I'm going to go right back into the half guard. Thought about a transition, but it, he didn't commit to it. By the way, round 10 out of, oh, 8 out of 10 now for the O'Leary fight. Looks like O'Leary is still ahead, of course, over in the boxing. And then the UFC, the third round is about to begin in that bathroom break fight over there. Both men and Bellator get off the floor. Hook and a knee for Weichel. Uppercut for Brunel. Jab for Brunel. Low kick for Brunel, but look at the counter by Weichel. Double jab for Brunel. Uppercut, double jab for Brunel now. One, two for Weichel. Hook, uppercut, hook for Brunel. Look at Brunel with the just the, the pressure here. Walking forward with the pressure. White will try to throw back, but he's really having to move laterally and move away just so Brunel doesn't fully corner him. Uppercuts, straights landing. Brunel's forward pressure is really starting to give White to some issues here. White with a nice knee after thinking about a clinch. Brunel walking him down. Jab, and now a beautiful uppercut to the body and hook to the head now by Brunel. Uppercut to the body, nice hook to the head. Really punishing him there 10 seconds ago. Right here, one do I white show, and there is the end of the round. Good shit. Uh, don't mind me, folks. I need to see if Coach Prime and Colorado suffering against Oregon. Nope, they're in commercial. I'll check in a minute. I have my eye on the Colorado game. I feel like Oregon's going to humble them today, and Deion Sanders is going to feel like is finally going to know what it's like to lose as a high-level college coach. Uh, I just forgot to check him on that. Oh, let's see. Mad's got tight boxing tonight. He does. He's looking like the better fighter. He's definitely looking like the better fighter. And then, of course, there's Canelo and Charlo that is going to be next Saturday. No UFC next Saturday, but we do have Canelo next Saturday. And, hey, Charlo's no slouch either. They're both undisputed champions. And they're going to fight for the undisputed middleweight championship. That should be a good one. Brunel medaled in Olympics, unheard of, outside Russia, USA, and sometimes Iran, says Dane. That is very true. It's very rare to see a Danish athlete medal in the Olympics. So you know what? He definitely is one of a kind in that regard. Because usually you're right. You you don't see that often. You definitely don't see that. Uh, when it comes to places outside of Russia, USA, and of course Iran. Go around, do. By the way, let me see the score since they were in commercial there. Oh, they're just talking shit. I'll check in a minute. 
Good right hand by Amasi. Amasi with a couple low kicks. White Chul now with a nice jab. One two by White Chul. Good counter by Brunel. Brunel trailing. Damn! 21 to nothing. Orchid over Colorado. God damn. Well, Coach Prime definitely feeling it now. 21 nothing. Oregon over Colorado. Ugh, that's bad. That's real bad for Coach Prime. There's now a jab by Weichel. 1-2 by Brunel. I just had to check that score real quick. Good 1-2 now by Weichel. With Brunel still got his foot on the gas. Still walking him now. There's a good jab. We dominate crew rowing. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, you guys are the rowers. Okay. Well, that would make sense, actually. Especially when compared to the Americans. We, we, I imagine we're not that high level at it. And you motherfuckers probably just roll it. It's a good low kick by White. Another low kick by White. Actually, no, by Brunel, excuse me. Well, into the first one. Second one, it was kind of caught. It was caught and it was pushed away. Cheers, everybody. I'm smoking on gumbo, drinking on IPA. Walking him down like a dog. This is mad it's real shit. Mads Brunel been in control since round one. Literally walking down Weichel. Weichel tries to throw back to counter. Try to get some respect, but it doesn't matter. Mads continues to walk forward on him. Continues to push the pace on him. And yeah, Mads is not handling this shit very well at all. Almost like he can't function when somebody pressures him like this. And considering Mads is bringing that pressure like I expected him to. Oh yeah, this is going to be a cakewalk for Mads here. Surprised there's no like late finish. I figured not an early finish because veteran like that, you're not going to finish him early unless you really fucking catch him. Like you just catch him sleeping completely. Uh, but walking him down like this, I had a feeling that that could potentially happen. That's exactly what's going on now. By the way, folks, Zhang and Joyce, that card, the main card, about to start in exactly 20 minutes. 2-0, 20 minutes left. We're getting real fucking close. By the way, the ladies are done in the UFC. Thank the fuck Christ for that. Uh, Moserat and old girl here just finished. Oh, what the fuck? Yeah, Moserat and... Um, uh, Vidal just finished. They're finally done. I will let you know who won that, of course, momentarily. And, of course, right now we're still looking at Mads Bruno. Kind of, damn, hooked to the body, hooked to the head now by Mads. Another combo there by Mads. Now they tie up. Mads pushes him off. Uppercut hook. Wyatt tries to counter with a kick. But look at Mads. Straight jab. Uppercut now. Yeah, Weichel really getting hit up in the face. Oh my god, pair of fucking hooks just really backs up uh, Weichel there. Weichel getting relentlessly walked out. Oh my god! Three uppercuts and then a straight up jab to the face uh, by Brunel. Now a spinning back elbow for Weichel. And Brunel's like, what the fuck? Push kick now by Weichel. Straight jab by Brunel. Hook by Weichel's there. Couple jabs by Brunel. Thinks about a hook. Does Weichel. Fakes a takedown there. Doesn't quite get it. Brunel still walking forward on him. Straight jab. Straight hook. Weichel's taking that jab out. Good uppercut by Brunel. Jab by Brunel. That uppercut to the body. Excellent hook there. Now another uppercut there by Weichel. And another uppercut there by White Short. A jab now by Amazi. Oh, split decision? Vidal. 29-28. Split decision. Still undefeated. Oh, Moserat got the win by decision. Wow. So Moserat wins her fight over on the UFC card. Damn, damn, damn. She got that fucking win right there. I'll get back to that in a minute, though. Ten seconds to go. As Mad is completely just owned this fight. Mads is literally ahead, just two rounds of zero. Low kick now lands. White with another pop out jab. There's the end of the round. Um, by the way, we have about round ten out of ten over on the boxing card. 
Moserat just won by decision over on the UFC, by the way. Boom, there it is. For those that had her, for the degenerates that bet on her, there you go. Moserat with the decision. And up next is actually Hannah Goldie in Inouye. So I will leave that uh, up for a second. Over on Bellator, though. Showing in between rounds, there was the uppercut. There was the jab by Mads. The forward pressure by Mads was just way too much. There was a spinning elbow by Whitechill. One, two. But look at Mads again. Just shook it off. Walked him down. Uppercut to the body. Jabbed the head. Hooked to the head. Whitechill just can't handle the pressure, man. Can't handle the pressure. Can't handle the heat. So his ass needs to get out of the damn street. He can't take it. Round three, come on, ref. Filter here, we go, round three. There we go. Yeah, that other one's pretty much busted there. Yeah, that one, that shit fucking done. That shit's fucking melted. All right, let me put this bitch in there. There we go. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, folks. As we get this round three started with Mads up literally two rounds to zero. It is, we're looking at a 2018 right now for Mads. 2018. Nice little knee and a good hook there by Whitechill. He's trying to press forward, but oh, there's a good elbow by Brunel to keep him in check. Whitechill going to continue to press forward with another hook and another elbow, but again, Mads is there to counter him. There's a low kick now by Mads. He's really going to back up Whitechill here. That low kick backed him up. The jab's backing him up now. He's kind of got Whitechill with his back to the cage wall. Good hook there by Mads. Whitechill going to try to navigate his way out of the corner. There's another knee by Whitechill, but a good counter hook there by Brunel to once again keep him in check. Para hooks now by Mads. Smacks the face of Whitechill. Left, right. And that man's fucking brains and head just sort of scramble for the minute. Another para hooks there by Brunel. <clears throat> Jab by Brunel. A little spinning back elbow. <clears throat> excuse me. Elbow there by Whitechill. Whitechill and Brunel now tie up. Elbow by Brunel. Another elbow by Brunel. Just a pair of them that land flush. And another pair of elbows like it's fucking Lopini Stadium. He's throwing those elbows like punches is Mads. He's really owning this fight here. Brunel's going to walk away with victory. This has been way too easy for him. Way too easy for him. There's a pair of hooks. And by the way, folks, O'Leary... And fucking uh, Gardner just ended. O'Leary Gardner ended just like this one's about to end. I believe O'Leary is the winner, but I'll let you guys know in a minute. As they decide the winner, there's a good one-two now by Mads. Another pair of punches by Mads. And now a, uh, like a few hooks by White. So White try to take him down. Oh, Mads able to sprawl, holding onto the head. Let's see, who wins this decision here? I got a hit like right in front of me. Brunel holding under the head and now flattens him out on the ground. Ah, O'Leary. O'Leary is the winner. O'Leary retains the WBC International, good God, International Super Lightweight title. Another bullshit sanctioning fee belt uh, by the suit salesmen and the good people over at the WBC. Uh, and I believe next up, Oh, yeah, it's like three fucking fights left. Holy shit. At least on that main card. Uh, but right now, going back over to the UFC, Mads Brunel. Uh, kind of flanning out Weichel here to end the fight. About a minute 28 left. And speaking of fights, you know, MMA fights, Inoue and Hannah Goldie are now about to scrap it a little bit. Inoue already inside of the cage. Hannah Goldie going to make her way out in a minute. Actually, I think she's already there. Oh, she is already there. I missed her walkout. Okay. Uh, let's see. I love that, Jay. The sanctioning fee build. <laughs> Absolutely. 
Another ridiculous, meaningless, pointless sanctioning fee belt by the WBC and the suit salesman, Rashad Salima. Or Marco Salima. Uh, you ain't lying. Absolutely, man. Pretty much all it is, which is very sad. It has come to that. Uh, let's go over here. By the way, Mads is going to close out this fight. It's like 40 seconds left. He's going to he's gonna win that. Laying and praying on dude right now. Literally laying in a half guard. Going to kill the clock. About 30 seconds to go. Hannah Coldy and now about to fight. She look Jesus Christ. Even more juiced up than usual. Even though she's... She's got like an average fucking right. Yeah, like 6 and 3. I'm shocked. I guess all that muscle doesn't really give her much uh, benefit. 10 seconds to go. And there is the end of the fight. That's Mads right there. All Madsy. Mark Smith, by the way, the referee. Hold up. Hold on, folks. I'll give you the Bellator results now that fight's done. But that should be all Mads Brunel. Here we go. Round number one over on the UFC. This fight's done. Uh, this fight just ended, even though Tapology and updating, updating the results. Uh, and I believe this fight should be next. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I was about to say that. Either that should be next or one of the others. I'll let you know. But I think this should be that one. Uh, and now here we go with the UFC. See, White's was chin still holds up pretty good. I'm surprised, Maddox. I thought he was going to get chin there considering his past, but somehow that chin was able to hold up the whole fight. I was actually rather surprised. Hannah Goldie built like a muscly turtle here like a damn fire hydrant. Cheers, everybody. Good clinch situation there by Goldie. God, that fight was god awful. Jay says, Guns MMA lift less. Good to see you, by the way, Guns. I hope you're well. Yeah, that first UFC fight was rough. Uh, I'd say this fight, a little bit rough, even though we know who's better. That boxing fight was rough, too. But you ain't lying. That first fight, very fucking rough for the UFC. Wait, you watching UFC? Oh, yeah. I'm watching three cards at once. UFC, Bellator, and I'm doing a boxing card, Zang versus Joyce. So I'm doing three at once. Right now, I'm commentating Inoue and Goldie, which is on the UFC. Oh, wait, what the fuck? Hold up. Oh, I was about to say, why the fuck did I have three minutes? It's supposed to be five. I had it on five. Okay, I'll have it for round two, then. I don't know why the fuck it said uh, three minutes there. I'll do that next round, so let's get that. Hold up. Boom, boom, okay. Round two, I'll have that. See, I almost fell asleep. Yeah, it's gonna be a long one, so I don't blame you. Especially when you got all that weed in you, shit. Round number one. And by the way, the winner over on Bellator, I believe that was Mads officially? Yeah, I think they officially announced Mads as the winner. Yep, they did. So Mads won that shit by decision. Hold on, there we go. And right now I am commentating the UFC fight. And Noe and, uh, and, and Mizuki. Uh, Mizuki, I'm sorry, not in, in Noe and Mizuki. Uh, Mizuki and Goldie. Colorado getting schooled by Oregon. Crazy Vietnamese style. They are, bro. It's like 21 nothing. Second quarter, 445 to go. Yeah, from what I've seen, Oregon's been dominating so far. Coach Prime ain't feeling so cocky right about now, man. I hope they don't get schooled. See, why is that crazy, his guns? I guess because, like, with all the hype surrounding them, you would think they put up a better effort against Oregon, but instead, Oregon's just beating the shit out of them. College football. But yeah, they're just beating the fuck out of them. Good kick now by Hannah. Jesus. Good kick by Goldie and a good right hand to follow. Where the fuck did my weight? Oh, here it is. 
I'm like, why did I lose it? But nope, it is like right in front of me. I'm high as hell. It's about a closer game. It's a shutout. Sanders getting sacked. That is true. Sanders getting hit a lot. You would think it'd be a lot closer than that with all the hype, but nah, they're getting they're getting their asses kicked right now. This shit, like you said, Vietnamese style, ain't even close. No oh, kick now by Hannah. This is a very boring UFC fight. Very bathroom break ish. Uh, the boxing card actually has a fighter in it. Who the fuck is that guy? He looks like a damn giant. I'll find out in a minute who the fuck that is. Oh, wait. It's a Duma. Somebody asked me about that guy earlier. And... Let's see. Which one is it? Yep, it is this fight. Okay. Alright, so he's about to scrap. Mads Brunel is the winner, though, folks. There it is. Decision win by Mads Brunel. Hey, let me fix that. There it is. Decision win by Mads Brunel. For those that are wondering about that. And right now, going over to the UFC. About 18 seconds to go. By the way, oh shit. Who? Oh, somebody retired. Oh, wait, hold up. Oh, Daniel Weichel retired. Oh, fuck. Well, I did say he wasn't going to have a future after Bellator closed, and I think he fucking figured that out after that fight. Wow. So Daniel Weichel retired over in Bellator. Wow. He dropped the gloves. My man dropped the gloves, said a prayer, and said, all right, I'm out of this bitch. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. I figured he would do that shit, too. I fucking figured he'd do that. By the way, Moses, Etia, Uma. You know what? I think I'm going to do this. That UFC fight is boring me right now. I hate to even say it. So let's do this boxing match real fast. And hopefully somebody gets knocked the fuck out. Let's see. Atuma and Bashida. By the way, the boxing match is over on ESPN+. Plus, so I'm watching two things on Plus right now. Let's see, six rounds, three minutes, okay, there we go. What a long career he had, I know, right, 40, 42 in like 15, that's a crazy amount of fights to have, especially at his age. Good to see you, by the way, Aunt William, hope you're doing well, my dude, says he'll be with us in a few hours. Good shit, my guy, be safe, of course, and we'll see you when you're here. Callum, Callum is here, hey, bro, I hope you're well, man, I hope you're well too, my dude. We're hanging out right now. We're checking out the UFC, uh, which is on bathroom break material. Uh, the U uh, Bellator is also on. I believe they are close to the co-main event. Yeah, about three fights left on Bellator. Oh, speaking of bathroom break, oh wow, it's really it's bathroom break heaven in UFC and Bellator right now. Zhang and Joyce, we have this fight happening right now. Oh, here we go. See you, Tuma. Pitarek Sinead went 100%. It says Pitarek. Good to see you, by the way, Pitarek. Hope you're doing well. So I'll let you guys know who won in the Atuma fight. Actually, wait. Let me reset that. So wait. We'll wait for that one then. I won't do that boxing match because that looks like it's going to be done quick. I'll just wait for the next Bellator fight to get here. There is a good takedown now by Azuki. By the way, let's yeah, let's go over here with that, and let's here we go round two. Hannah, by the way, just got fucking taken down, flattened over and back on the ESPN feed. Uh, just in, brother. I'm with you for the rest of the night. Hell yeah, my dude. Go ahead and take a seat and relax, my dude, because we have a long night ahead. We still have Zang and Joyce. We still have Edwards and um, and Eblin. And then, of course, we have Fazeev Gamner a little later in the night. Oh, and it looks like Fat Boy's about to get knocked down over on uh, the boxing card. Oh, shit. Too much walking. Oh, 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 oh! I tell you, but it's killed. Yeah, that's it. That's it. M uh, Moses uh, Idiuma just knocked out of mine. Holy shit, in one fucking round. Whoa, that was beautiful. Thank you for that, sir. Thank you for that. Uh, we're gonna find the Moses fight. You can find it on TNT Sports, but I'm gonna be honest with you. He just got knocked. He, he just knocked somebody the fuck out. He just knocked out a mine, so it just happened. 
Who won the Moses fight? Moses won the fight. He won by one round knockout. First round knockout. Uh, Gamrut or Faziv? I'm going to go... I'm going to go Faziv in the early rounds. It's either going to be Faziv in the early rounds or Gamrut is going to win a decision. I'm going to go Faziv like round one, round two stoppage. Uh, let's see. Did Brunel win? Is Christopher Gore? Yes, he did. Brunel won by decision. You can see the results right above my head right here. There we go. Moises won a, uh, Brunel won a decision. Uh, Moses with a one-round knockout. They're not updating the results for some reason, but um, I did just see the fight happen, so Moises with a one-round knockout. Brunel with a decision. And, of course, in the UFC, we're only in our second fight. The only other fight that has happened is the opener over in the UFC. So, UFC just kicking off. Bellator, we got about one, two, three fights left. About to get uh, Sinead, Kavanaugh, and Sarah Collins. Zhang Joyce, that fight just ended with uh, with Moses. So, I think the next fight that will be happening is, I think... Ezra Taylor and Joel McIntyre, but I'll let you know in a minute. And by the way, uh, a lot of rolling around for Hannah Goldie. A lot of rolling around, and now she's trying to clinch up with this woman. UFC is on second fight, says Gore. Oh, yeah. They're on Goldie and, uh, and, uh, and Nobi right now. Good knee to the head by Hannah. Good knee to the body by Hannah now. Hannah, nice knee to the body, right on Anoe. Anoe fires back with a knee to the body. Goldie just pushing uh, Anoe right into the cage wall. Gonna try to step in. She's deep on the single leg as Goldie, though. Deep on the single. Let's see if she can actually get it. And by the way, Bellator, we're about to have walkouts for uh, Kavanaugh and Collins. I'll update you about that fight in a little bit. Can Hannah get this woman down? Is the question. She's clenched up tight. You think with all the all those muscles on her body, you think she wouldn't have a, a problem considering she looks a lot stronger than the other lady. Does muscle Inoue over a little bit though after Inoue tried to take her down. And there is Sarah Collins. Oh my god, she looks depressed. <laughs> she looks very depressed over on Bellator. Ah, and there's Carl Frotch over on TNT in front of my face. Uh, talking about the fight, the main event. A little takedown attempt there by Mizuki, and there is the end of the round. Very close one right there. By the way, folks, over on Bellator, Kavanaugh and Collins are about to scrap. Oh, hell. Those algorithms are working overtime today. I love that. Cheers, my friends. Old and new. Round three of Anoe Goldie. Round one about to start for Kavanaugh and Collins. Uh, and by the way, Moses did just destroy um, a mine in like one fucking round, basically. Basically blitzed him in a round there. And I believe this fight's going to be next. I'll update you guys about that, of course. We're going to go ahead and finish out the UFC here. Or at least the UFC fight right here in round three. Let's see. Let's get the clock back up here for this round. Here we go. Round three. Here we go. Round three. Jab by Mizuki. By the way, Mizuki is minus 425. Favorite and Goldie plus 300. Dog right now in this fight. On the live line. Mizuki ahead. Bellator almost done. Thank God. Only only two more fights after this one. This fight right here for Bellator's dog shit. It's like a bathroom brick fight. Sine Kavanaugh. Pff, they can get her out of there. They gotta get her the fuck out of there. Uh, let's see. It was hidden. Unhidden, hidden. Oh, you're good. You got it now. <laughs> you're all good. Hey, them algorithms working overtime for Zang and Joyce today, huh? Weird, I don't see any algorithms working for Bellator or for UFC. 
But Zhang and Joyce, oh yeah, we're we're getting them all today. Good right hand by Hannah Goldie. There's a knee for Goldie to the body. Down to 350 to go in round number three. By the way, Sinead Kavana, or Sinead Kavanaugh, I should say, uh, now walking out to the cage over in Bellator. Right hand now by Goldie. One, two by Mizugi. Mizuki straight jab to the face of Hannah Goldie. Hannah hanging in there tough. Good jab by Mizuki right to the face. She's tagging her up with the jab. The corner is begging Hannah to set up something with the jab. Cheers, everybody. Oh, by the way, on boxing, never mind. It looks like up next... At 5 o'clock, ESPN Plus, Anthony Yard and um, Silva. And it is 5 o'clock, so everybody fire up your ESPN Plus cards, everybody. Fire up your ESPN Plus. Fire up your Plus, everybody. The coverage has officially started over on ESPN Plus for Zhang and Joyce. You can get rid of your, um, your, your backup sources, all my friends in America. ESPN Plus is now live. With the Zang card. So let me set that bitch up right over here. Now that, that fight's officially done. Yard wins, says Piotrek. Uh Hopefully he does. Uh, the fight has not happened yet, though. But hopefully he does win. I would like for him to win this fight, considering the ups and downs he's had in his career. Let's go over here. Zang Joyce 2. Let's go. Yep, Zhang Joyce to main card time, everybody. Oh, they got Tim Bradley talking about this bullshit. Oh, Lord. <laughs> they got Tim Bradley talking about this. All right, let's put that down for Hannah. Got 150 to go now in the fight. I'm going to plug this into... Oh, yeah, I'm going to do it here. They got the commission talking to Zhang and shit right now. They're just kind of doing the preview like they always do. Put this bitch in here. There we go. Animals, what's going on? Insight, good to see you, bro. Hope all is well. We are watching three events right now. We're watching the UFC right now. We are watching Bellator. And, of course, we are watching boxing. So it's a, uh, it's a busy day. It's a busy day, but a good day. Of course, right now we're looking at the UFC. 115 left to go in the fight. Good job by Mizuki. of me there we go let's see when is yard says pop about to start in a little bit yard is next yard is up next uh and i will call that fight of course 50 seconds to go good knee by goldie by the way sinead and collins just started over on bellator just started over there so i'll let you guys know what happens in that fight about 40 seconds to go now in the ufc good hook now by hannah as they break away Right hand, high kick by Hannah, but a good jab by uh, Mizuki. Mizuki looks like she's going to walk away the winner in this. There's a good right hand by Mizuki. Hannah trying to go for a takedown, gets stuffed. Good knee by Mizuki, knee by Hannah. Good hooks now by Mizuki. Knee by Hannah, hook by Mizuki. Ten seconds. Ten second warning sound, about to sound. There you go, ten second warning. Good Elbow and a jab now by Mizuki. Good jab by Hannah, but just way too late. End of the fight. So that one's done. So let's get rid of the backup. Let's go for yard here. And let's see. Where do they put bathroom break energy? Full on. Let's see. What is that? Oh, okay. That's 10 rounds, 3 minutes. Okay, so 10, 3 minutes. So I'll wait for them to do that. Bellator ain't nothing going on right now. It's Sine, Kavanaugh, and Collins. Uh, literally nothing exciting. As as bathroom break as you would ex as bathroom break as you would expect Bellator to be. And then of course the UFC and Noe and Goldie just ended. So I'll let you know who won that. Big bathroom break energy. Absolutely. Big, big bathroom break energy indeed, man. 
Silva and Yard looks like it's about to happen next, or at least happen a little bit. No inboxing. They're going to stall a little bit before they bring them to out. Uh, let's clean this up. Yep, it's about to happen next. They're about to cut to another commercial over in boxing there, but that is usually what they do. Let's turn that up, by the way. By the way, they're showing the highlights from Zhang Joyce 1. Oh, my God. He really did piece up Joyce until Joyce decided to, like, just said, nope, I can't take no more. His eye literally was destroyed. His orbital was done. Oh, yeah, yeah, look at that eye. That right eye of his was shut. I think Zhang might do it again to him, to be honest. Cheers, everybody. Twenty three and 0, 22 KOs for Anthony Yard versus George Silva or Jorge Silva is twenty two and eight with twelve knockouts. That's not a bad ratio at all. Mm. Let me see. There we go. Let's see, so why are these two fighting a rematch? So, the reason they're fighting a rematch, I'll, I'll lay it out for you, Ken. So, the first fight, Joe Joyce was the champion. He was the WBO champ. And then, the plan was, Joe Joyce was going to beat Zillian Zhang, and then he was going to move on to either fight Tyson Fury or Usyk, right? So, then Zhang, out of nowhere, shocked everybody, hit... Joe Joyce in the eye until it was swollen shut, and then he won the fight and won the belt. So then Frank Warren, the manager of Joe Joyce, said, nah, fam, we need a rematch. That was not supposed to happen. So the rematch clause activated. They're running it back in the same location as before, and that's why we're having it. This, this was not supposed to happen. This fight was not supposed to happen. It was supposed to be Joe Joyce beating Zhang, but instead Zhang turned the tables on him. So, they reenacted their rematch clause, and that's why they're going to run it back. Zhang pretty much fucked up the future right there. Let's see. Hey, bro, you just ripped that shit up, says Gord. Absolutely. Always got to, my friend. And by the way, it looks like Yard is now there. So, co-main event over on Boxing, everybody. Co-main event over there. And by the way, same time, everybody. Jacob Collier and Mohammed Usman are about to scrap. By the way, Inouye just beat Hannah Goldie by decision. Hannah Goldie is now 6-4, and four, bum level. Whereas uh, Mizuki Inouye climbed to 15-6, and six. not a bad record. Collier and Usman are up next. But over on Queensberry, we have the co-main event. Zhang is right after this fight with Yard and Silva. And by the way, Silva is a last-minute sacrifice. So he should lose this, ideally. Oh, and also, up next, over on Bellator, after this fight with Kavanaugh and Collins, is Aaron fucking Pico in the co-main event. And then, of course, we got Eblin and Edwards after that. By the way, Collier walking out over on the UFC side right now. I'm about to do two fights at once, everybody. We're about to do two at once, my people. Let's get that round one now. Let's get that out of the way. Right now, Collier walking out. Jorge Silva being introduced over on the boxing card. Cheers, Jay and friends. Cheers to you, special Bendy bro. Hope you're doing well, my dude. I'm drinking on some Blood Orange IPA. And I got some gumbo, and I'm still smoking on some of the Misfits pack that you got me not that long ago. So it's, it's a good day, man. Been a long day, but a good day. We're getting close to Zang and Joyce. Very close to that. About one fight away. UFC, we're just getting started. We're in fight number three, and Bellator is almost done. We still got Aaron Pico, and then Eblin and Edwards, the main event, the like bathroom break fight right now.
So Collier is in the cage. Man, too many fights on the day. I love this is foul one. You ain't lying, foul one. There's a lot of fights on the day, brother. It's it's almost overload. Almost overload. I kind of like it this way, though. I like the variety. Variety is spice of life, after all. Let's see. Yard lions in the building, says Gaddy. I hear him, too. A lot of fucking yards people, including Tunde ass. Fucking hype man in it up. Cheers, everybody. I got three TVs going the same here. Round one. Zang is fighting right after this one right here with Anthony Yard, everybody. And also on the UFC, Muhammad Usman. Holy shit. My man is definitely, yeah, he, he looks bigger than before. Look at the traps on fucking Muhammad Usman. Jesus. Muhammad got traps and everything. Good right hand to start off by Yard. Yard is going to make short work of this guy. This guy's a replacement. Last minute. Uh, one guy had to fall out because of like visa issues or some shit. So this dude flew in from Portugal and Yard's going to beat him up in front of these Englishmen. And then they're going to bring Zang out to really uh, piss off everybody across the pond. Because I don't feel good about Joe Joyce's chances. I'm going to be honest with you right now. And by the way, it's a free card on ESPN+. Plus. If you have an ESPN Plus subscription, you can watch the boxing match. No additional paywall needed. I love that. At Frank Warren's old age, I'm glad he didn't uh, put this behind a pay-per-view paywall. Made it free with the ESPN Plus sub. Perfect. By, by the way, folks, Muhammad Usman, speaking of ESPN Plus, now in the cage with Collier, and they're about to have a heavyweight scrap. Hopefully it's not boring. By the way, Muhammad Usman looks like a damn gorilla, bro. Bro literally looks like a damn gorilla. He's fucking huge. A damn tank, a damn gorilla, a damn an a savage fucking animal. Let's see, terrible fight on belly. Oh yeah, that's bathroom break fight, bro. Collins and, and, and Kavanaugh, yeah, fuck that. Th those two ladies are going to stink up the whole joint. They're going to bore everybody to death. Nobody's going to sign them. PFL and fucking UFC ain't going to sign those two ladies. I can guarantee that. Usman from Cell Block A says, it's, it's, it's like, you ain't lying, bro. He's got that Cell Block look to him. You are not lying about that. As Collier introduced first. And by the way, everybody, hold on. Where is it? Oh, here it is. This fight's going to be round one. I'm going to make it disappear for now so I can do the boxing commentary. But, uh, hold on. Actually, wait, it's about to be in between rounds. So, let's do this real fast. All right, there we go. I think we'll set it up like that. Good hook, though, by Yard. About 15 seconds to go in round one. 10 seconds. And Yard, of course, going to dominate that. Speaking of round one, we're going to go round one here in the UFC, everybody. Ooh, Saman and Kalia. Round one. Don't worry, I'll update Yard uh, in them in a minute. Lean it towards Jake, says Bendy. Usman, round one, finishes foul one. This should be crazy. Somebody should get knocked out early here. Usman, call your round one. Look above my head for the results, everybody. I tried to spread things out so I'm a little more centerized and in front of your eyes. You dig? You dig? Good job now by Collier. Collier go try to feel himself here. Wait a minute. Boom. There we go. A little more centerized behind me. There we go. Jab now by Osaman. Uppercut now by Collier. Knee by Collier to the face. 1 2 now by Collier. Oh, this is a little crazy scrap. Oh, Collier with a head and arm. Standing head and arm. He getting into standing and head and arm choke. Trying to get an Usman holding onto his arms, though. Collier trying to choke him standing up. Nope, didn't work. Usman scrambling around with him. Usman's hurt, laughing, hope it's a boring fight, can't have Usman gas his gore. 
Shit, hope it's not a boring fight. I'm with you, man. Can't have them gas. They're only, these guys are good for like one fucking round. After that, they're useless. You're absolutely right. Juice men. This is the real juice men. That's true. Everybody used to say like uh, uh, Kamaru was the juice men. I think his brother is is more the juice men than, the bro than uh, Kamaru, to be honest. Marty from Nebraska, I think, is an innocent man. This is this is the motherfucker people should be calling juice men. Look at this fucking fucking tank with a big ass Brock Lesnar trapezoids. Like what the fuck? Him and call you're squaring up though. Good jab now by Usaman. I mean shit. I lift a lot in the gym as y'all can tell, but motherfucker, this guy's like on a whole cycle. It's not just creatine. I think he's on the he's on the fucking uh probably the testosterone that TRT shit. A jab by uh by Usman. Jake I'm the gas is foul one. That do. Jake ain't exactly one of the better conditioned athletes, so it's gonna be a war of attrition here. It's like which which juice mint is gonna last? The guy that drinks from juice boxes or the guy that has a juice cycle? Damn, there's a good knee by Collier. That was an accidental one too. He tried to go over a head kick. And he fucking hit it with that knee. Good jab now by Usman. Usman, another jab to the body. Now another jab to the body. Good, right? I'm going to call your hook by Usman. Oh, that knee almost fucking clipped him, though. 2.13 to go. By the way, Yard now in round two. Ooh! Oh! Yard knocked him down! Knocked down! Knocked down! Knocked down! Yard got that boy down! Yard got that boy down, you dig? Oh, shit. Oh, they waved it! They waved it! Yard takes him out in two rounds. Prediction in the bag. I had a feeling to get that guy out. Damn. Anthony Yard took that boy out to pasture right there. Oh, shit. Ooh, put that work in in two rounds, folks. Anthony Yard takes out Silva. Silva, thank you for coming, but go the fuck home. We need to get Zang in this bitch now. Zang time up next, everybody. We got that quick execution out the damn way. Right on time, by the way. Love the timing there, Anthony Yard. Thank you. You and the Lions can go celebrate somewhere else. We need to get Zang out this bitch now. Before we get to that, though, let's finish up with these two big boys. Let's get that clock out of here for now. Down to 105 to go. By the way, these ladies are in round three, and they are stinking up the joint. Everybody's booing. And nobody gives a fuck. I'll go back to Bellator, and people start to care. Good right hand by Collier. Knee by Collier to the body. Coolio with a quick knockout. <laughs> oh, filling him to sleep. Collier getting knocked out. Usman Mads is gore. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I didn't know Coolio had hands like that. Real shit. Coolio pieced that man up. He tagged him up like a shirt in a department store. Speaking of tagging up, there's a good jab by Collier to tag up Usman. Another jab by Collier. Oh, Usman slipped throwing a punch. What the fuck? Right hand now by Collier. 20 seconds to go. Let's put that actually over here. Yeah. Right hand by Collier. Now walking him down with a jab. Kamaru trying to get uh, separation. 10 seconds to go. Good jab by Kamaru. Or uh, Kamaru. Fucking Muhammad. Push kick by Carter to the body. And there's the end of the round. Round two. Can Ray use some more knowledge? Let's see. You all got to wait 40 minutes. Zang is finishing up his big bowl of white rice and pork slices in the dressing room for a title fight. <laughs> ah, I love it. I love it. Ken, Ken is ready for this shit. <laughs> hey, I'm ready for it too, brother. Zang going to get that final pork and rice bowl in and he's going to put Joyce in a fucking grave. By the way, everybody... Let me let me get the let me get the line for y'all real quick. Let me get the line for y'all. Let me show y'all what we working with here. Where is box? Okay, they try to really they try to strategically hide this shit from me. Here we go. One twenty five for Joyce. Look at this. One fifty five for Zhang. Right. Yesterday the over under was ten and a half. They lowered it to nine and a half. Minus one ten for the over. Minus one twenty for the under, folks. I'm going 155 on Zhang 
and I'm going under nine and a half. I'm throwing that in the parlay. If you got a parlay tonight, I'm telling you, this will do it. Last time these two fought, Zhang got him out there in six rounds. It was a six-round fight last time. Yep, got him out, Dr. Stoppage. Round number six last time they fought. And the over-unders at nine and a half. I'm I'm going under minus 120, and I got that 155 on those Zang. So if you want a little something for the parlay, I think that's worth it, if you ask me. Especially since how the first fight went, there's no doubt the rematch will go the same exact way. Joyce thinks he's got it in the bag. Because Frank Warren lied to him, but he's about to be, he's about to be proven wrong. Oh my god, there's a fucking low blow on Jay Collier. Oh, oh, oh. Actually, no, that's not even a, that's an eye poke, my bad, that's an eye poke. I thought that was a low blow, that's an eye poke. And now, Collier, oh yeah, that's bad. Let me see it again, I thought that was a low blow. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, oh. 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 That's bad. Ah! Mmm! Damn, Jake. Oh, he'd have caught you as uh, Peter Q. Shit. That same, same level of it. Oh, my God. Oh, shit. Man, oh, man, oh, man. That's a bad eye poke. That's a bad one. Call you talking to... Oh, yeah, they gave that boy a cloth. He talking to the doctor now. That doctor in that gray ass suit, he look he looked like Ratatouille's uh, uncle right there. By the way, uh, this bullshit fight just ended, and I believe, yep, Aaron Pico is next over on Bellator. They're about to announce who won the bathroom break fight, and then bring Aaron Pico ass out there. And also on the way, everybody, Zellian fucking Zhang already, for the record, already beat Joe Joyce. 123 around six in the first fight in a fight where the whole world was shocked. I was shocked too. I'm like, what the fuck? That wasn't supposed to happen. But Zhang made a believer out of me and a lot of people, and now Zhang is gonna fucking he's gonna make sure everybody remembers who the fuck he is. By the way, Jake Collier is now talking to the doctor. Ratted to his uncle. What? Yeah, that is ratted to his uncle right there. Especially with the nose and the bald spot. We need new MMA gloves. We do. I talk about it all the time. You know what we need? Hey, look. Pride Style Circular. I've been wearing these out. Pride Style Circular. Just look. The fucking, the fucking fingers. Look at that. I'm not even making a fist. They're down. Them fucking UFC gloves. When you put it on, that shit keeps it up there. So when you do that, no. It needs to be curved. So the shit is down and the fingers are down. You make a fist, it's easy. You can clinch, it's easy. But the point is, the fingers are down. You can do that all day and the fingers ain't in the way. Them UFC gloves, keep them bitches open. I hate it, hate it, hate it. They need to bring them damn curved ones back for real. Real shit. Love training with those. Let's see, he's good. Yes, sir. I only took another L just now. Yes, they fucking did. Usman learned how to poke from the brother. They're still talking to that motherfucker. They're still talking it over. Now Darren Mergliata looking... Oh, yeah, that eye bleeding, too. Darren Mergliata looked like he was spending time at Club Med on a fucking yacht with that damn deep-ass tan. Looking like a tangerine these days. Oh, yeah, he scratched that fuck out. Ah! Got him in the eye with that. That's bad. Hate to see that happen. And, of course, on Bellator, they're just talking about past featherweights and all that. Jay Collier getting the eye checked. While he's getting the eye checked, let me go ahead and hit this. Uh, actually, let me hit the bowl this time. I haven't hit the bowl in a little bit. By the way, they're uh, doing a little preview there. Oh, my God. What the? What the fuck? Oh, they're showing what happened to Aaron Pico last time. Okay, I was like, what the fuck? See. By the way, cheers, folks. Does Sinead win? Uh, yes. There you go. Hold on. Let me get that. Uh... 
Oh, they're back to fighting. Okay, good. But, uh, yes. Decision there by Sinead. Split decision, technically. Actually, no, wait. She lost. My bad. She lost. My bad. I thought she won. I did not look at that when I put it up. My bad. She lost. My my fault. Lost my split. Up next, by the way, is Aaron Pico over on that bitch. So, yeah, sadly lost by split. I have no idea how. I wish I knew, but I have no idea how. Uh, and oh, oh, fuck. Speaking of split, that damn Aya Collier. Oh, y'all see that blood coming down? Yeah, that thing leaking bad, bro. Now Usman gonna jab at it. He created a target with that eye poke right there. He created a damn target with that shit. He said, fuck it, I'm gonna create my own target. And now Usman is gonna circle and jab. Let's see, I messed up, Sinead lost. Yes, she did. She lost by... Hold on, I got you. In case you weren't looking at the screen before. Split decision. Here we go. Sarah Collins defeats... Sneed Kavanaugh uh, via three-round decision. And they got it by a split uh, in three rounds right there. So, yeah, she lost by a split, uh, unfortunately. Let's see. Split eye open. Stop the fight if I was the coach's corner. You know what? That wouldn't be a bad idea right now, Ken. Good jab now by Collier. And a good jab by Usman in round two. 225 left to go in the round, by the way. It was the other eye. Uh, it says foul one. They're really fucking up the eye right now. Split the eye open. Yeah, they're they're fucking it up. That eye getting abused right now. Another jab now by Usman. Waiting for Usman to gas out Carrier's eyes to fly out. Real shit. <laughs> Real shit. Straight jab by Usman, man. He going right at the eye too. Good hook now behind the guard. Nice jab. So he lost a split. Uh, Animal Legend, Animal Legend indeed. Love having a good, love having Ken, of course, as producer. Of course, Ken hanging out for a big day like this. And honestly, with all these big fights, I don't blame him. And by the way, speaking of big fights, Aaron Pico. Random Aaron Pico sighting against Pedro Carvalho. Should beat Pedro Carvalho. Carvalho is like a shell of himself these days. Uh, does Collier's tattoo say prick? Uh, if it doesn't, it should say that, because I would dare to say that Usman's a prick for doing that to his face. It would certainly be fitting for what the fuck's happening in this fight. Usman is really just jabbing this man to death. Once again, very slow from Usman. It's almost like the family has, like, that 30% gene, where they only go 30%, and then they turn it up once they really get some fights under their belt. Tim Bradley is stumbling and mumbling and fumbling sentences over on top rank right now, so I am reacting to the UFC's fight. By the way, Carvalho and Pico are about to fight over on Bellator. Good jab now by uh, Usman. Jab by Usman straight to the eye. Collier tries to charge forward with the one-two, but completely tired. You know what's crazy? Is this Zhang's boxing fight? Is this Zhang's boxing fight also ESPN plot? Bro... That and, and you know what, Ken? That alone really tells you how the world really feels about that first fight. Because in this first fight, I'm not even going to lie to you. First fight, I'm not going to lie to you. I knew about him, but I didn't really know about him. Like, I knew of him, but I didn't really know what he was capable of. And a lot of people in the boxing world felt that way. And when he accepted the fight against Joe Joyce, that was kind of his chance to show people who he is, and that considering how barren heavyweight is right now, because it's kind of, heavyweight's kind of at a standstill right now. They need a breakout contender. With Fury and Usyk not fighting each other, Wilder doesn't have a fight book, AJ no fight booked, fucking Ruiz has no fight book, uh, Dillian White tested positive for drugs, fucking Derek Sora retired. Otto Wileen, nobody gives a shit about, but they should look out for him despite the fact that he's been completely fucked around after that uh, after that fight with Tyson. Uh, the, the division's really stalled. And when he took out Joe Joyce, that was kind of the wake-up call, like, oh shit, nobody really saw this guy coming, nobody really knew about him. He might be something special. And if he can manage to beat up Joe Joyce the same way he did in the first fight, 
he's going to have money fights ahead. He's going to be a mandatory for Usyk. If Fury beats Usyk before he could fight him, he's going to end up fighting Fury. He could fight Deontay Wilder because he needs a fight. And he has a belt, two things that Wilder wants. He could fight Ruiz because he has a belt. And he could be a, vo- a fight for Ruiz since that's two things Ruiz needs. He can be... What Zayn can do today with a victory is essentially kind of call his shot at heavyweight. Because with Fury and Usyk at a standstill... All of a sudden, Zang's going to stand there with a belt like, Hey, you two have belts, but y'all fuckers forgot about the WBO. And when he raises that belt up, he basically can punch his ticket to say, Hey, I can I can literally fight on big-time pay-per-view next. We could do it in China, or we could do it in the US of A. Or if they fight Fury, since he's banned from the US of A, they'll probably do it out in fucking Ireland somewhere. But nonetheless, it, it puts him in a big spot. If he were to win. And by the way, speaking of big spots... Pico and Carvalho are about to fight. I am going to squeeze this fight in real fast. So I see people talking about it. Let's squeeze this in real quick. Since those big boys are going to fight to the end, it looks like. Let's get an Aaron Pico fight in, shall we? He should be able to beat him. But let's see. I got Pedro. Should be easy work. I got Pedro. Let's go Pico, Batista. Oh, yeah. But you're absolutely right, though, Ken. What this does for Zhang in terms of his career is that it pretty much puts him in a spot where he can run the table. So, for him to be on plus, and on, like, free fucking plus, no paywall, it's it's a big deal. It is a big deal. That means that a lot of the executives in boxing and the powers that be at boxing really have faith in the guy. Uh, put five bucks on it, uh, Matt, uh, to Jay, like, last time's a skate. Okay, so he's throwing down a, a little bet there with Carvalho and with Pico. And this is interesting here. We've seen Pico in this spot where Bellator has had faith in him and it's either been triumph for tragedy. The one thing I think will be interesting, though, for Aaron Pico moving forward, let's say he were to win a fight like this in good fashion... Uh, and get a little momentum before, you know, Bellator folds, he could position himself to go to the UFC because, you know, PFL would be more like a money grab for him. He wouldn't learn anything, wouldn't be able to throw elbows, two things that work against him. Uh, So that wouldn't be viable. One championship would set him up to die, uh, and that wouldn't be ideal. Chachri loves to slaughter Americans over there. So the UFC would be a good fit for Pico when the promotion folds. But it would really work in his favor if he can get that momentum. He might have to take a little bit of a pay cut, but you know what? Uh, I bet you he will take the pay cut just to be in the big show. Uh, let's see, Matt. Uh, should I take a room? You're on. Okay, so he says you're on then. Here we go. Round one. Carvalho and Pico. Bet. He really going to fight. It's a foul one. Yeah, he kind of got he kind of got screwed there. After after Super Late B. Rotten, that we screwed him up there. Good. Kick to the body and a jab by Pedro. Oh, and now look at this. Look at Pico charging forward with a three-piece going to the body. And now Pico rushing in with a good clinch to the body now on Carvalho. This is going to be very interesting right here. Hold on, let me put on the battery saver and put that down. There we go. This is good work by Pico. This is kind of where he wants it. Now Pico kind of mauling Pedro here on the floor. Let's me Usa Usman hella dirty. Uh, that eye to get the <laughs> cast back. That was some wild shit, huh? And now look at look at Usman too. He's flattening out Collier on the floor and mauling him. Speaking of mauling, good elbow now by Pico. Pico got Carvalho up against the fence. They break away. Carvalho jab and low kick. High kick now for Carvalho. Push kick for Carvalho. Use money for Carvalho. Low kick by Pico. Oh, low kick by Carvalho. Pico looked like he was going to be injured for a second. And Pico immediately shot for a takedown right there and got it. Pico all over the back now at Carvalho. Don't let Carvalho back up. Don't let him back up, Pico. Yeah, he's going to drag him right over to the uh, right over to the cage wall. Good knee now for Pico. Right to the face. Spinning elbow there for Carvalho. Not quite. And they break away. One thing for Carvalho, one thing by Pico, good hook to the head by Pico and hook to the body. Damn, straight jab now by Pico after the kick of the body by Carvalho. And a takedown again by Pico. He is making life difficult for fucking Carvalho. He's literally taking him down multiple times. Can't hold him though to 
uh, to Carvalho's credit, able to get up almost immediately, but yeah, he's just getting taken the fuck down, not giving any room to breathe here. Hook now by Pico. Knee by Carvalho. Good hook by Carvalho when they break away. One, two by Pico. Oh, Pico knocked out fucking Carvalho. Actually, you know, we just knocked him down. I thought he knocked him out there with that uppercut, but no, we just knocked him down. Somehow Carvalho not dead yet, but he is wounded. He's a wounded animal, and Pico goes in, and now Carvalho going to hold him into the, um, going to hold him there. And by the way, folks, uh, the end of the fight just reached for a call here in Usman. Usman might take that. Good job on the fights, bro. Appreciate it, Andrew Gray. Hope you have a fun, my dude. Hope you guys have fun. Usman's garbage. Uh, let's see. Oh, uppercut. Oh, man. Flying knee by Marco's teeth. The jig got me in the straw. Wow, shit right there. Good knee. Good elbow right there by Pico. Another elbow by Pico. Now some ground and pound by Pico. Look at that shit. Oh, 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 oh. It's adding up. Pico's gonna get a stoppage. He's gonna get a stoppage. Ah, oh, they stop it. It's over. Pico just fucking ended him. Oh, shit. Fucking Aaron Pico with a mauling. With a mauling. Oh, they had to help Carvalho up. Carvalho could barely stand right now. Oh, my God. Aaron Pico mauled that fucking man. Aaron Pico still got it. Oh, man. Aaron Pico ran through him. And who is he hugging? It's fucking... Who is that? Got some fucker in a suit, probably his man or some shit. Oh man, Aaron fucking Pico, what the fucking win? And speaking of win, hold on. Who won this decision right here? Usman and Collier, they're about to announce it. They're gonna give it to Usman, I imagine. And they give it to Usman. Oh, Usman with the win. Usman with the win. By the way, I got to update uh, the... Hold on. I got to update the tap league, but I will do that uh, in a minute just to get everybody caught up. But Usman, now a winner by decision right there. Easy work. And over on Bellator, Pico just finished Pedro. Oh, shit. Of course, there it is, Mad X. Thanks a lot, Pedro. <laughs> Appreciate that. Don't worry, Mad X. You're gonna get a trifecta out of it, bro. Even even when you pay up, you still get rewarded. So I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a trifecta. Uh, is this beer empty? Yes, it is. I'm gonna go get another one. Get that fuck out of here. Uh, let's see. Parlay in here because where did a bitch win throw more than one round? Good man. Good man indeed. Good man indeed. Guess who's back? Pullman is back. Just in time, man. Welcome back, brother. Co-main event just ended with Aaron Pico getting a victory and Muhammad Usman getting a victory. And by the way, Zhang and Joyce up next, everybody. Wele, Zele Zhang or Zhang and Joe Joyce about to happen next. Before we get to that, though, let's see how everybody's doing over in the tap. Let's see. Tucker. Wait, let me refresh to make sure it's good. Yep, Tucker, Robo, and Weedy are one for his Granite Detroit. Uh, six is Dana White pay-per-view, Schwartz, Strickland, True Blood Drop Gaming, and Axi. Eleven, Gary Middle Sandwich, AWS, Ashban, uh, Chris, Alex, Oliveira, Dougie, Mello, and these McNuggets. Twenty is Insight, BT, Sparks. I mean, I'm sorry, twenty is Insight. Twenty-one is BT, Sparks, Kanaka, and Kiwi. Twenty-five, Papa Chuck, Hart, uh, Teddy. And of course, Cody at twenty uh, at twenty-eight. And uh, this course just went down. Aaron Pico, beautiful ground and pound win. And up next is their main event: Johnny Eblin and of course uh, Fabian Edwards. Up next over on the UFC is Jacob Malkoon, Cody Brundage, and folks. Let's get ready. Joe Joyce is walking out right now, everybody. It is now Joe Joyce and Zong time, everybody. Fire up your ESPN Plus. Joe Joyce making that walk out first. 12. Three. There we go. 
this is gonna be a good one right here. It was, it was in round one, free one score cards. <laughs> Real shit. But folks, I'm gonna go hit the bathroom real quick. I'm gonna go actually pour up a shot as well and go get a beer. I'll be one sec. We back. And here we go, folks. Both brother on PEDs, look at pimples, back circles, that. 327, what the fuck? I know, right? Saying came to bang, you did indeed. And folks, cheers, by the way. Mad X, I owe you a trifecta, my dude. So I'm going to go ahead and line that up for you. Let me clean this out. Joe Joyce is in the ring. And now Zong is now going to make his way out to the ring, folks. Zang, or Zang, of course. Zang came to bang, says Saturn. Indeed, my guy. Zang came to bang. Let's get it. Let's get it. And remember, this is 12 rounds for the interim WBO heavyweight title. The winner will become mandatory at, at uh, for the WBO title. Become the mandatory there. And they will end up either fighting Tyson Fury or they will end up fighting Usyk. Most likely Usyk, if I had to predict. Either way, going to be a big fight and opportunity for him. He's 40 years old, six foot six, Older heavyweight. But you know what? It's right on time. Good to see you, by the way, Robo. Hope you're doing well, bro. Let's see, part one. Appreciate you, Maddox. Cheers. Good to see you, by the way, Robo. Be doing well, bro. I haven't seen you here in a minute, man. Hope everything is good with you. Good to see you pop in and out. Part two, cheers. And salute, my friends. Salute, of course, to your Mad X for dropping the five. Let's get it, everybody. Huge, monstrous main event right here. Joe Joyce wins. We're talking trilogy. But if Zong wins, oh, sky's the limit for that guy. Cheers. Huh. Woo. Oh, shit. It's for the interim WBO heavyweight title of the world, of course. I believe the actual belt is held by Usyk. And then, of course, the winner will end up fighting Usyk in, like, a little unification. Because they basically, basically, if you win this fight, you're a mandatory for Usyk or Fury. Usyk and Fury are supposed to have an undisputed fight. I don't think it'll happen because Fury seems like he doesn't really want real fights. He just wants money fights these days, circus shit. And here we go. Defect from the holes to here. Animals rule, says Gary. Animals definitely roll indeed, my friends. We're going to have a fun fucking time. By the way, folks, Cody Brundage and Jacob Malkoon just started over on the UFC. Oh, damn, fucking Cody already took him down. Man, got low-ass fight IQ and shit. And by the way, Johnny Eblen and Fabian Edwards are up next over on Bellator. And we're about to get our main event. Two main events about to happen at one time. 
if I had to label which one's more important, I'd say it's the boxing one, only because Bellator is not going to be a thing in, like, three months. Wait, what is it? September? Let's see, October? Yeah, about four months. About four months, Bellator ain't going to be a thing anymore. Now we're getting our full-on introductions. First, it's the challenger. That being Joe Joyce, surprisingly. And Joe Joyce was the man who was the interim WBO champion before running into Zong. 15-1. and one. He beat, he broke Daniel Dubois. Made Dan, turned Daniel Dubois into the quitter that we've all seen today. The one we saw against Uzik. Beat Carlos Takam. Beat Christian Hammer. Beat Joseph Parker. That was a very impressive fight, too. Did it right in front of Tyson Fury. You tried to help Parker beat him. And then Zellian Zang came in there and fucking ruined his life. For Zang, he had a draw with Jerry Forrest. Knocked out Craig Lewis. Knocked out Scott Alexander. Philippe, uh, Philippe Agrovich, he lost, but arguably there was a bit of bit controversy with that decision. And then came back and ruined Joe Joyce's life even after the robbery to claim a belt. So the fact that he got a title shot despite being robbed tells you how a lot of people felt about the decision and how the matchmakers felt about that. But here we go, folks. He is 25-1-1 one one with 20 knockouts is Zhang. He's got more wins and more knockouts than Joyce. He's 287.2, by the way. 6'6", 287, man. He's a fucking massive monster. Massive monster. Let's see Tim Elliott jumping up and down from the TV right now. This is Mad X, absolutely. Let's see. Robo says, Gary, I love the holes. I love Jake and Cheryl. Hell yeah, man. That's the way it should be. That's the way it should be. Song, of course, officially being introduced now. And there's a... Look at that! Look at the Chinese fans in the crowd! By the way, this fight has taken place in the OVO Wembley Arena in Wembley, London, UK. Out there in London. So, the fucking Chinese fans made the trip to London for this. Let's see. Boom. Boom. What? Why is it interim? Who's the real champ? Uh, it is Usyk right now. Usyk has the belt. I'm not sure. The, I think the reason they made the interim is because Usyk has the real belt. But they made an interim to basically make it a glorified, okay, if you win, you're his mandatory. It's It's really dumb. It's dumb that they have, like, the interim. Like, they don't really need it. But Usyk has the belt, and if... Basically, whoever wins this fight, they're going to fight either Usyk or they're going to fight Fury if Fury beats Usyk uh, before they fight, they face him. So basically, whoever wins this, you're going to get basically a massive, undisputed heavyweight title fight. I don't even know why this is for a belt, to be honest. It's really a glorified number one contender heavyweight title fight. Well, number one contender fight, technically. Good jab by Joyce. So the stakes are real, but it's just dumb that they have an interim. There's no reason. Usyk's not hurt or injured. I just think they made this to try to figure out who's the next contender. But if you're going to do that, you don't need to make an interim belt. You can just say, okay, this is just a number one contender fight. But yeah, nonetheless, they, they made an interim belt for this. It's incredibly dumb. Then again, it wouldn't be boxing unless dumb shit was involved. Oh my god, and Mal Kuhn is beating up a bro. Oh, he hit him in the back of the head! And there's a timeout because Mal Kuhn just hit fucking Brenner's in the back of the head. But anyway, good right hand by Zhang. Zhang came to bang. He did indeed. That's fucking illegal. Real shit. Look at that back of the head shot. Let's see. By Mal Kuhn. Ooh! Yeah, that's the elbow. Oh, back of the head. He hit Brundage in the back of the head with that elbow. Unintentional elbow in the back of the head. Yeah, that boy's head. Bam! That's a rabbit elbow. Ooh! He definitely didn't mean to do that. That's unfortunate right there. Double jab now by Joyce. Good left hand of the body by Zong. Zang can a bang, baby. Zang already the aggressor. This is just like the first fight, everybody. In the first fight, the one thing that annoyed Joe Joyce. See, if you want to know how Joe Joyce fights, think George Foreman. You're gonna take he's gonna take punishment in the beginning. His opponent gets tired, then he beats on him and bullies him. And that's how he basically became an Olympian. 
Zong hits hard enough to where he's not going to allow fucking, uh, he's not going to allow Joyce to lure him into tiring himself. Zong is very smart and calculated, plus he's a heavy-handed hitter. If he hits Joyce on the eye like he did the first fight, he's going to get a stoppage again. Oh, and 42, oh my god. <laughs> this is the Vietnamese style. You ain't lying, brother. Good jab now by Joyce. By the way, look at the number jump up. I think the Chinese brigade is ready to watch Zong destroy Joyce here. Jab by Joyce to the body. Another jab by Joyce to the body. This is just like the first fight, everybody. He's trying to lure Zhang into throwing himself out. That's what Joe Joyce likes to do. They're both respecting each other, but Zhang clearly is being smart. He's waiting. He's waiting. He's waiting for Joyce to give him that opening because what's going to happen is, end of the round, just like in the first fight, Joe Joyce was trying to lure him into a brawl. Then when Joyce realizes that Zhang is not dumb enough to fall for it, Zhang is going to start to tag him up round three, round four, round five, round six, make it really, you know, torturous for him. Because right now it's psychological warfare between these two. Joyce is trying to break Zhang and make him be out of character. But Zhang, all Zhang's doing is just waiting. He's going to wait till Joe Joyce realizes he's not going to fall for the trap. And then Zhang is going to start pummeling him to death. It's all mental chess right now. It's all psychological warfare. That's how Zhang fights. I realized that watching not just this, but I looked at fights that he had like against Craig, that he had against the other dude he knocked out, even Jerry Forrest in the draw, even with Philippe, which was his big test, and he got robbed. He was still very smart in that fight. No race bias. I hope Zhang destroys a good eye. Send him cleaning bag <laughs> high school bathrooms. Bro, I'm telling you, man, Zhang playing that Art of War. Fucking Cambosos is always lying about Art of War, but this dude is Art of War personified. By the way, Fabian Edwards and Johnny Eblen about to fight on the Bellator for UFC, that back-of-the-head fuckery. The fight is over between Malcoon and Brundage because of that illegal back-to-the-head. Looked like another no-contest bullshit. Brundage quit, Cody, chicken Cody, real shit. UFC DQ, yeah, man, he fucking refused to fight on, so they're about to go to the decision with it. The fight's incoming, real shit. Good to see you, by the way, Weed Man. Hope you doing well, brother. We we got our attention at three spots at one time right now. Zhang with a good jab now to Joyce. Remember that under nine and a half, and that Zhang, that's my pick of the day. Jab again by Zhang. Look at this. He's opening up a little bit now. Joyce with a nice cross. Go one, two by Zhang now. Zhang starting to bang. The big bang now starting to get that distance. I like what Joyce is doing, though. He's, he's trying to approach it a little different, but it doesn't matter. Because look at Zhang. He's still the leader here. Jab to the body now. Joe Joyce is the one kind of throwing himself out a little bit. He's going to take his time. and Because here's the thing. Zong hits hard enough to where he can end it early. Jab now by Zong. Right to the face with a beautiful jab. And watch him slowly. Whoa! Big left! Oh! There we go! That's what I'm telling you, Zang. Came to bank. See, now he's starting to land. Now he sees that Joe hasn't learned shit from the first fight. And now he's going to start to break him. Good one, too. Let's see. Now Joy's firing back. But a good jab now by Zong. This is psychological warfare, folks. A little a little quicker than I thought. I was thinking maybe round three, round four. But look at him now. Now Joe going to start to throw. See, he's going to lure him into that brawl. And that's where Zane going to take over. As soon as he lures Joe right into that trap. Joyce has yet to release any big punches. Look at that. He's reacting to Zane now. Even with Zane's like faint, he's reacting to it. The psychology is breaking him right now. This is... Art of War, Genghis Khan shit. Hook to the body now. Look at fucking Joyce. Oh my god. Yeah, Zong about to fucking finish this man. This ain't going nine and a half. No fucking way. I, this is what I need from Joe Joyce. You need to open up with the punches. The, look at this. Look at that big punch by Zang. Now there's a left. Joe needs defense. Zang going in. There's a good big combo. Good right hand by Zong. Right to the eye. See? Going right to the eye again. He's opening up, ladies and gentlemen. 
That's a big round by Zhang. Big round. That's 10-9. Joe Joyce is starting to break, ladies and gentlemen. That's psychological warfare. Joe Joyce already bruised on the left cheek. I think he is, bro. He's bruised, and that eye is going to be next. Damn, that end of the round two is heavy bombs. That's what I'm telling you, brother. Round one, broke him down. Round two, physically break him. First, you mentally do it, then physically do it round two. Them gloves looking tiny on Zhang. Real shit, under four and a half round. Real shit. The over-under is nine and a half, but you're right, bro. This shit going to be under four. Zhang is really going to... He's really going to break this man. Look at the face of Joe Joyce already. Already marked up around the eye, man. And that's the eye that, that Zhang attacked last time. He's going to try to go for the other eye this time. It looks like the last time it was the right. Looks like he's trying to go for the left this time. So the left a little more marked up than the right. Both eyes marked up bad. But it looked like the other eyes marked up more than the uh, the one that he, I say, destroyed the first time. Zang got that nice big rice bowl ready for choice. Zang's the master dragon monkey king warlord. Real shit. Let's go Johnny Apple says Maddox. Yes, sir. Johnny Eblin now inside the cage. Also, we're about to get, after this little bullshit decision there, we're about to get Means and um, fucking Fiala there. There we go. Round three. We're about to, be, about to get Fiello and Means. My bad, I said Jones. But yes, Means and Fiello, but we'll get to that in a minute. Good jab now by Zong. Joyce in his quarter questioning life. Real shit. Chinaman coming for fake European man. <laughs> Joe, bro is cooking him like stir fry, says Gino Alpha. Real shit, bro. He making a stir fry out this man. He making hibachi out this motherfucker right now. Full on hibachi out of damn Joe Joyce and that face of his. Going to the body and the head. I wonder what Tyson Fury and I wonder what Usyk are thinking watching this shit. Joyce looks beat already. What's going on? This is an ass whooping right now, brother. This is psychological warfare witness right now. Look at Joyce. He's not even releasing the bombs. It's a lot of misery jazz, but not the bombs that Joyce usually gets. Because the power of Zhang is breaking him. The power is almost making him shell shot. Joyce is stopping mid-range. He's not releasing the bombs. It's very soft because the power of Zhang has him shook. The body shots, the head shots. Zhang is breaking him psychologically and physically. The confidence of Joe Joyce is shot right now. It is shot right now. I'm telling you, the under and Zhang is going to hit because Joyce can't, he, he can't, he can't last against a guy like this who's going to break him. Look at Zhang take over. He's confident. He's got that Philly shell out there. Another jab to the face. Joyce throwing that slow motion shit. Cri oh, big up, two, going to the body of the head. That was Zhang. Joyce is completely shut down. Jab now by Zong to the face. Another hook to the body by Zong. Hook to the head by Zong. Ooh! Straight jab by Zong again! Yo! Yo, he is styling on this guy. This is crazy. He's slowly... Joyce is fighting like he's underwater. It's slow motion for Joyce. He can't throw anything with, with power because the power of Zhang is shutting him down. Look at this shit. Look at the jab to the body by Joyce. It's like slow motion underwater while Zhang popping him with the punches. The one-two by Zhang again. The crowd in London is stunned. These British folk, bro, they're stunned. Joyce goes to the body. That was a good punch, but Zhang answers with the one-two. Hook by Zong is there. One, two by Joyce is there. Oh my gosh. Hook now. By the way, Evelyn and Edwards are about to start now. Round number one. Oh! Oh! Fucking hook by Zong! That just put George Joyce down like a bad habit! That fucking hook! And he ain't getting up! No! No! He did it again! He did it again! I told y'all, Zong in the under. I told you, I fucking told you. Joyce and the fucking under. <laughs> fucking hell. Zong put Joyce in the fucking ground. Joyce was not going to last 12, and that psychological warfare killed him. 
First fight was six rounds. Second fight was three fucking rounds. Look at that shit. Oh, my God. Watch that right hook again. I told you all that hook, which is what you had to look out for. Watch the right hook again. Watch that shit landing. Oh, my God. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Zong in the under. Easy money, baby. Easy money. That's fucking money, baby. Ah! Ah! That's fucking money, baby. What? Fucking money. Ah! Oh! Let's go. Thanks for the tip. Ah! I caught it. I told y'all, Zong in the Under was money, baby. Money, baby. Fucking money, baby. Ooh. 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 Too easy. Fury don't want none. Usyk don't want none. Ruiz don't want none. Wilder might, but he gonna think about it after seeing that. But you're right, though. Usyk damn sure better be careful. Usyk better watch his fucking back. He better watch his fucking back. He better watch his motherfucking back. Oh. Oh, my God. Ooh. Oh. Fucking hell. Oh. Ah! Hook that boy, man. Had that head whipped all the way round after that. By the way, Bellator fucking Evelyn and Edwards just started. Holy shit. I'm gonna get into that in a minute, but god damn. Alright, listen. I hope you took that advice because holy shit. I'm telling y'all right now, man. Zong is going to be the guy to fuck shit up. It ain't AJ. Wilder had that shot. I already got fucked. That's going to be Zang. It's going to be Zong's territory now. Evelyn and Edwards just getting started. They're showing that hook again. Ooh! Fuck! Got him down on that knee and had him face planted in the floor. Fucking hell. Ooh! Beautiful by fucking, uh, by fucking Zong right there on the face of Joyce. Easy work. Easy work. He should be undefeated. No way he lost to Philip Pick. I'm telling you, man. Bob Dalton, that's great. And he's 40. I'm telling you, man. Up next is either Fury or Usyk. It's either Fury or Usyk. Wilder Ruiz are the wild card options in case those two aren't ready yet. But I'm telling you, Zong... Zong now run, he now calls his own shot. He's now mandatory to Usyk, mandatory to Fury. Whoever wins that fight, if they fight, they gotta fight that fucking dude next. And they don't want it. They don't want it. All the Brits left quick. <laughs> ah! So I better start only speaking Chinese after this KO. Never speak English ever again. Go see speak Chinese. I mean, oh my god. I love it. Yo, Ken. Ken, you gotta get him on the fishing show now, bro. We gotta we gotta get Zong and Ken together now. Zong is out there in Jersey. I'm sure you can get a hold of him. We gotta get Zong on the fucking show now. We gotta get him here, and we gotta get him on Ken's shit. I'm telling y'all right now, that, that man's money right there. That's a, that's a money-making motherfucker. Edwards versus Henry Eblin. <laughs> By the way, 110 to go between Eblin and Edwards. Good jab now by Edwards. Alright, hold on. Let me get this shit out of here now. Oh my god. By the way, we got Tim Means now about to scrap with Fialo, by the way. We got Tim Means and Fialo about to go at it over on Plus. And of course, I'll run Showtime here. Hold on, 44 seconds to go. By the way, let me fix the clock here. Let's see, three minutes, five rounds. Oh, no, this is five, five, okay. So I'll have that ready for the next round. 30 seconds to go. 
I gotta catch a bluefin tuna with Zhang, let him punch it in the sushi pieces for <laughs> show. Real shit. I'm telling you, man, that's gonna be cash fucking money right there. Come on, Evelyn Cash, me's a dub C. Good to see you, by the way, Dub C. Hope you doing well, bro. Means or Fialo says, uh, Benny, bro. I really think Fialo should this is a fight that technically he should be able to win. Like if we're being if we're being technical, Fialu should be able to win it, but uh, Means is is a, is a dirty fucking dog. He's always down to scrap. So I'm gonna go Fialo, but I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna be hesitant in that pick. I should say I'm gonna be hesitant. I'm gonna go Fialo, but not guaranteed there because Means never makes it as easy as it looks or as it should look anyway. By the way, we're now in round two of Eblin and Edwards. Not a bad first round. I think maybe Eblin, Eblin might have done enough. Uh, let's see. They definitely claiming him, Ken. Zang got those iron fists. They're going to shower him with social credit. Real shit, Alex. He, he fucking... Him and, Wei, him and fucking Weile Zang run China right now. Oh, shit. What up, Funs Flo? What it do, Jay? What it do, fellas? Zang, the first Chinese heavyweight champion in history to make it as much noise. Yes, sir. The first one I can remember, unless you count Tua. That's true, but then again, was Tua Samoan? Was he Samoan, or did they count him as a Chinese guy? Uh, bro, it hit him with the box of rebellion. <laughs> He's a Gino. Yeah, and you know what? Funs flow, I think you're right. I think Zhang is the first, like, legitimate Chinese champion in boxing. Which is wild that it's a heavyweight, too. Uh, by the way, folks. Here we go, round two now of Eblin and Edwards. Both start out with low kicks. Also, Tim Means and Fialo are about to scrap, so we're about to get, a, once again, two fights at once right there. Zong, though, with a beautiful fucking performance. Absolutely killed him. Usyk and Fury are going to have to really worry about that guy in the future, man. They're really going to have to worry about it. Oh, shit. Good jab now by, by Edwards. High kick now by Edwards and by Eblin. Eblin being patient with a straight jab, but a nice kick to the body there uh, by Edwards. See, good knee now by Means. Good one, too, now by Means. Over on the UFC. And then, of course, over on Bellator. Just good jab by Eblin. Let's see, three screening and easy. Definitely ain't easy at all, bro. Chilling glad it's over. Now I got two. I know, right? Less is better. Uh, coming to do now 40. <laughs> Evelyn minus 800, minus 400. Oh, got it. Edwards. Gonna fuck me again. Oh, shit. That shit lowering a bit, huh? That's wild right there. Good to be. Oh, Edwards got dropped. Edwards got dropped. Edwards hit the deck there. Jab by Edwards. One, two. Now by Evelyn. Right hand by Evelyn. Evelyn going low now, trying to get the takedown, but Edwards there to stuff it. By the way, good uppercut for Fialu over on the UFC. He's actually tagging. Oh! And fucking Means able to counter him, and now Fialu is down. Now some elbows by Means. Oh shit. Means with another elbow and another elbow. By the way, good jab by Fabian over on the uh, Bellator card. And, of course, a couple push kicks for both. Jab now by Evelyn. Edwards gets backed up. Two-piece now by uh, by Evelyn and by Edwards. Low kick by Edwards. Low kick by Evelyn. Good jab now by Evelyn. Three minutes now. Good jab now by Edwards. Now they're oh, now they're right back up after a little bit of stalling there. Now get right in there by Evelyn. They're very slow on the pace. Low kick by Evelyn. And over on the UFC card, Fialo with a nice little uppercut. Landing a good right hand. Right now, Fialo beating down Means is more entertaining than this f title fight in Bellator, which is incredibly fucking slow. There's a low kick by Evelyn. I'd see Means fed Fialo a vicious knee. He definitely did. He still gains a lot. <laughs> oh, shit. That's funny. That is some wild shit right there. That Zong fucking ran through Joe Joyce twice. Not once, but twice. 
That literally puts him in the driver's seat. He can fight anybody he wants now. The rematch with uh, Philippe is on the table. Oh, shit. Yeah, rematch with Philippe's on the table. Fury's on the table. Uh, but actually, not immediately. I think Usyk would be on the table first as a mandatory. Uh, Fury would have to be like some fucking miracle where nobody else can fight and he just wants to fight somebody. Uh, but, damn. Zhang has now got control of his own destiny. Means in a brawl, says Dalton. He definitely is. How would you score this Bellator fight so far? Says Joseph Sasso. Good to see you, by the way, Sasso. Uh, right now, I would say the first round kind of went to Eblin, and it looks like it's more of the same right now. I would say the two rounds probably going to be 2018 Eblin at the moment. Kick to the body by Eblin. Two by one, two by Eblin to the head. Means and Fiala having a good little scrap on the UFC. Of course, I'm going to get to that right after Bellator is done. Low kick there by Means is nice. There's a, I mean, uh, low kick by Edwards is nice. Means with a nice little kick, too, as well as Fialo. Let's see, I'd say 1-1. One to one. After, after like, 1... Well, after this round, maybe 1-1, one to one, but it kind of feels like 2-0 Eblin, I'd say, after the second round, only because... Of the knockdown and the forward pressure. And round one with the Evelyn. So it's probably going to be 2-0. Uh, good looks, Jay. Nice to see you, man. Appreciate you. Hey, always good to see you, my brother. And, of course, I appreciate you stopping by. And no, no problem when it comes to updating you guys. Uh, oh, shit. 10 seconds ago, by the way. Means dip low uh, when swinging the hands. Then lean back through a knee. Beautiful exchange. Beautiful level changing. Absolutely. And there's a round. On both ends, actually. Even for the UFC, that was the end of the round right there. So far, uh, the only result we have, and I'm surprised Tapology has not even updated this yet, Zung destroyed Joe Joyce. The first fight, he did it in six rounds. This time, did it in three rounds, and was even more impressive this time. Uh, that is easily going to make him a mandatory to Usyk. And, of course, Fury will have to consider fighting him if he were to take all the belts from Usyk first. If not, then maybe they'll have to cross bats. 10 nines mean, 11.15 p.m. That knee almost ended. It's almost the end for Fialo. Uh, but Palma scoring at 10-9. Yeah, it definitely fit. It was an interesting round right there. By the way, Evelyn being checked out right now in the face. Probably give out on the belly car. I think we'll something you see. Oh, no doubt. Got eyes everywhere, which is always a good thing. And by the way, we're about to hit round number three here. There we go. Round three. Oh, wait a minute. My clock's ahead of theirs. Come on, Bellator. Come on, Bellator. You can pick up the pace. There we go. Round three. Damn, there was the knee that landed on the chin of Fiala right there that dropped his ass. Evelyn, minus 810 live. I like that. It's close. See, I'm biased. Fuck's the phone. Cheers, by the way, everybody. <laughs> and then there's a good right here. Oh! Evelyn is fucking dropped, baby! Oh my god! It's fucking. Oh, whoa, whoa! Fucking Johnny Evelyn just fucking ended Damien's life! Oh my god! Holy shit! Are you fucking kidding me? Eblin just charged at Fabian Edward. Oh, he's talking shit to him. What the fuck? Oh, they got secure. Oh, wait, who is that? Is that Leon Edwards? Ah! They got Leon Edwards in a shouting match with this dude. Leon Edwards acting like he's about to stick up for his brother. Oh, wow. Evelyn just knocked Fabian Edwards. Fuck out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And now Leon is about to fight this guy. By the way, Means and Fiala putting on a scrap. Let me see it again. I need to see that knockout again. There was a the right hand. Ooh, it was an overhand. And then Evelyn got inside the guard. Straight up ground and pound. Straight up ground punches. There was an elbow. Oh, oh, oh. It was just normal ground and pound, and then the elbows fucking flatlined him. Holy shit. Wow. Johnny Evelyn retains the Bellator middleweight title. 
Holy fucking shit. And by the way, we are in round... Oh shit, we're only in round two here. Let's get that clock ready for when it's round three, of course. Oh my god, they're showing Evelyn. Yeah, that... I believe it was the elbow. It was the ground elbow that really knocked out Fabian right there. Holy shit. Uh, who won the Usman fight? Usman did by decision. Usman won that shit by decision. Even after fouling Jay Collier multiple times. Uh, let's see, he said, hey, cut me, I'll show you. <laughs> Evelyn was about to beat up Leon, too. He was, man. He was about to fight Leon. Leon Edwards there in the crowd. I mean, there in the corner of Fabian. And he got in the fucking cage. Almost fought that man. Let's see, the zone is how long Leon going to go down. <laughs> How long it take for him to go down? Oh man! Uh, hold on, let's put that back up. There we go. About two twelve to go in the round. We're in round two. I'll get that off for now. Have that up for round three. Evelyn versus Strickland. They're training together. I'm picking Evelyn, but it's no way. Uh, right now, there's a case. Means got this. Gonna get the case in the third. It's Pullman. Uh, Evelyn asks Leon, "You want to see a dead body?" <laughs> Come on, to your K fails like what the fuck? Nasty elbows with Weedy. Oh, man. Fucking, uh, yeah, fucking Fabian got flatlined right there. That was a damn shame. Those damn elbows came in sharp, and it put that man out. Put him out for the count. There's some knees in the body. Good knee for means. Now some uppercuts for means, and they break away. Straight jab for means in the face. Got a couple decent fights. Yeah, not bad at all. Not bad at all, man. That was some brilliant shit right there, too, considering that he just brutally knocked that man out. Oh, now we're good right in. Now my Viello and takes down Means right there. Swings him down to the floor. Plug this tablet back in now that I don't need it. There we go. And make sure my laptop's plugged in. And there we are. Down to 58 seconds. By the way, Johnny Eblen, of course, officially the winner. Uh, officially the winner. Once they update that, I'll let you guys know. 50 seconds to go. Of course, I'll have the clock right back up right after this round. Since it's a bit late to put it up now. Good scrambling, though, by Means. And by Fialo, but Means is on top inside the guard. Fabian Edwards finally helpful. <laughs> Tables turn. <laughs> Got a couple of decent fights. How Means able to stand up. Gets back inside the guard. How good is Hitchens? How about that? Eblin was an, e was an easy pick, says Cayman. Yeah, definitely the easier one with seeing how uh, that fight played out. Now look at the ground and pound by Means. Goodness. Uh, well, Ronda definitely is. How good is Higgins? It doesn't say a lot about a good... Oh, my God. Now Means is sending over Fiello. Going to the body. Going to the head. Absolutely all over him. Good hammer fist as well. And there is the end of the round. But you're absolutely right, though, Cayman. Johnny Eblen proved to be well-wounded. It's better... It's good to see that... Uh, He's not just a wrestler, obviously. Able to show that he's got the hands, got the stand-up to get the job done if needed. Honestly, that was a star-making performance for him, to be honest. Uh, let's see if y'all got to save the bell. Isaac like Morris. <laughs> Probably going to go to the distance. Uh, is that the same car? Let's see. Yes, absolutely. Uh, 2018 means. <laughs> Imagine what defending his uh, brother, Leon Edwards, calling on three pieces of soda. How about that? He, he'd be a meme forever and probably had to hide out for the rest of his life. I know he's been a spoken read, but he's a good fighter. Dude, that cut's one of the worst I've seen in a while. It's just magma. You're not lying about that. <laughs> he definitely carved that man up. Something fierce, too. And holy shit, Colorado is getting skull dragged by Oregon 42 to nothing. Holy shit. <laughs> Damn, Deion Sanders and fucking Colorado getting exposed. Dion with his chain and his sunglasses looking sad right now on the sidelines. That's a shame, primetime. I didn't think y'all get skull drag like that. I thought y'all make at least a game out of it. Man growing a third eye socket. <laughs> They've had to put a cup of Vaseline to fill that hole. Real shit. Here we go. Round number five. Well, round number three. There we go. Round three. Actually, wait. Let me drag it in here. There we go. Oh, jab now by means. 
Down to 4.30 to go. Ducks just serving them, man. Yeah, man. 42 nothing. Colorado's just getting skull dragged. This is fucking 42-0. That's bad for Dion. He looking sad. Here's a good body shot by Means. Now a couple overcuts by Means now. And a straight jab. Straight up jab. Let me see if they updated it yet. Yep, they did. There it is, everybody. As you see on the screen, Johnny Evelyn just knocked out Fabian Edwards. Damn, there's a good kick there by Means. Holy shit. That's a damn shame right there. There's a good one, too, by Means. Knee now by Means. Hook to the body. Hook to the head. Oh, and out of the alley. And there it is. Tim Means with the finish. Wow. Big finish by Tim Means. Holy shit. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, that was fit on him, I told you. He's now he's champ beating everyone. Finish, put him in a cast of KO. Wow wow, means finished. How about that? Ooh, a slap punch. Oh, straight jab. Rocked him. Made him lean against the fence. Knee to the body. Oh right hand. Leaned him. Leaned him and then fucking floored him to the floor. That man just slowly slid to the ground after that shit leaned him. Damn. Fucking killed that man. I predict these things. Means. Just beating him the fuck up. Means, means it. Means batter that boy. He did. Battered and fried him like a fish, man. And speaking of battered and fried like a fish, let me, uh, let me, let me catch y'all up with some shit. Fucking tap out, he being late. Don't worry about this. Anthony Yard, good performance. But this is the performance of the day, everybody. Zillian Zhang destroyed Joe Joyce in three rounds. It took six rounds in the first fight. Zhang destroyed him in three rounds in the second. I'm telling you now, Fury and Usyk better watch their fucking backs now. Because if they're not going to fight each other, they have to fight this fucker. They have to fight this fucking guy. 26 and 1, the Big Bang. They don't want to fight the Big Bang. Over on Bellator, Johnny Eblin's a winner. Pico got a finish win. Collins a winner. Brunel a winner. Jaquelli a nice winner over Hamasi. Peter Quealy, fuck you. JJ Wilson won. Uh, French guy beat Charlie Ward. Any other notable finishes? No, just a lot of discount fighters right there. And so far in the UFC, decision for Mosrat, decision for Noe over Hannah Goldie, Muhammad Usman got a decision win, Cody Brundage wins by illegal back of the head elbow by Malcolm, and then Tim Means just knocked out Fiala right there. And by the way, let's see who's ahead. By the way, Ken says me was the underdog too, 10 years older. How about that, man? That's crazy. Tim Means finishing a fight and looking dominant like that is just insane. Uh, let's see. Teddy and Hart, 27, 26. Cody, 24 is Kiwi, along with BT, 23. Insight, 22. Papa Chuck, 14 is D's McNuggets, along with Priscilla, Davis, Oliveira, Smullen, Ashban, AWS, and Gary. 10, Oxy, uh, True Blood Drop Gaming, Burner, and Dana White Pay-Per-View. Eight is Sparks, along with Detroit. Seven, Kanaka. Five is Weedy, along with Robo. Three is Chris and Granite. Two is Schwartz, a.k.a. Pullman. And one right now is Tucker. And actually, uh, Pullman is not that far behind in second place. And this is where the fuck we are. We got Miles, John, and David Argetta next. So far, performances of the day goes to Zillian Zhang. Tapology's late. Fuck them. Uh, but Zillian Zhang, I'd say biggest win of his career. Already beat Joyce once, did it again. Bellator, these are, I'd say, the notable finishes on the card. Everything else is degenerate shit. Uh, with Pico and uh, Evelyn getting finishes there. And with the UFC, we have exactly one finish. Uh, disqualification and three decisions. So it was alright. But at least that knockout should pick things up a little bit, though. Should pick things up a bit. Okay, so let's, let's do this real quick. 
up. Get rid of that. And let's drag that bad boy back down. Alright, there we go. Now it's all UFC for the rest of the way, everybody. Zang, Evelyn Kelly. See that? Who was the guy who kicked the other guy in the shadow realm? Oh, that was fucking... Yeah, Hamasi was the one that got kicked. Uh, it was Hamasi against uh, Chikeli. Uh Fialo tried to catch the kick out of his face falling. Uh, catch kick. <laughs> I'm sorry, Fialo was trying to catch his face from falling off during that beating. <laughs> he really was. Especially the way he folded up. Chikeli, Weedy. Okay, that was a the KO. That was pretty nasty. R.I.P. Joyce. Says Vietnamese style. Indeed. R.I.P. Joe Joyce. And all hail King fucking Zhang, man. Boxing now has a new heavyweight to worry about. They, they gotta worry about this big motherfucker. Imagine he gives Usyk problems. Imagine he fights Tyson Fury. Imagine if he fights Ruiz. Even Deontay Wilder. I, I'm, he's probably not gonna beat Deontay Wilder, but imagine him and Wilder. Wilder ain't gonna knock this fucking guy out. Only thing Wilder can do is beat him to death, though. He'll probably leave Zhang bloody and probably break him, but I don't know if he'd knock him out. I think that's, like, the one guy he might not be able to knock out because he's just too fucking big. But I can say this. While the Wilder fight, I still have to think about when it comes to Zhang. The one fight I know for sure he can win that's high level, he can give Usyk problems. Fury, I don't know, but Usyk, I think he can do some shit, too. See, Joyce who? LOL. <laughs> oh, man, Hamasi was blowing bubbles. He was. Hamasi was fucking out and foaming at the mouth and shit, man. He, he had nothing. Who's next? Miles, John. How many prelims we got? Oh, only one prelim left to the main card. I love that. Love to see that. Cheers, everybody. Zang would have been better off getting a decision. He could have a hard time getting a fight. That's true. That decision would have made it easy. For him to destroy Joe Joyce like that, everybody's going to be afraid of him. Dubois won't want to fight him. Ruiz will think about it. AJ's going to think about it, too. I don't even think AJ will want to fight him voluntarily. Cheers, Jay. Animal fam, good to see you. Nick C33, hope you're doing well, my brother. I hope AJ is not offered Zhang, bro, because if AJ is offered Zhang, AJ ain't gonna make it, man. I'm dead serious. AJ's gonna be in some trouble. If they don't give Zhang either Usyk or Fury, it might be Anthony Joshua. And if that's the case, Joshua going to bed, man. Shit, he might be retired after that. I don't know if he can handle a guy like that who has that type of power. AJ gonna duck him for so yeah, he's gonna he's gonna think twice about that. AJ's gonna ask for like Fury or somebody like that, but Zhang, I don't think he'll do it. I don't think he'll say yes to that if he was offered. Wilder would think about it. Like Wilder would actually consider it. He's not afraid of Zhang, but I don't think it'll be as easy of a fight for Wilder as he thinks. But he's not afraid. I would say he's more likely to accept it than AJ for sure. AJ would duck it. Wilder wouldn't. Ruiz. Ruiz is desperate for a fight. If him and Zhang are the only options, Ruiz will take it. But that's only if Ruiz has no other options. If he, if that's the only option, he'll do it since it's for a belt. But right now, Zhang, he controls his own destiny right now. Kind of pumped for the main event. UFC says Pullman. I am too, man. The main card's going to be really good for the UFC. Look at this, folks. I mean, the main event's going to be amazing with Gamru and Fazeev. If you liked Sarukian and um, Gamru, you're going to love Gamru and Fazeev. going to be just as fun. Uh, Bryce Mitchell and Dan Ige is fire. Karate Hottie, Michelle Waterson on the card against Marina Rodriguez. Must win for Karate Hottie, though. If, if Waterson will win, she done. Uh, for good. Uh, Brian Battle. Battle's A.D. Fletcher. We got Charles Jordan on this bitch. And we even have Miles John up next. I like this. For Apex Fight Night, this is good. 
Ruiz Zhang. <laughs> oh, can, can you imagine Ruiz and Zhang, bro? Fucking Ruiz will go back to codeine and cocaine if he had to fight that man. Usyk should fight Wilder. Uh, Wilder, Zhang, AJ Ruiz, Dubrah, or Joyce. He should. The, the only reason Usyk wants Fury is because Fury has all the belts. The thing, I mean, he has the one belt that Usyk needs. But the thing is, Usyk is going to end up fighting Wilder, Zhang, AJ, uh, already fought Dubois, already beat him, uh, and Joyce. He'll fight those guys if there's no about, if Fury says no. But that's, that's the thing. It's all about what Fury is going to do. Because Fury has the one belt that Usyk needs to unify and then let Fury do whatever the fuck he's going to do. Marina will destroy Karate Old Hottie. You're right about that, Ken. I'm going to put my money on that, too. Marina going to take her out. Wilder, rightful fight, I think, for Usyk. Uh, if, if it's not unification with Fury, then Wilder would be the next best choice, yeah. The only reason why Fury is a better option is because Fury's got the belt, you know what I mean? Wilder ain't got no belt. But you are right. If it's, if it's not gonna be Usyk, Fury, after Fury fights in Ganu, then I agree. Usyk and Wilder should be next. Uh, I watched Fight Mom documentary. Michelle Waterson, pretty good. I've heard it's pretty good. I heard, I heard it's a respectable one. It's rumored that Usyk Fury done if Fury wins for Fury's coach. See, that's what I figured. I figured if it's it's got to be Usyk Fury next, let them unify, you know, for all five of the alphabet suit bullshit belts, and then whoever's the reigning champ, their first mandatory has got to be Zhang because he's got the WBO fucking number one, basically number one contender belt for WBO. Uh, on Teddy Atlas pod. Oh, yeah, Teddy Atlas usually has good sources, so he's not bullshitting. Unification has too much money on the table for Fury to say no, no matter what bullshit he's spewing out in the media. Uh, granted in the mix to win the weekly, he says, uh, this is insight. He is, man. Very much in the mix. And here we go, folks. Now we get the walkout of Dan Argetta. Dan Argetta and Miles John are going to have a very good fight. These two are pretty pretty fun. By the way, shout out to everybody in the animal room still hanging out. This is surprisingly a very good weekend, everybody. Very good weekend for fights, man. Very good weekend for fights. We've been treated to, uh, I'd say, all sorts of fun shit so far. You know, we've had Zhang and Joyce throw down. Of course, Bellator ended as well with Eblin and Pico coming out on top. And then in the UFC, a little bit of fuckery with the disqualification, the decision of the Usman fight. A couple decent bathroom break fights to begin. But the Tim Means KO is going to bring things up. And I think the rest of this card is now going to be smooth sailing after all the fuckery is out of the way. I pick Miles Johns as Paul Minnis. Not a bad pick, brother. Not a bad pick at all. Cheers, my friends. See if Grano wins, become a UK citizen by proxy, says Gary. <laughs> no doubt about it. Now, I'm <laughs> Excuse me. Now, we got Miles Judd and David Argetta about to throw it out. And this should be a good one right here. Oh, there's a little shadow by the bong. Let's get that out of there. Here are the measurables, my friends. 13 and 2 for Miles John, 9 and 1 for Argetta. Decision by Morales was last win, last loss was to Castaneda by sub. A couple knockout wins, knockout loss. Premature stoppage. Oh, it's some bullshit, okay. Legitimate win, legitimate loss. Couple wins there. And hold up, let's do this. Have that up for stat usage. So let's drag that to the front. Drag that to the front. And drag that to the front now. Now that that's what's remaining on the day. See, this is the LFA main event. <laughs> You're not lying about that. You are not lying about that at all. 
Argetta looking cut the fuck up. Dan might be on a Scarface shit, says Dante A. Good to see you, by the way, Dante A. Gary Halley. Oh, my God. Oregon really is destroying fucking Colorado right now. God damn. Hold on. I'm actually going to update that in a minute for you, just for the fun of it. Uh, wait a minute. Let me go back here to the home page. Where is it? Oof. Oh, look at that. Look at that ass weapon. What happened, Coach Prime? What happened to you, Coach? You got to coach him up, brother. You only got five minutes to do it. Look at that. 13, 22. And they only put seven points up. They haven't done shit in the fourth, but it don't even matter. <laughs> That's an ass whooping right there. Holy shit. <laughs> that is a certified ass whooping. Oh, good right hand now by John with a single leg now by Argetta. Argetta trying to take him down. Argetta with a deep single leg. 4 0 wait to go now. Single leg by Argetta. Can he get him down? Let's see. Oh, I know, right? That's an ass whooping, bro. 42 nothing. 42 nothing. That is a skull dragging. And they're on the road. They're in Oregon, too. So that's, oh, man. Yeah. Oh, Coach Prom looks sad as shit. Now, there's a takedown there by Argetta. Argetta single leg now in a waist lock. Got the hooks in now. Uh oh. Got the hooks in. Got a backpack now. Oh, shit. Try to get a left arm around the chin. CO got the Zang treatment from OR. Real shit. <laughs> Fucking Oregon treating Colorado like Zang treating Joyce earlier. You right about that, bro. God damn. Oh, yeah. Get that back out of there. Down to three. 13 to go. Beautiful backpack here by our ghetto. All over the back. Aljo backpack. You right about that. Full on Aljo backpack. Now by our ghetto. Are gonna climb it all over this fool now to down out of three minutes. Good hook now by Argetta. Can Argetta get a choke here? See if he can get a choke in. A respectable choke will do him some good right about now. It'll do him some a lot of good right about now. Can you get that choke in tight? Let's see. Oh, it's on the chin. Oh, leads back with it. Leads back with it as Argetta. That's very tight. Very tight on him. Very tight on Miles. No way. No way. Trying to fight it now. Trying to fight the choke. Oh, wait. There's the arm on the head. Oh, no. Not quite. Miles on. Still fighting it. He's trying to roll over now. And he rolls out of it. Not even roll over on top. But rolls out of it. And they're back up standing. Oh! Fucking Argetta got fucking dropped there for a second. The whole Sanders family got to be embarrassed and humiliated. Real shit, Vietnamese style. Real shit, bro. It's get oh, it's getting bad. Oh, Colorado finally did some. They finally got a touchdown just now. They about to change that score in a minute. But yeah, they they need to be embarrassed. They getting their ass whooped. That's a late touchdown and a missed extra. Oh wow, they missed the extra point. <laughs> Forty-two to six. Good right of hand now by Argetta. Wow, that's embarrassing. They scored a touchdown but missed the extra point. One thirty-five. Oh, good jab again by John. Look at this. That was John now trying to make something out of this, and now Argetta going low. Good stuff though by Miles John. Argetta gonna run him. Uh, run him with strike. Big strike sooner or later. It feels that way, Mad X. You're definitely on the money about that, my my guy. Yeah, it really feels that way. Let's see, down to one minute. Down to one minute for Argetta. Leaning down with it. Drops with the guillotine. Drops down with the guillotine, though. Argetta holding on to that fuck. Oh, yeah, you're holding on to the head. Pops it out. Pops it all the way out. About 40 seconds ago. Good work now by um by by Johns. 
Right back up. Good hook now by Johns. About 25 seconds ago. Damn, right hand by Miles John. Upper got hooked by Miles John. Damn, left hand now by Argetta. Argetta really tried to hunt him. Gilly, don't be silly. Jump to Gilly. True shit. Good hook now by John. 10 seconds ago. Jab hook now by John. And Rauto coming up. Oh, shit. Get that out of here. Sure, they got Batista doing Mortal Kombat fucking commercials now. That's hilarious. Let's see. After that round, by the way, let's see who you got, Jay. Uh, let's see. Argetta really gonna run into something sooner or later. He did get the first round. No, Argetta did enough to get the 10 9. But with the way he's fighting, I don't know if this is gonna be sustainable for a whole fight. I really don't know if this is going to be sustainable for a whole fight because the way he's fighting is just... It's risky. It's incredibly risky. Leaves the chin up a little too high. Uh, the chances he makes are in, like just fucking insane. And he's getting hit. He's leaving that chin way too high up for the risks he's taking. So for Argetta ahead, but yeah, needs to be cautious. Let's see. Round, but Dan 10 9. Yep, that's how I got it. 10 9, Dan Argetta. Close round, but shit. Argetta needs to be very careful. Good right hand by Argetta, though. Lands a good one. And now there's a takedown 10 by Miles Jaw. Finds the mark. Miles Jaw now with a takedown attempt. Yeetie to temp locked in with the arm, though, for Argetta, but I don't think he's in his decision. Now he's dropping back with it. Once again, drop it with the guillotine. Why would you do that? Why are you jumping a guillotine, Argetta? Why? You fucking why? Why are you jumping a gilly? What is the reason for you jumping a gilly, son? Why do that? Why do that to yourself? Why would you do that to yourself? Down to 4.05 to go. And he's just... Is he going to let go of it? Yep, he's going to let go of it now. Now he's going to let go of it. Even though he's going to pretend like he's still going to hold on to it. But really, he needs to let go. He needs to just abandon it. It ain't happening. It is not happening. That guillotine ain't happening for shit. He really wants it to, though. But it, it, it ain't cracking right now. Now we're going to try to go for like a little shoulder lock there. And he lets go, and now he's on top. And now he's going to work on the bottom. Now is John. John still with the waist lock. Funds flow. Arming Gill at that Brian, all right? He's still doing that shit, man. Still doing that fucking shit. Like, why? Been doing that arming all fucking day. Oh! Uh, jab now by, by John. Oh, damn. Good hook by Miles, even though Argetta did kind of fucking wound him right there. Oh, good hook now by John. Miles is shook. He is, man. Damn. One, two again by John. Jab by Miles. One, two by Miles again. But Argetta slowly stalking now. Argetta starting to land on him. Now a big looping overhand there by Miles. But he looks fucking just completely wounded. Wounded animal shit. Ooh. I have Argetta. Argetta gets him down. Argetta gets him down. Goodness. Oh, now he's taking the back. Now Argetta just completely taking the back. Well, five to go now. Good right hand now. And now, of course, Argetta just going to hold on to the waist for dear fucking life. 
And now our getter just gonna kinda cradle Miles John up against the fence. And John able to run away. What the fuck? Able to run away. Very close call right there. Able to run away. And they reset. Oh, good right hand now by Miles John. Beautiful jab now by John. And now another single leg by Argetta. Argetta striking ability. Striking is terrible. This is flow. It really is. It's very fucking sloppy. You are not lying about that. Of course, Miles John got to defend that takedown right there. That little scramble of a takedown. Let's see. Down to about a minute. Argetta going low with it. Out of 50 seconds. Let's see. Argetta's needs to get a bit of strikey coaching. <laughs> oh, quick down down by Miles. But damn. 35 seconds to go. Oh. Good jab. And now look at Argetta getting fucking lean and rock with it. That motherfucker got lean by a jab. Come on, bruh. Low kick now by by Miles. Fifteen seconds ago. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Good knee. They hold on. And end of the round. Oh goodness, what a fight. Very weird. It's like who you get flow, you kill me. <laughs> My goodness. All the damage he did and all the just looking at this right now, Miles Johns is still ahead on the striking counter. Of course all those takedowns are helping our get up, but if we're just going on striking and on wrestling, Miles Johns is technically still ahead. But man, these two kinda suck though. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> these are not the best. But I gotta give it to Miles John though. I gotta give that one to Miles John. But these two we can start some MMA. Damn, better get a strike coach. <laughs> Real shit. He's gonna fucking need it. He's gonna fucking need one. Here we go, by the way. Round number three now about to start. About to go the fuck down. Let's see. Let's get that out of here. Actually, no, wait, I can still kind of hit that one. Let me just add a little bit to that. Here we go. Last round, everybody. Oh. Bell sound was low. My fault. Miles is the best of the worst in this one. Yes, he is, which is very sad. There's a one-two down for Miles. And a good jab. And David, once again, down to a fucking knee. He's just getting kneed in this one. There's a good uh, fucking beautiful knockdown right there. Cheers, by the way, everybody. And now by Argetta. I get a high kick that misses, like a little punt kick style. Low kick now by Miles John. Jab by him is there. Good one, two now by Miles. Down to four minutes. Jab now by Miles is there. Miles gonna reset. Jab now by Miles John. Now a good jab by Argetta. Beautiful jab. Oh, good low kick now by Miles John. Just as he as as uh, Argetta landed a jab, Miles cut him down at the leg with a low kick. Good jab again. Good one to him again. It's scripted. Batista wins. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, good jab, and now that fucking Miles John once again puts him on his ass. And literally are getting just walking forward on him. There's a good jab by Miles John. 
Let's see, this guy has got miles on the round. Let's see, he's thrown to the wolves in the UFC like Sam Punk. <laughs> oh, shit. Argetta is like fucking just walking forward on There's a one, two by John. John going low, gets stuffed by Argetta. Argetta now trying to swing at the head. Down to 240 to go. By the way, everybody, it's 36 seconds left. Coach Prime is cooked. Y'all see that score above my head? Look at that shit. They cook, bro. Not even cook. They fried, for real. They deep fried like some damn catfish or something out here. Damn, Dion. Dion looked like he about to cry over there on the sideline. Poor Dion Sanders ass. 250 to go in this fight. Good uppercut and a jab now by, uh, by Argetta. Uppercut by Miles and a jab by Miles Jean. Miles trying to go low. Good stuff though by Dan. Knee by Dan. Dan trying to just defend the takedown and stay up. Uh, Dan like a run from jabs. <laughs> oh, man. This man is literally just walking and running into every fucking thing, ain't it? See, down to one minute, put five to go. Good job there by Argetta. Can Argetta even, I mean, can Argetta stay up here, though? Because it looks like John's going to get him down. Maybe get a sit. No, still up. Still up. 125 now. Can John get him down again? Really still digging, still trying. Argetta found out he has no hands, but he's a hell of a chase. This one floor, real shit. And there it is, the final score. Oof, rough one, Dion. That was that was rough. It's officially final now. Let's see, I'm down to a minute to go. Argetta trying to choke this man to death. Lena once again on this guillotine. He is obsessed with his guillotine. Like why? Why are you so obsessed with the guillotine? I don't understand it. Down to 50 seconds. Why is he obsessed with his gilly? Really trying to hold on to it now. They're, they're, dude's just blowing out his arms at this stage. Like, why do it? Now they pop the head out. Scramble a little bit more. Down to 20 seconds ago. This is full on sprawl now by Miles John. 10 seconds ago. Can he get the guillotine in? Good knee to the head. They break away. And the end of the fight. Damn. Damn, he brought his wife and new baby to the fight. Whew, that's a that's a risk. At least he didn't get knocked out the Let's see who won this shit. This should be a fight for Yeah, that seemed like a Miles John striking clinic. One more gilly. <laughs> that's gotta be Miles John right there. Should be anyway. Calling him Gills really now. Oh yeah, real shit. <laughs> Oh, man. Gotta love it. Let's see something there. Uh, no, no. Okay, I'll put it there. I gotta get some split. This is Mad X. White people looking rough. Real shit. Whole family looking that way. Hopefully they walk out with a win, though. Let's see, Argetta gets split. That'd be wild if he got it. Uh, I thought Bantamweights were good. <laughs> this is good. Oh, yeah, these are not the top-ranked ones. These are, like, middle of the pack, I'd say. Middle of the pack to lower. All right, Martinez score time. What's up, Martinez? 30 27 30 29-28. Miles John. Miles John takes it by decision. And now he's going to cry about it. He's like, thank fucking Christ I didn't lose. All right, Miles. I was about to say, you need to get your ass up off the floor, man. 
Miles John takes it by decision. Wow. Sorry we didn't look good winning that. That's what I'm saying. That wasn't a great fight. Neither guy really looked good winning that one, to be honest. Cheer, by the way. There it is, folks. Miles John via decision just went down. And the prelims are done just like that. And let's see. One, two, three, four, five. Make our fights incoming. There we go. Charles Jordan up next. But there it is, folks. Miles John takes it. Uh, let's see, Miles dating a 40-year-old Dolly Parton wannabe. <laughs> Need to order a P is his ex and Sonic. Uh, let's see, but the other dude definitely didn't win that. This <laughs> is Paul. <laughs> Dallas don't want Dion, says Vietnamese Dolly. You're right about that, bro. They don't, they're not going to want nothing to, to do with Dion after that. By the way, Pullman is in first place. Schwartz, a.k.a. Pullman. Two is Weedy. Three is Tucker. Four, Kanaka. Five, Granite. Six, Chris. Seven, Robo. 8, Detroit, uh, Insight, and Sparks. 11, Dana White Pay-Per-View, uh, Burner, Kiwi, True Blowjob Gaming, and Oxy. Uh, 16, Banjo Sandwich, AWS, Oxbon, Small, and Oliveira. Uh, Dougie, Mello, and McNuggets, 24, is Chuck, 25, BT. 26, Cody, 27, is Hart, and Teddy T, of course. stuff right there good stuff and then we're about to of course get to our main car oh we got us a phone call here hold up what's going on you are all with jay at rush hour yo this is kane man hey what's up gaming yo man dude, this is this is uh there's a lot of fights going on yeah, it's a uh, it's another fight night card, another Apex fight night card that uh, actually isn't bad. It's actually kind of got a solid lineup here. It's not a bad lineup, at least for a fight night anyway. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, you got the well, we already had the Bellator stuff, UFC now, and then you got the boxing matches. Right. Yeah. So, and this okay. one, it's it's interesting that what we have here with the UFC card because not only do we have Bryce Mitchell in a co-main. The main event's interesting within itself, even though at lightweight, we know how a lot of those guys like their hold their spot at lightweight, but when you have guys like Fazeev and Gamrut waiting, when you have Saruki in waiting, when you have a lot of other up-and-comers waiting, you know, and by the way, good to see you, by the way, Nas. Nas is also jumping in during the call, but um, yeah, when you have guys like that at lightweight, you know, it's going to make it a very interesting weight class in the future, you know, it's still going to make it one of the best, and when you see Fazeev... And when you see Gamroot, it just it's like a reminder of that, if anything. And man, fights are getting hard to pick, man. I mean <laughs> it's true. Look at the trend of twenty twenty three. Like it seems like every other main event there's an upset. Right. You know, we have some unfathomable wins by fighters. Things that would never have ha thought would have happened for most people. But right. kind of crazy. And you know what? It's very interesting because, like you said, this is the year of the underdog, and we've seen a lot of dogs come through. We've seen a lot of new champions crowned. It's it's definitely one of those years where things change, and, you know, a main event like this, it really helps kind of, it helps put display what the future of the UFC lightweights are going to look like. Yeah, man. I mean, even then, in this main event, Gamru is the underdog, too, so it's like, and it's like, um... It's a tough fight for both, I think, but it's like the fact that, like, Gamera also has a great chance of winning as an underdog, right? So it's like, it could be another one of those situations, and if that happens, that's three, that's three fights in a row where, you know, underdogs are pulling through. And, dude, it's, it's pretty much neck and neck at this point. Like, the underdogs versus the favorites, like, the win percentages. Right. This year for the main events, like, that's unprecedented. It's just, it's just too crazy. Right. It is crazy, man. And you know what? What what I love the most about this fight, I'm actually putting in a poll right now so I can see what everybody in the animal room can, uh, actually thinks about the main event. But what I like about a fight like this is it was kind of like, uh, like I, I know you remember 
what uh, Gamrut and Fiziv look like. Uh, I mean, not Gamrut and Fiziv, uh, Gamrut and uh, fucking Sarukian. When that fight went down, that was amazing. And honestly, it was a very good look at what the division could be if a lot of the guys at the top really kind of didn't, you know, they weren't so obsessed with holding their spot down uh, because there are so many guys that are hungry at the bottom. And when you see Saruki and Gamrut as an example of it, and when I see Fiziv and Gamrut, I kind of had the same vibe of it, you know what I mean? So I like that this is going to be five rounds. Yeah, man, and yeah, Gamrut... You know, five round fights. That's where Gamru, you know, can show more of his skill because his he's not really like a power puncher. You know, um, maybe he suddenly gets one punch power. I mean, we saw what Strickland. I mean, who ever thought Strickland would have dropped Izzy like that? You that's know, true. I mean, that's true. He suddenly, the best one punch power, but most likely not. You know, he's gonna probably use that chain grappling. Vizia is trying to gonna is gonna try to defend the takedowns and keep the fight standing. Right. And so it's gonna see, you know, it's a battle of styles again, pretty much. Um and yeah, it's gonna we're gonna see whose style is going to uh come out on top, so Yeah, man, and I love shit like that, man. I love the fact that we have two very interesting styles that are gonna clash and we're gonna see who's gonna be better. I know it Fazeev He's definitely stronger, like round one, round two. Mateus is a guy where if he can survive somebody with an onslaught type of style, he can win, you know, three, four, five, or he can even win on the cards. He can do enough to win, you know, later on in the fight to claim the decision. Uh, and it's going to be very interesting to see. And I and that's one thing I really want to see is how Mateus can handle the power of Fiziv and if Fiziv's power will be enough to even... Not even get him out, but at least get him, like, get the respect of Mateus. Because if you don't get his respect, then Gamera will just take the fight over. Yeah, man. And it's one of those things, like, it feels like MMA is the only sport that just shits on credentials. Like, it doesn't take credentials, seriously, if you don't know how to apply it. Like, right. Uh, uh, yeah, like, I know you. Watching you, you, you know, um, cover different combat sports, it doesn't seem like there's as many like crazy offsets as yeah i feel like mma is its own unique thing it's the most unpredictable sport man like, it is it's the fact it's that, like strickland's able to outstrike adesanya for five rounds we right thought strickland was gonna win it was gonna be like a lucky punch right yeah outstriking him for five like all what other sport does that bro like what other sport has that type of scenario happening now you know what i mean it's crazy bro this this sport doesn't give a shit about anybody bro. yeah that's that's what makes mma unique within itself it's really one where it's all about the fighting style because everybody one thing is like even somebody that's dominant there's always somebody with a style out there that'll give them problems in a fight and then it'll really test somebody that's dominant even if you are dominant even if you're not you're always going to be tested in every fight you're pretty much in, and at any given moment, you know, you'll run into somebody that you think you can beat, but then when the style really takes over, you know, it's a totally different world. So, yeah, it's it's definitely unique within itself to see MMA produce a lot more upsets, especially this year. Especially yeah, this year. A lot more than I remember seeing in a lot of other years. Yeah, it's like if you're already in the UFC, you're a top fighter, man. Like, in the, especially if you're, like, top ten, top five. Right. Anybody can win on any given night, pretty much. Absolutely. Anybody can win on any given night. By the way, who do you have in the co main event? Uh, I would say the other, I would say, like, really big foul is Carbo Dane, and Bryce Mitchell, considering everything that's on the line, kind of, for both, in a way. Well, I, I, I was thinking Bryce Mitchell just stylistically, but I'm hoping that he's focusing more on his fight more than Flat Earth here, so. <laughs> right. Like, it's. <laughs> And, and you know what was interesting about him, and I didn't even realize this until deep into his run, he never had, like, a proper gym and training camp. He was, like, a farm boy, pretty much, like, training on his farm and shit, like, and yeah, just... Yeah, just, like, yeah. in a backyard with the cows and, you know, just some hays and pads. Yeah, and, like, I didn't even realize that for the longest time, and I'm like, damn, so he's going full old school with it, and then when he fought Taportia, he just became completely fucking exposed. Yeah, man, I mean, maybe, did he move gyms? I don't know. Uh, oh, I'm not... Other than just kind of... Yeah. You know, I'm... Talking about just uh, the cra crazy things outside of 
sport, so... Yeah, like, I, I'm not sure where he's at now. I think they'll have, like, more info on that, but I'm with you, man. It's His future is really going to depend on if he joins a legitimate gym because you can't just fucking be... Do it farm boy old school style here. You know, if this was, like, UFC 1, you know, that's fine, but, you know, we're fucking near UFC 300 now. By now... You got to have the right sparring partners, the right gym, the right training camp. Everything's got to be precise in order for you to develop. And if he's going to go into this with the same mindset and same training as he did before, I don't know if it's going to end well for him, to be honest. Yeah, man. So it's going to be interesting to see yeah, where his mindset is at, too. You right. Know, against Danny. He's, he's kind of a... Uh... He's on a streak right now, too, so... He is. He's on a very good win streak. And plus, Danny Ige, always good for a fun fight. Can never go wrong with him. Yeah, man. Absolutely. And actually, our main card's about to start with Jordan and Ramos. Uh, and actually, before they walk out here in a minute, who do you like in that fight? Just curiosity. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know much about both of the, any of them. Like, both of them. Yeah, Charles Jordan. Uh, oh, wait, Charles Jordan, yeah. Yeah. Uh, probably... Jordan, he just seems like more of a familiar name. Yeah, like, he's the guy that I know that basically reminded Crone Gracie, hey, you can't fucking fight like it's UFC 1 oh, <laughs> and pull yeah. guard. Yeah. yeah. That, was... That, that was fucking hilarious. But yeah, I'm kind of with you, though. I think Jordan would probably take this one. Yeah, I'll probably win a decision or something like that. No doubt, brother. Hey, I appreciate the call, my dude. Call in any time. Alright, man. Peace. Alright, I'm going. Appreciate the call right there, Kim and Ryder, calling in from Iowa. And, of course, if you want to call in, the number is... That's right, I got to point this way. Bam! Right up there behind my name. Or above my name. Uh, if you would like to call in, of course, chime in about the fights any time. Uh, we go over to John Gooden. Uh, of course, he's one of the uh, Euro people. Uh, how? Remember how bad Crone Greasy is? Oh, my God. Crone literally wanted to fight... Like, it was fucking UFC 1 and shit. My man wanted to say, hey, jump into my guard. Just jump into my guard. And Jordan's like, okay, and I'll just fucking hit you in the face then. Oh, my God. That man literally wanted to fight like his father. And it's like, you can't do that. <laughs> you got to evolve. And Crone's like, no. I'll just go in there with the jujitsu. And then he just got his face smashed in over and over again. That was a funny fight that he had. That, fu that return fight, that was hilarious. My man said... I want to fight like it's UFC 1, striker versus grappler. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck are you doing, man? Oh, that was so funny. I've seen better than both and striking. It's going to be a very interesting main event, funny enough. Actually, let me turn this back up. Cheers, folks. A little sip of water. We're doing praying for someone to jump in the guard. <laughs> Real shit. Real shit. By the way, folks, it's been a it's been a okay day. I'd say actually a pretty good day. Uh, wow, they didn't even update this. Anthony Yard and Zhang both got wins. Zhang destroyed Joy, Joe Joyce. By the way, folks, if you didn't see it, watch it back. Literally three rounds. He beat Joe Joyce as quickly as he did the first time. Uh, over on Bellator, we had Eblen Pico get wins. Brunel got a win. Collins got a win. Jaqueli beat a uh, stiff in Hamas. He just knocked him out cold. Peter Queeley, of course, fight ended in a no contest. I hope nobody signs that guy. And I hope he retires. And speaking of retiring, Daniel Weichel retired after Mads Brunel beat him. Daniel Weichel dropped the gloves. And so far in the UFC... We've had back-to-back -back decisions in bathroom break fights. Hannah Goldie notably losing. Muhammad Usman got a win after cheating. Uh, Cody Brundage got a win after being elbowed in the back of the head. Tim Means knocked out Andre Fialo. Uh, and then, of course, Miles John got a unanimous decision win over Dan Argetta. And now we start our main card portion uh, of the night here with the UFC with Charles Jordan and Ricardo Ramos. After that, Brian Battle, AJ Fletcher, Marina Gonzalez, M. Shell, Watterson Gomez, Brian Mitchell, Danny Gay co main event, and then Fazeev and Gamroot main event. So, five fight main card on deck. Un up next. Oh, this boy walking out to Kanye West and shit is Ramos. What's up, cuz? Ready for Air Jordan? I'm ready for it, man. I am ready for it. 
I'm a CJ fan, Minty Betts. <laughs> Minty Betts. Oh, boy. I wonder, well, actually, I don't even have to wonder what Minty did for that job. We already know. I will say, though, I prefer her over, over Gianni any day. Gianni is old, his bets are garbage, and I can't stand listening to his analysis. So you know what, Minty, you're fine. I'll let her stay up there. Uh, I only think a point should be deductive changes uh, the current or future outcome of a fight. It clearly was deep enough to be a point. Oh, absolutely. Oh, shit, what's going on? Kiwi says, sure, all Brundage, give me a solid. Uh, I had him to win. Round one by DQ plus 1,800. <laughs> what the fuck? That is hilarious. By the way, Kiwi, I hope you're doing well, bro. That was a wild bet to make. And it's good to see you, Kenneth. Shout out for Philippines. Shout out to you, Kenneth, from the USA. By the way, speaking of Kiwi Australia and the Philippines, shout out to everybody uh, out of North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Australia, Asia, and, of course, Antarctica that are all watching tonight. It's been a great day. I hope everybody's uh I hope everybody's bets have cash. And by the way, I hope you bet on Zelly and Zhang and the under. That was my pick of the weekend. Both of them cashed out. So I hope if you added that to your parlays that it helped out your parlays. And no need to thank me. I am happy to give that out. Uh the juice member host is nice. Nah, Smitty bets are so much worse than Gianni. And you know I'm number one fan, Faye Gianni, dude. Well, that's the thing. They're both terrible. But here's the thing. If, if, if they're going to put terrible on my TV, at least make the terrible look somewhat presentable. Gianni has a face that looks like fried chicken. It looks like it's been under a melted... It looks like a melted candle, like somebody put a lighter to it for too long. Uh, round one. As soon as you do Ramos, then you see no cap. Well, that's the thing. Don't listen to her bets. Just look at her tits. You know what I mean? Don't listen to her betting advice. You just got to look at her face and look at the tits. Gianni, it, nothing nothing to look at on Gianni. He just looks like a melted candle in the face. A good kick to the body by Ramos. Good job by Ramos. And circling kick to the body by Jordan. See, fast and enough, at least. Exactly. Never take her betting advice, but just, just look at her for what she presents. And by presents, I mean the tits. Good kick to the body. High kick by Ramos. A pair of them. And a jab to the face. Beautiful jab by Ramos. I was about to say, like, her throwing units on Ramos, yeah, don't listen to that. Don't listen to that. She is there to be eye candy for all the degenerates out there. <laughs> I was full laughing. His face more melted. Jimmy Lennon Jr. or Gianni? Well, I would say Gianni because when you get a tan, the melted features show out a little bit more. Jimmy Lennon Jr. has enough decency to stay pale. That way we don't see how bad the wrinkles are. Whereas Gianni, he, he likes to be in that tanning bed like he's at Club Med. So you see all the features of the wrinkles on that uh, melted face. And there's a takedown there by Ramos as Jordan is holding on to the head. Holding on tight to it. And Ramos literally just chilling in side control now. Jordan holding on to the head acting like he's going to jump at Gilly. But really he's just holding the head for dear life and... Trying to survive here as Ramos is on the side. Is Jordan going for a sub? Yeah, I'm about to say, you just holding on to head, bro. Let the head go, man. Let it go. Let it go, Jordan. That ain't really a choke. That ain't really a choke. Just let it go. He's still holding on to this damn head like it's a real choke. Jordan, let it go, bro. Let it go. Ramos is in a half guard. I'm waiting for Georgina to let us... Now he lets it go. But what the... F goes right back to it like he's going to jump a gilly. This is so weird of Jordan on the floor to do that. Let's see, Ramos with a beautiful cartwheel pass. Full on, man. It clear. It, I can clearly tell that Ramos has a better ground game, but I'm wondering why Jordan is like committed to holding on to the head here. This is so fucking weird. It's not even a guillotine. He's just, like, wrapping his arm around the head. I'm like, are you that desperate for a, a grip there? If so, Ramos is about to really school him on the ground. Good jab now by Ramos. Ramos really torturing the man now. 
CJ's shook. Oh, he's feeling that wave line. Flu choke. Ramos has a John Doe spinning back hook on kick. Oh, wow. Now Ramos charging. Goes for another takedown. But what the fuck? Jordan again going for a ring. I can choke off the back. Oh, he got it that time. Finally, he got it. He actually locked it up and got it. That fucker just kept holding on to the head. But he finally locked it up and got it. Jordan got the tap. Fuck. God damn, man. He finally got it. That man was just holding on to the head, never getting a guillotine, but when he locked it, he got it. He locked it and got it. Ramos got caught. Jordan with the sub. That was beautiful. Beautiful. Wow. Jordan with the sub, man. Oh, shit. What up, Peace? What up, man? William, good to see you, bro. McTappen, wait, what? Scram was all over. That was beautiful, too. I wasn't even sure Jordan would get that choke, but he was able to get it. Ramos got the takedown, but... Ugh, got him. 10 unit cash. Thanks, Bimbo, says Dub C. Beautiful choke right there. Beautiful choke. Got that man in a sub in round one. Beautiful. Let's see, that was a terrible choke. Now I feel like BS is nuts. That man definitely got caught. He got caught up in something he didn't expect to be in. That's what happened right there. Got the wrong rounds as Pullman. Yeah, that's what happened right there. Ramos got caught in something he wasn't ready to get caught in. And that shit scared him and he tapped out. That's what happened. That man got scared as hell. You, you right about that, though. That man could definitely get out of it if he was calm and... Use some scrambling, but I guess he he panicked right there. Whew. Let's see, crazy how the army and guillotine still works at levels of fun flow. You ain't lying about that, bro. He got that man, and I think he scared him too with it. He was like, "Oh shit, I got fucking caught in that," and he did not he did not expect that. I guess he wasn't ready for the consequences. See what's up, guys. Hey, cheers to you, bro. Cheers to you, guys. Animal Room is alive and lit right now. Hey, I hope you guys are enjoying yourselves in there. We're kicking back and having a fun time. Folks, I'll be right back. I'm going to go to the bathroom before these top four fights. Do not go anywhere. All right, I'm back. Boom, I am back. I think Ramos spent all his money on Jordan and took him out. <laughs> Let's see what's up, aunt. Good to see you, aunt, of course. Good to see all y'all. Cheers to y'all. Cheers to your aunt. Go ahead and load up the bong here real quick. Cheers, folks. Bye.
by the way, I think that is Notre Dame, Ohio State. That is next. Yes, it is. OFJ's clone understands guillotines when he returns. Thoughts and predictions for Fergie versus Pimple. Uh, that's pretty much the UFC sending a message to Tony Ferguson that we want you to retire. And the way they're doing that is they are going to serve him up to people that are going to destroy him and embarrass him. So that is the UFC sending a message basically to Tony Ferguson is what that is. It's an execution, but also a message. And the message is, Tony, we want you to retire. They can't make him, so they're going to they're gonna make sure he's embarrassed and beaten down all the way until he does. Let's see, cloning machine down for maintenance. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's see, fight pass, LFA cage wars, all that. Oh, that's right. GSP is grappling in December. I forgot about that. I guess I'll have to do that then since it's GSP. Eh, I don't mind it. It's grappling, but hey, it's GSP, so why not? I can make the exception for that. And now I see Brian Battle warming up. By the way, folks, only four fights left. Brian Battle, AJ Fletcher, Marina Rodriguez, and the karate hottie, Michelle Waterson. Oh, Gomez? Oh, I forgot. She's like... Got the double last name now. Uh, Mr. Fruit Trees Inbred uh, Arkansas. Part of the country. Deliverance Boy himself. Sling Blade Bryce Mitchell. Fighting uh, Dan 50K Ige. Uh, Bryce Mitchell fighting for all the flat earthers, the inbred, as well as all the spectrum children out there. And then in the main event, Fazeev and Gamrut are going to go to war. For five rounds, which should be fun. That is going to be a crowd pleaser right there. That is such a good fight that they shouldn't have put that in the apex. The fact that you put that in the apex in front of nobody is kind of a crime, actually. Let's see, the clone is broken. Yeah, but try to get that guy from C fix it. Pullman's laughing. We actually got quite a card here. And remember, everybody, next week there's no UFC. Next week there is no UFC. Just in case you're wondering, not any UFC until, by the way, shout out to Zhang who got the win earlier. They still didn't update it, those slow bastards. Uh, contender next next Tuesday. Next Friday night, both one championship in the morning and then one at night. I forgot we got fucking Stamp Fairtex headline in the night card. So we get two one cards next Friday, as well as Contender Tuesday. And then Saturday... The debut is Cedric Dumbay. I hate PFL with a passion, but Cedric Dumbay, I've been covering his career since he was a kickboxer, so it would be dumb of me now to not cover his MMA debut at a high stage. So I'll be covering that on Saturday morning. And then Saturday night, look at what we got next Saturday night. No UFC, but we do have Canelo and Charlo. That's going to be high level. That's going to be fun. Two undisputed champions fighting for the undisputed super middleweight title. Uh, then, of course, we have Contender, one of the final weeks. And then, look, we have literally back-to-back -back Fridays are going to have, like, two Friday fight night cards. So, one fight night 15 and one night one fight night 14. So, literally back-to-back -back prime cards on Fridays. That's going to be nice, along, along with Friday fights, of course. And I believe the next UFC card that's taking place is going to be uh, October the 7th. Where it's going to be Grant Dawson and Bobby Green. I don't know why they're main eventing. <laughs> Bobby Green, Grant Dawson. But that is a main event on a fight night. I don't know why. And look what else is coming up. Bellator 300. Not the final Bellator, but one of the final ones. Uh, Usman Nurmagomedov and Brett Primus are going to be fighting that day. So yeah, the next time we have the UFC is going to be October the 7th. It's going to be, it's going to be quite some time. They pretty much are taking a week off, and then they'll be back in October. So this is the last UFC card of the month. Let's see. Uh, hold on, I'll try to call David Blaine. Uh, let's see. Um, Musk said he'd be by next week. Brian, uh, Battle is a tough winner. Once upon a time, if you win uh, tough, you're more likely to win a UFC belt. Uh, nowadays, tough winner just uh, bottom and mid-level shit. <laughs> it is being the winner of tough has nowhere near um, the the prestige and honor that it usually does. And I guess it's just because the the quality of the talent is pretty low. 
Say fuck yeah to a OFC event. Yes, sir. It's going to be double the one next week. I can't wait. PFL, LOJ, I know, right? PFL Europe, of all things, too. Uh, I was waiting for a Diablo Negro to come uh, back from the bathroom break. <laughs> yes, that's fun as well. Oh, well, Jay Parker locked away to Halloween. This is I know, right? That probably would be the best time to do it. And I think, like, three days before is, like, fucking, I think, in God and Fury, like, three days before that. Let's see. Ratang has to come on this channel for an interview. Just thought about it. Makes total sense. Filthy Animal also more than welcome. This is Palman. Absolutely. Uh, if anybody can get a hold of him, that would that would be great. That would be awesome. I definitely would interview him on the channel. And it would make a lot of sense, actually. That would be a good one. I'm sure Superlek wouldn't mind it either. Then again, I don't know how good Rod Tang's English is. I think it's all right to where he might need a translator. But even so, that would that would be a good interview, though. That would be pretty cool. I like that idea. I believe they uh, are actually bringing out Brian Battle next, funny enough. Let's see. Let me send this out real quick. Uh, all right, boom. I had to send that link out. All right, up next, Brian Battle and AJ Fletcher. What has Battle done, by the way, since the Ultimate Fighter? What has he done? Because I know he has a knockout, but I need another record since then. Let me see. Submission, Tristan Gore, Sato. That's right, only lost to Fakhradina, but he did bounce back against Gabe. Oh, okay. Alright, so he's, he's had a nice little run then so far. Let's see, two wins, two losses. Beat uh, Garimbo, that's right. Fucking beat Garimbo recently, even though he got money from The Rock. <sighs> Brian Battle, got this by KTFO. Uh, damn, we have Fatata, he could be translated. That is true. That is very true. He could definitely help out. Absolutely, he would help out. Uh, Trachi want to go to guitar for an event with Rod Tang. That is very true, too. That's going to be wild. He's going to uh, guitar with him. They want to do the 1-165 event. You have Ken Translate, Joe Diaz, Translate for Yoel and JRE. <laughs> uh, Funs Flow, J. Kittle with a little bit mass Spanish accent. Joe was hilarious. It's Funs Flow. <laughs> Oh man, glad you guys were entertained by it, dude. That was that was a good at Mexican Independence Day there. Halloween, we'll probably do something similar. Probably do something similar for Halloween. Calling Rod Tank's team tonight, sick of weed. Hell yeah, definitely got it. Definitely got to talk to him, see what's up. Uh, Battle has lost weight since then. The funds flow looks like it too. It looks a little smaller. I would guillotine charge for Jesus, man. <laughs> oh shit, I love it. Crazy event, though. Really crazy to see 1FC with some of that oil monies. Yes, they do. They want the true oil monies. And I think on that 165 card where they're going to have the rematch with Super Lega Rod Tang, I think that's going to be a... That's like a numbered event, I believe. One 165 in guitar. Hold on. Let me see. Let's see. One 165. Okay, so not qu Okay, so they don't have it quite up yet. Let me see. We'll find 17. Let me see what they got booked up until this point, though. Let me see. Fight night 17, 16, Haggerty Andrade, Stamp and He. I know that one. Yeah, this fucking card. I know they got to change that because Superbon Tawanchi ain't going to fight. Okay, so they're gonna bug it, but yeah, that one in guitar, they want like I think like five title fights on that bitch. At least that's what Chatri wants anyway. Uh, let's see, Tony or Patty? Fuck, do I have to choose? Uh, I guess I do. I am gonna go. Uh, I'll go. I'll go for fucking. Um, I want Tony to win. I would love for Tony to win, but probably not. Let's see, yo, what's up, Jay Savage? Oh, shit, what's up, Granite? Great to see you, bro. Hope you're doing well, my guy. Just in time for the top four of the night. I hope you're doing well, my dude. Great to see you stop by, of course. 
By the way, cheers everybody. Cheers to you, of course, Granite, stopping through. See, Patty sub round two. Yeah, I can see that. Tony ain't winning any more fights as a Doomskin. Good to see a Doomskin. Yeah, he's not winning any more fights. That's who I want to win, but is he going to win? Fuck no, he's not. I don't like Patty at all. Uh, let's see. Five belts has a lot. That is a lot. Patty will win, and then Patty will end up fighting somebody later on down the <coughs> down the line with actual talent that'll run through. Uh, let's see, Triple G, what's up, my guy? Hell yeah. Good to see him in the building. And now we're about to see our next fight between Fletcher and Brian Battle. Now that we have our tape. Of course, Brian Battle, I forgot, got the fucking blonde hair going on and shit. Hope Tony wins. Can't take. Uh, Pimblet, sorry, yes. I know, right? I hate Pimblet. He's likely gonna win, though, because Tony is shot, but... I would love a miracle to happen, though. That'd be funny. And, of course, Patty would deserve it. Tony equals CTE. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Paul, maybe it's a flow nose. What's up, Gary? And there's Fletcher being introduced first. AJ Fletcher proudly introduced first. And there's Brian Battle. A little prayer to the heavens there. Oh, wait. Oh, shit. AJ walking up to him like, yo, I want to fight right now. <laughs> Fucking Mergliata had to step in. Brian the Butcher Battle. That is actually a good nickname because he did butcher his last opponent. Here we go, folks. Round one. Fletcher. And battle. Boom. Already Fletcher with the early pressure right out the gate. Step into battle. Low kick now by AJ. Low kick now by Fletcher. Push kick now by battle. Low kicks by Fletcher. 440 to go now. Jab there, just missed by Fletcher. Fletcher, good right hand. A high kick by battle, push kick by battle, and a straight jab. Low kick by Fletcher. Fletcher with a lot of stance, switching and fainting, trying to give battle some different looks. There's a good low kick for him that lands. Battle, push kick to the body. 1-2 by AJ. Actually hitting him hard right there. Low kick by AJ. Brian Battle still calm though. Being being pressured a bit. But still. AJ with a with the, with the foot on the gas here. Despite the fact that Brian Battle is being calm. There's a low kick now by AJ. Brian Battle really needs to throw something here. Because right now AJ is just out throwing him. Push kick to the body by battle. There's a pair of them now to the body. Only one really landed. Low kick by battle. Jab by battle. Low kick now by Fletcher. Push kick now by, by battle. Jab by battle. Down, down about three minutes to go here. Just about three minutes to go. Good. Push kick to the body by battle. Good. Four piece there by AJ. All to the head. Still keeping the range. Still sticking and moving. Good hook now by AJ. Push kick for battle to the body. Another kick to the bat body by battle. AJ still being patient, still waiting on him. Battle got the stance a little bit closed in there. There's kick to the body. Low kick by AJ to counter. 
AJ still being the aggressor and still being more active, whereas Battle is kind of just standing there a little bit. Being a little more reactive. More movement for AJ there. There's a kick to the body by Battle. Battle switches stances. Still pressing forward. Jab now by Battle. 1-2 by AJ. Right behind the guard. Right behind the defensive guard there of Battle. Push kick to the body by Battle. That doesn't even land. Another push kick just hits the air. He's just swinging at air now. Good hook now by Battle. Battle lands that one flush straight jab by Battle again. Kick to the body by Battle. Another kick to the body by Battle. Low kick by AJ's there. Interesting to see Battle just kind of stance switch here, kind of take this, take his time. You would think he would try to hunt a little bit more, but not quite. The battle is more so being patient this time around. There's a good one, too, now by AJ. Starting to get through and land a lot on Battle here, and that's kind of concerning considering Battle uh, doesn't mind starting fast in some situations. It's got to be more methodical here. Down to one minute. A lot of lateral movement by AJ. Sticking and moving now on the lateral end of life. Whereas Battle now trying to be the aggressor. There's kick to the body by Battle yet again. Not a lot of volume for Battle here. This has been all AJ. Now a high kick by Battle and a good jab, but a good one too by AJ to counter. Low kick by Battle. Low kick by AJ. Both match each other on that. Oh, Battle shoots in. I'm sorry, AJ shoots it on Battle. AJ shoots it on Battle, and Battle able to defend a takedown from AJ. Now they're going to work the clinch right along the fence. Oh, big eight elbow by AJ. Fucking rock Battle and dropped into a damn knee. Oh, my God. AJ dropped Battle to his knees there with a fucking elbow. Now a low kick by AJ Fletcher. Shit, Battle is kind of getting, getting Battle tested here. AJ dropped that fucker with that beautiful elbow. Kicks to the body by battle, and he's clearly shaking after that. God damn. Oh, my goodness. That elbow flush right there, man. Full lush. Animal Room having an amazing time in there, man. Crazy shit. Absolutely crazy shit. I love it, though. He fucking hit. Somehow, AJ able to tag him. Fuck. Oh, wait, we're up here now with the ESPN pulling a fast one on me. Fletcher didn't land or throw as much, but that knockdown right there, boom. Fucking put him down and was clearly enough to take the advantage right there. And a Maroon going wild after that. By the way, on the poll, 20 votes in with Fazeev, kind of leading Gamrud in the poll right there. And I have Voldemort. <laughs> he says bad X. I want to say AJ definitely looks uh looks very Vold Voldemort-ish. Think I seen AJ Six Sense movie. <laughs> oh man, Fletcher's as white as the ghost. Uh, Emrod and Watterson are gonna beat uh the pace out of each other later. <laughs> oh boy. AJ definitely looks like he hasn't hit a fucking, uh, AJ Fletcher looks like he hasn't hit a fucking, uh, tan room in a little bit. Fletcher definitely struggling right about now is old Voldemort Fletcher here. Paranormal activity in the octagon. <laughs> oh, man. Surprisingly, Voldemort in the lead. Battle didn't see that elbow. Oh, he definitely didn't see that shit. He definitely didn't see that. Nah, so I can't battle... Anything has to be puzzled. I think he's afraid. I think the elbows have him, like, kind of turtling up and uh, pausing a bit. Is that Josh Koscheck, says Ann William? <laughs> that blonde fucking hair. <laughs> I love it. Fletcher Face Killer, says Kiwi Bro. That is spot on, brother. That is spot on right there. Good work by AJ here. See if AJ can get him down. Able to work. Battle over into the cage wall here. Just kind of holding him in this clinch. Going to try to press him against the fence wall as well. Keep that momentum there. Keep that momentum forward, of course, for AJ. Battle landing some knees to the body. Another knee to the body by uh, by Fletcher. Another one by... Not Fletcher, I'm sorry. Fucking uh, Battle. And now another one by Battle. He's a spamming knees to the body now as Battle. 
Knee after knee after knee. Another knee by uh, by battle. Another knee by battle. Literally just spamming these for points. Another knee lands. Another knee's there. Good. That one lands the body. Literally just spamming them. And this is the most, uh, I'd say the most luck that battle has had. This is very slow. And AJ needs to get the fuck off the fence. Brian Battle is literally just going to hold on to him with the control time and spam knees of the body, but AJ needs to get the fuck off the fence because Voldemort Fletcher right about now is, uh, I'd say, eating way too much. You don't want to be here with the, both control time racking up against you and the volume and knee strikes working against you. You don't want that. And strikes in general. Knee by Fletcher, knee by Battle. Battle's still leaning on him. Break it up, Dan. I'm with you. It's time to break this shit up. Even though Battle is going low. Yeah. The, oh! Battle gets him down? Yeah, I guess he gets him down. AJ holding on to the head to make sure that takedown doesn't count against him. But it is. It's going to count against you, my guy. You may not want it to, but it will. He's holding on to the head of AJ now. Oh my god, this is a very awkward looking takedown there by a battle. Now he's going for the arm. Straight arm bar. Thought about a straight arm bar. Not going to Americana or nothing. Thought about a straight arm, but let that go. He's in a half guard right now on top of AJ. That was a very awkward transition to the ground, but he got it there. At least he got it there. Good elbow by battle. More elbows by battle now. Jabs now by uh, by battle. More punches by battle. Spamming him to the head. Down to a minute 30. Spamming it big time. And now, Brian Battle now going to try to avoid the wrist control. There's now some hammer fists to the side of the head. He's trying to rack up these ground strikes to give, give himself some consideration this round. He is in the half guard. He's a little... He's not finish hungry, though. That's my only problem with this. It, is it effective? Yes. But is it finish hungry? Fuck no, it is not. It is not finish hungry at all. Hollow Man getting whooped. He really is. This is a friend. Uh, red card. Thought I found a punch. I, absolutely, man. It It's getting the job done, but it's not very crowd-pleasing. And by crowd-pleasing, I mean us, as there's nobody in the fucking apex for this. Oh, right arm going to the back. Oh, Brian Battle going to lean back, maybe. Lean back. Oh, that's deep. AJ going to tap. AJ going to fumble. Ah, he fumbled. He fumbled. Brian Battle with the tap. Brian Battle taps out AJ. AJ Fletcher. Voldemort tapped out. Damn. Wow. Brian Battle got that ass. Oh, man. Ooh. What a submission by Brian Battle. Wow. Fucking wow. Panic tap. Felt that way. Tap, tap, tap. <laughs> Definitely felt like a panic tap there. Oh, man. Man's as talented, hard to choke out a ghost. <laughs> Let's see. Tap chop. <laughs> oh, shit. Let out that battle cry. Wow. Animal room go crazy. Tap or nap. Cheers. Oh, my God. Absolutely crazy. So a ghost can be choked. Apparently, shit. Looks like it. Squeeze hard enough. That motherfucker can be choked. Look at that shit. Battle able to get it done. Able to drag him down. Backpack him. Get the arms wrapped underneath the chin. And it was night night for Fletcher. Fletcher with a good effort, man. Able to drop Battle to a knee. But 
It just wasn't enough in the end. Battle with a beautiful sub win. Let's see. Who's ahead now after that? Teddy, 28. Hart, 27. Oliveira, 26. 25 is Cody. 24 is Kiwi. 18 is BT. These Nuggets. Uh, these McNuggets. Priscilla Mello. Alex Ashban and AWS. 17, Baba Chuck. 15, Dougie Davis. Banjo Sandwich. 13, Oxy. And Burner, 12. In a white paper review, uh, eight is Sparks Insight Detroit, uh, Granite, oh yeah, and Granite, six is Chris and Kanaka for a true blowjob gaming, and Robo three is Weedy, two is Tucker, and one is Pullman, still in the lead at foot 30, and he's pulling away pretty big, that's 365 right there, that's a big lead. Up next, everybody. Top three of the night. Bathroom break featured the Karate Hottie. And Marina Rodriguez. Bryce Mitchell. Dan Ige. Fazib. And Gam Root. Hey, dude, he's a fight at 155. I could agree. I could see that. I could agree with that. Put that one right there. Hold on. There we go. Fletcher needs a tan. <laughs> uh, cheers. Best commentator. I guess took an L. Need for the kid to get squirrel eating every half way out of there. Just keep up. Oh, oh no, we got us a call right here from Illinois. Oh shit, what's going on, Illinois? You are on with Jay. Hey, how's it going, Jay? This is Joseph Sasso, a longtime listener, man. Figured I'd give you a call before we get to the meet and greet of these uh, fights up here at the fight night shit. Oh, of course, brother. Of course. Good to hear from you, Sass. I've been a little bit. How's it's everything? Good to see. You. It's good to see, you, man. I appreciate you always doing content, bro. It's, it's especially hard with Bellator. You know, you did a great job tonight, like mixing up with all different angles and stuff. I know there was a lot going on tonight, bro. And like, I really appreciate you putting out the content for all of I us appreciate because it. you know sometimes unless we pay for it, you know, it's kind of hard to get to those. Hard. They don't have no streams for shit like that. Man, you're right about that, bro. It really is crazy how so many, like, companies put on big events at one time. It really does get cluttered after a while. But, hey, I'm glad I can help navigate everybody through as best I could. Yes, sir. And I just figured I'd call. You know, I got a lot of interest in uh, this fight coming up. Not the next one, but the one after that with Bryce Mitchell and Danny Gay. I sure, figured I'd call to, you know, chop it up, listen to your opinion if you have one on that fight. So, it's interesting. Uh, this is a... A good clash of styles right here. The, a better striker in Ige. You have Bryce Mitchell, more of the wrestling orientated guy. Um, right. What I, yeah. What I want to see from Bryce in this. What I'm curious about is, uh, what big adjustments he's going to make in this fight. Because in the Taporia fight, that one left him extremely exposed, and because of that, uh, it, it made him. It really showed a lot of holes in the game because you know very, <clears throat> excuse me, very strong wrestler. Uh, and, you know, somewhat well-rounded, but you can tell it needs a little bit more polishing to really take off as a contender. But I feel like in a fight like this, if he can take down Dan Ige, control him, and at least show a lot of aggressive nature in hunting for the finish, I think he can realistically get him. My concern for him, though, uh, if he runs into something from Ige, it might be night-night because Ige hits hard, man. He hits absolutely hard, and... Yeah, that is he, my... he counters pretty well to that, too. Like, he, get, he kind of sits back on some shots, so it's kind of an interesting stylistic matchup. And I was watching that Deporia versus Bryce Mitchell fight just to watch it back again just today, actually. And, like, man, if he, you're right, bro. Like, he did get exposed. And if he didn't, if he did not improve his boxing at least, like, a pretty good amount, like, right. he took a big step up with Deporia, but it's like, Man, he, he's got some of the worst boxing in the UFC, I'm not going to lie. He looks like me, and I've never even took a boxing class and shit, you know. just But I feel like I could throw an overhand right a little bit better than him and shit <laughs> because he's not even, like, setting up for anything, his boxing. But, you and know, he's, he, throwing, he, he's throwing majority of kicks in that fight, which right. was interesting. Yeah. Like, he was throwing the kick, the kick. It seemed like he was trying to throw, like, a jab-type kick. But, you know, I don't know if he usually does that, if that's his style, but... You know, it's just interesting fight, man. Like you said, if Dan Ige can hit him with something, it could be night night easily. Yeah, because one thing I wonder about Bryce, and for the for the longest time, 
he never really had like a proper team and training camp and stuff. He was mostly the guy that trained on his farm. And right, and he of... bragged about that, like making yeah. ESPN documentaries about this shit, like how he's lifting hay bales and shit. It's like, dude, like I can see to a certain extent, but you know, Khabib was wrestling bears at a young age, but he wasn't doing no bullshit on no farm. You know, dude was you know serious and stuff. It just. I don't know, man. I, I hope he doesn't get exposed tonight because, you know, who knows where his career trajectory could be at that point. Yeah, that that's what I wonder. And honestly, a fight like this is really going to tell us everything because, like you said, uh, the, the one thing about MMA is usually when a fighter loses, that's when we're really going to see if they're going to actually become good or not because in this sport... And, every... and he wasn't really talking, and I didn't see much about the interview. I didn't watch it back and stuff, so I can't really quote him too much, but it seemed like he wasn't really talking too much about like the technique that happened in the fight or anything. He just said like he went into that fight injured type shit, like yeah. almost saying he should have pulled out or something, but it's like, you know, his style in that fight just looks so fucking bad, bro. Like, I don't know, um, besides him getting the back into for you, but it's like, even when he did, he was, like, just struggling with everything. And then he was getting ragged out and shit. I mean, I get it. Tapori is good. But it's like, dude, he almost looked like a little kid out there at, at certain points and shit. He did. And it, it, the, the real unfortunate part about for Bryce is, you know, the, the ground game is clearly there. If he can round out, you know, like, the striking and round out everything on the feet, he seems like somebody I, that would I, fine, I hope but... he does, man. Like, yeah. I'm betting him tonight i'm praying for him you know i hope he does but it's like at the end of the night i could be sitting here you know as pissed as he is because he gets knocked out or something happens and just looking back on us talking thinking like you know he, he's got a long way to go but that's just interesting with the ufc man he's like talking a big game saying he's the next cash cow and stuff so i mean he's a minus 200 he should hopefully fight like it tonight that's what i'm thinking man that that's where my head's at with this my my to, for a fight like this, I think if Bryce Mitchell is going to have to come in with a game plan, mainly to keep it ground-oriented, and if he goes in there and imposes it round one, he should be fine. But if he's struggling right. early, and Ige is able to not Land even stuff the shots down, and maybe but, back yeah, him up a little bit. Right, and keep it standing a lot longer than Bryce is. Like, if Bryce is not shooting almost immediately... It's going to be a problem for him. And the, that that's and, and when really he backs talented. up against the cage, bro, like, I don't know if that was just a for you, but he literally looks, like, so fucking bad walking back into the cage. Like, it, it, like his movement in there uh, defensively yeah. when he's getting, str like, beat, like, struck-wise, like, box-wise, is, like, the worst I've ever seen. I mean, he's just backing up and, like, he tries to shoot for these dead takedowns. I mean, that's a for you fight, bro, like. I almost feel like that exposed him a lot, but, you know, he's got to look back on that, and tonight's a big night for him because it's like, dude, if he gets knocked out, man, he's going to be, he almost might be questioning his whole career and shit with fighting. I don't even know with that guy. It just might because really after kind of hyping himself up all week after the loss and saying that a fight like this will help position him in the weight class, you know, it is kind of must win because, you know, just the fight week alone kind of backed himself into a corner. So that's what's going to be interesting here. Can he stick to a game plan? Can he impose his will? And can he be dominant in the beginning? Because if Ige doesn't respect him or respect the fact that he's going to shoot low at some point, then he's going to be He's going to be getting off good strikes. Exactly, exactly. I appreciate you taking my call and being able to chop it up with you, man. I'm looking forward to that fight. I know we got Marina Rodriguez and... uh what's her michelle uh, uh whoever Watson, was that yeah. water spooner no I, I can't name her I, I can't think of her name right now she's got like a she's got like a hyphenated last name it's like waterson gomez now it's just fucking weird oh okay yeah i mean i'm not a big fan of her but it was funny the last time of this fight i ended up having quite a bit of money on marina rodriguez and yeah. i just remember telling myself i'm like I have no idea how this chick is a minus 300. I, I don't bet on MMA, women's MMA as much. I bet on Valentina Shevchenko, and luckily it was a draw. Right. But it's like, dude, it's just crazy, bro. She's a minus 300. And even that last fight, like, it was dicey as hell at the end. She's on, like, a three-fight losing streak. I mean, sometimes with this MMA shit, bro, like, even with Andre Fialo versus Tim Means and stuff, like, it seemed like Fialo should be good there, but... Yeah. You know, I don't know if it's the public just swaying these odds so much that it should be different. I don't know, man, but I try to stay away from just, like, looking at odds and thinking that, you know, it's going to play out that way. I really, you know, it's really just about how you feel about the fight. 
I'm right there with you, man, because you would think a line like that, like you said earlier, you would think it'd be better, but for some reason, the public just sees something, like, it's, they, it seems I mean, like they see something good on the scales, the know you know, it. Andre Fiala looked good on the scales, this and that, but it's like, yeah. dude, and he's lost his last couple fights, so, I mean, any fighter on losing streaks, and I feel like a couple, like, they put Grace on the block, even though he's 13-1, and one, but it's like, you know, th- this is a tough fight card, because I feel like a lot of these people... You know, everyone's going to take an L. Someone's going to take an L out of these fights, but it's like, you know, the, these are big chips on the table type shit for all these fighters. I agree, man. Way too much at stake, especially with a lot of the weird shit that's been happening with some of the calls tonight, like the decisions and, of course, the DQ earlier. Hey, how, how did you elbow. feel about that Brundage versus Malcoon? It's funny because yeah. I was like, dude, there's no way this guy should be a minus 600, <laughs> 590, whatever the fuck he was at. Yeah. And then they... And I'm like, see, when I just kind of tuned in when he got like the headbutt or whatever happened, the illegal yeah. elbow to the back of the head. And I'm like, okay, it's going to be, you know, just a, uh, uh, what's it called? Like a no contest or whatever. And then they called him a, a Cody Brundage, the winner and shit. I'm like, dude, that's crazy, bro. Like, <laughs> that is, is that, is that how you think it should have went down though? Uh, it, in that situation, is weird because I believe the last time I've seen it, uh, usually they do call it either a DQ or they'll do no contest. Like, I guess depending on how deep it is in the fight or whatever, but... Yeah, I just uh, figured yeah. maybe because it was still for the first round and, you know, I don't, they don't take into Malcolm winning that round or nothing, but it's like, it was yeah. still early in the fight, but... I guess they just have the discretion to call it as they want. Have you ever thought about looking into like the herd being a uh, referee and uh, j- like referee and type classes? Uh, I've heard that they started like offering them and stuff. Uh, I have. Yeah, and it's just interesting, itself. bro, with like Jason Herzog and Herb Dean, everybody in the UFC. Like, you know, they must yeah. have just started trying out the classes, getting certified, and just getting in there and try. I mean. I don't know how hard it is to actually get to that point, but that would be a cool ass job, bro. It's it's funny you say that because Chris Levin, who's a former UFC fighter, he's actually a certified judge now. Funny enough, and I think he's, I think the first card he's working is this UFC card right now. Funny enough. Damn, man! I, should I stay away from that fight? Are you saying that? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> for for like the first event, I would I would let him get a few events under his belt. You know. All right, I'll, I'll make sure to look out for the referee that's brand new type shit because I definitely don't want to bet on no shit that's going to come down to, like, some early stoppage or something, you know? Yeah, like, Chris Lieben is, like, a good former UFC fighter that knows what he's watching, but, yeah, I would give him, like, three, four UFC cards before I would start trusting anything that he has his judging on just in case, you know, he makes that rookie mistake, which is bound to happen. <laughs> All right, man. Hey, I appreciate you taking my call, bro. I'm going to take a walk over back to the sports book and watch the rest of these fights, man. But hopefully Bryce Mitchell gets a win tonight. I, I definitely hope he doesn't get put to sleep or some shit. Hell yeah, bro. Definitely call me anytime. And you know what? I think these top three fights are actually going to be very good. This card, surprisingly, is good enough to put in front of fans. I'm actually surprised they didn't consider it. Yeah, you know, it's like, dude, the UFC, it's like, unless it's a pay-per-view, they don't even really want to yeah. have fans. I mean, they do it sometimes and shit, but... You know, they, they got to do something in Vegas. Like, they do it once in a while uh, out there, but I guess maybe just because they've kind of been doing it, they said, we're going to take a break this week and just have the fights in the Apex or whatever. Yeah, like, uh, it's funny because I honestly, I remember when they did it and they, they had that one fight night card in that theater, like that small theater in Vegas. They should just do that more, like, if you don't want to have a big event and let fans in there, because the Apex is just right. so fucking Right, it changes quiet. a lot, bro, and, like, if you notice tonight, like, Brian Battle had the finish, we've seen quite a bit of finishes, I mean, maybe right. not too many, but, you know, the fights itself, it just kind of changes with the, uh, for better or worse, with the smaller cage and then the no crowd, like, it sometimes draws action and sometimes, you know, makes it uh, less action and shit like that. It does, man, and for for a card like this, having it in, like, a small venue with, like, just at least a decent or small, you know, little crowd for a small fight night, it's perfect if they don't want to go full venue for this, because the main event's Maybe too good to have I'm in just front thinking of about we haven't talked about it. Maybe just because the main event's such a quiet main event and really just, like, you know, to the point type shit, you know, it's not really going to draw a lot of tickets. Yeah. They were just like, let's just do this one in the Apex. It's cheaper, easier for them. 
I'm pretty sure they still have the fighters stay in the hotel. I don't know if they changed that or whatever, but it's like, you know, it's just way easier and shit. And they don't do the Apex too much no more. Yeah, it's it's pretty crazy, man. I do like that they are starting to branch out just a little bit more with the fight. I'm actually really planning on going to Vegas for the first time ever. I just already turned 30. I've never been out there, bro. I live in Chicago and shit. Oh, and man. Uh, yeah, I'm looking dude. forward. I hope I can get a chance to see a good UFC card while I'm out there because here in Illinois and Chicago, bro, we don't get nothing like that for UFC. Yeah, that's kind of the way it is here in D.C. Because, like, usually Vegas is, you know, obviously they're going to get a lot of the best ones. But you're right, man. If you go out there, you're bound to see something good. Hell yeah, man. Well, shit, let's let's chop it up later or something like that. Uh, when's the next show going to be, bro? Oh, no doubt. I'll be live Tuesday, man. I'll be live Tuesday for Contender Series. All right, for sure. I'll be tuning in Tuesday night, man. I appreciate you doing these shows and uh, taking my call, Jay. We'll chop it up soon. No doubt, Joseph Sass. I'll call it any time, brother. All right, take care, man. All right, have a good one, my dude. Thank you, you too. Peace. Appreciate the call right there, Joseph Sass. I'm calling in from Illinois. I appreciate that out there in the Midwest. Shout out to Illinois, of course, for Chicago and beyond. All the homies out in the shy. We are now about to get into our next fight, folks. Bit of a bathroom break, but still a bit interesting. And the reason I have some vested interest in this is because, let me just show y'all real quick as we get our intros. Marina has lost two in a row to Marina and to Amanda Limos. Last win was against Azonia Nyan. And then for Michelle, lost to Pinedo, lost to Limos, got subbed by her, and lost to Rodriguez already. And she's fighting Rodriguez again, trying to get that L back. Let's see if she can get that lick back. She needs it too. We, I, I think she might be fighting for her. I, I don't think they'll let her go, but I will say four losses is a good excuse to get rid of somebody, especially if they want to consider getting rid of somebody. Here we go, round number one. And already Michelle charging. Look at the takedown by Michelle. Not wasting any fucking time. I love it. Not wasting any time. Not a lot of energy exerted on that one. And already getting past the legs of Marina. Marina looks like she didn't expect it. Good elbow now for Michelle Watterson. Karate Hottie is coming out with the fucking fire out the gates. Just the crazy takedown. Now that top that top work about to be put in now. Let's see, still ranked 12. How about that? Kick her in the face water then. Crowd shot your name. You gotta fight harder. That's true. R.P. Lucesso. Uh, just like on the Reigns, quick decisions, going for the upset, maybe this fun's flow. You know what? It's a possibility. They went ahead and they booked this one. Uh, and I assume they want Karate to, uh, they, they want the hottie to, of course, get her fucking lick back. But we'll see if she get it. Uh, both mid-tier bathroom rig fighters, you're not wrong about that, Kevin. <laughs> Let's see, AJ, by the way, good to see you, AJ. Hope you're doing well, my dude. I almost forgot to tell you what's up. See, Karate Dummy, indeed. Definitely hasn't looked good in her last few. Hopefully she can turn it around here, but we'll have to wait and see. She hasn't she hasn't looked the best in a good while, but she's looking solid here so far. Gonzalez gotta lower the center of gravity. You ain't lying about that, brother. Ain't lying about that at all. Down to 320 to go. Good knee by Rodriguez in the face. Elbow by Rodriguez. Beautiful elbow in the clinch right there. Knee by Karate Hattie is there. Knee by Watterson. Knee by Rodriguez. Look at those knees to the body. Those are like rapid fire knees to the body. Another knee to the body by Rodriguez. Watterson going low. And now there's Watterson to desperately shoot. Holding on tight. Let's see. 2.45 to go. Karate Hattie should fight IQ. Uh, should fight IQ first fight. Remember, Kenny, right? You talk about how Michelle should have went for Tate Nash's fight. Probably should a hard fight IQ versus fight. That's very true. She was pretty bad with the fight IQ for a while. This time, actually using it, was actually pretty surprised that she got it. Gomez is always, uh, always have, always will have a fatty. <laughs> hard knee. You ain't lying about that. Go oh, damn. Marina, Marina really got in with a strong strike right there. There's a good knee right there. Now an elbow for Marina. Oh, that knee. Oh, my God. Oh, she pinging her head around. Now, Rodriguez going crazy. Watterson trying to shoot. No, but Rodriguez stubs it. Ah, she stubbed it. Damn, Karate Hottie getting that head. 
Knee eating hottie. <laughs> knee eating hottie indeed. Oh my god. She ain't gonna be so hot after eating them knees. Oh, she's covering her face up. Damn. Ooh. Ooh, elbow. Knee. Oh. Oh, she leaking. She ain't hot. Oh, she ain't hot no more. Knee to the face. Now her elbow. She running. Oh my god. Oh my god. Jumping knee to the face. Three, four, five now for Rodriguez. This is an ass whooping. This is an ass whooping. The karate hottie ain't so hottie no more. There's a knee to the face. Elbow to the face. Oh! Elbow! She falling like a suitcase. Another elbow. Now a knee. So much blood. Oof. Knee to the face. Elbow. Another elbow. Oh my god. Knee to the face now. Hottie backing the fuck up. Knee to the face. Elbow. Slap. Elbow by Rodriguez. This is an ass whooping. This is a one-sided beat down. Ooh! Elbow, knees, more elbows, elbow, elbow. God, she's bleeding like a... Oh, my God, she's bleeding like a damn faucet. Ah, oh, elbow again! Ooh! Ooh, look at Michelle's face, bro. That face is fried. More elbows. She's trying to desperately shoot. What in the fuck, ref? Stop it! Stop the fight! <laughs> She's still trying to fight back. But shit. Now, Carrie Hatley, DDP, saying timeout. Ooh. Ooh. -hoo. Oh, she cut bad. They need to stop this shit. End it. End it. She's been running like a track star ever since that. Bro, is she crying? God damn, she 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 crying and shit. Yo, go ahead, yeah, finish this. Ref! Oh my god! Oh my lord! Are you an idiot? Are you a fucking idiot? Ah! Nah! 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 Stop this fight now! Stop it now! No! Ah! Knee to the face of the combo! Try it! Ah! Maria takes it down! Yo, what the fuck is up with this doctor, bro? This doctor is a piece of shit. He said, fuck it. Go back in there. Get your ass whooped some more. She's not even fighting back. <laughs> oh, my God. She's not even fighting back anymore. Like, And Dominic Cruz calls that good referee. Dom, fuck you. Dom, shut the fuck up. He said that's good referee. She's not fighting back. She, God damn, she's spitting blood. Oh my God. Bloody fucking mess, man. I can't believe Dom Cruz said that's good referee. <laughs> ah! Holy fuck. Oh! Jab, knee, fucking cross. Oh! Elbow to the face. Another elbow, about a six piece right there. And Michelle, like, fuck. Stop hitting me. Stop hitting me. She's not even fighting back anymore. She's like, I don't want to play this shit. She's like, I don't even want to play no more. Oh my god, they really gonna let her fight on round two. I, I can't believe this shit. I can't believe this. Wow. Is she even gonna fight back though? That's my question. Are you even going to fight back? Oh, Chad from Marina. Oh shit, AJ with a trifecta. AJ with the five pieces. Everyone, wake the fuck up. Thank you, by the way, AJ, for the five piece, my dude. Just sent that one in. I appreciate it, my guy. I owe you a trifecta for that. I'll load it up as we watch this i'm pretty sure this ain't gonna last another round right here look at her damn shirt michelle's shirt is covered in just blood bro that's a blood bath that's a blood bath and a half now waterson gonna clinch she's gonna clinch and now hug up with uh with rodriguez here cheers by the way aj part one for you bro Round two. And then 
round three, I'm going to sip my beer. Whew. There we go. Shit, good knee now by Watterson. Wow, Watterson just throws her to the floor. And look at that. Watterson just gets thrown to the floor. Rodriguez is fucking bullying her now. And now we'll get jabbed now by Watterson. But what are you doing? This is wild right here. This is just Marina beating up on old Watterson. Oh, let me hit this shit. This shit's so on fire. Hit this again. This clinch is awful violent. Leaves herself out. A damn big elbow now by Rodriguez on Watterson's face. Watterson is just getting bullied now in this tight clinch. Now some knees to the body. One of them going to land to the head again. She's going to get her fucking head split. Fire that corner. No one in Watterson's corner cares enough to save her. Damn, I know, right? Not even her husband. How? Where is her husband with the fucking... God damn, stuff and take down to Rodriguez. Now full mouth. Full mouth for Rodriguez. Yeah, they stopped it. They stopped it. God damn. Ooh. Oh. Is she crying? Oh my God, I think Watterson might be crying, folks. She might be crying for real. That's crazy. Oh my God, there's the elbow, elbow. Yeah. Head stop that shit. These women are savages, real shit. They are savages, bro. How the fuck do you not stop that? How do you not stop that? If you are, yeah, I'm about to say, fucking right, uh, Watterson is crying like a motherfucker now. She got her ass whooped, and now she's crying on the floor and shit. Watterson gonna cry in the car on the way home, and all cause, all, all cause nobody stopped that shit early. <laughs> that damn knee ruined her life, and she just got beaten up after that. She did nothing. She took an extended beat down for literally nothing. The money over cash is, I see what they did there, it's just <laughs> There you dumbass refs is that way, real shit. Look at that! Look at how much, look at those shots in the head. Man, let's get that fucking uh, sling blade out of here for a minute. I'll get to you later, bro. But look at that. 59 shots to the head. Look at her, look at the damage that she fucking ate. <laughs> she got her ass kicked for nothing. 13 significant strikes, 20 total, 98 total, and 80 significant. 59 went to the head, 20 to the body, but 59 to the fucking head. No wonder she was crying. <laughs> she got her the face caved in. Oh, Lord. Abdul the Butcher. <laughs> Retire. Man, that's crying. They go ahead to get her a happy meal, cheer her up. The video fuckery really stopped it, I think. <laughs> in the clinch, you pull back. Uh, you stand straight to your shoulder. What the fuck was Watterson doing? She was a broken woman in there. Dane, I bet her ex-husband was a tough son of a bitch. Oh, he definitely kicked her ass. No doubt about that. He definitely used to kick her ass. No question there. No question there. God damn. It just left her to get her ass kicked in there. Watterson dropped them gloves, sweetheart. Dropped the gloves. She's crying. God damn. She's crying for real. Damn. She gonna be crying in the car on the way home. That is a rough, rough, rough way to go out. That's rough. Let's see who's up next. Ah, Sling Blade. Deliverance boy. We'll get to you in a minute though, son. Let's let's tend to this business first. Uh, Schwartz, you were still number one. I think Pullman's gonna take the victor, the victory this year. Uh, oh, this, this week, anyway. Uh, two is gonna be Tucker, three is Insight, and Weedy, five is Drew Blood, I'll give me six. Chris, seven is Insight, and, I'm sorry, um, In the Granite, and Sparks, nine, Dana White Pay-Per-View, ten, Gary Bader Sandwich, eleven is Robo, Burner, and Oxy, fourteen is Kanaka, and Dougie, sixteen is Papa Chuck, seventeen, AWS, Detroit, Alex, uh, Priscilla, 
These McNuggets and BT. 23, Sean Hart, 24, Kiwi, 25, Cody, 26, Ashkaban, and Oliveira, and 28 is Teddy. And up next, oh boy. By the way, uh, hold on. Yep, here he is, Thug Nasty. Yep, it's about that time again. I'm I'm nervous for this guy, Bryce the Country Man Show. <laughs> Never respected Watterson. Real shit. She took an ass whooping right there. The fucking warrior girl. Let's see, here comes very long Brazilian interview. See in four minutes. <laughs> see, Matt Sales, Charles Rosa, Feely, Barboza. Last loss was to Portia. I, I, oh, I want to see if he's uh, learned anything from this. By the way, he's training at, what is it? Barata MMA. With a Fight Club knockoff logo. Who are you training with? Wade the Hammer Johnson, who's that? Crocodile Howl, Chris Moya, and who the fuck are these people? You're training with a one and one amateur, two and two amateur, two and three uh, tomato can, a twelve and three decent guy, and that's it. So basically, this guy's training in his barn with his buddies. That's lovely. While Danny gaze at Extreme Couture. Oh boy. Oh man, this this could be ugly here. At least I hope not. Uh, in the interview, real shit. Flatter conspiracy. Maria, shut the hell up. Now I really need to see Bryce's low IQ ass get wrecked to cheer me up. <laughs> oh, no doubt. Mr. Banjo Boy, Mr. Oh, no doubt. Fucking brother and sister are probably uh, his mother and father. Uh. No doubt about it. He's definitely born, uh, definitely a product of incest. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure the birth defect he has is a fried up brain. But again, when your parents are brother and sister, that's what's going to happen. Very backwoods, incestuous mentality. He throws a lot of hail, uh, hay bales at his barn. Basically trains with a few of his buddies. Uh, is not at a proper gym. He is a strong wrestler, but some of the worst fucking striking you'll ever see. You'll see better striking, um, out in fucking cardio kickboxing classes. Uh, fucking Taibo, hosted by Billy Blanks and shit. You know what I mean? You'll see better striking in those classes. Uh, so yeah, this is, th th this man is fighting for every inbred backwoods motherfucker out there that believes in flat earth uh that believes in uh i'd say maybe not all government conspiracies but i say the dumb ones the ones that make sense okay but like the really fucking dumb ones you saw on like a facebook post he probably subscribes to that also he's a christian and while religion is very important and also a sensitive topic uh, the fact that he thinks that we have not evolved from monkeys tells you everything you need to know. That poor boy has been brainwashed. And it's not just because of his beliefs. It's because, again, when you come from a family uh, that probably used moonshine for his bathwater, uh, he probably had to eat paint chips as a child and wash it down with some of that silver swamp water. And I'm pretty sure his aunt and uncles are probably his cousins. Mother and father, likely brother and sister. All sorts of twisted sick shit in a deep southern bloodline. Uh, and I'm pretty sure by the time he's 70, both of his eyes are going to be blind. He's going to be playing a banjo in a rocking chair. Just all day, every day. Because all he knows how to do is fight and not anything else. Uh, again, his existence will make complete sense by the end of it. He's fighting for all the inbred people of the world. He's, again, only in MMA... Will you see an inbred uh, compete at this level? By the way, Mexican, it is good to see you, my dude. She did get her pussy beat, and it is terrible. But yeah, only in MMA where it is a sport where you can have the incestuous and the inbred try to rise up and become something. And right now, Bryce Mitchell is fighting for all of the inbred people of the world. Again, when you when you grow up on a paint chip and silver swamp water diet. With your shower water literally being moonshine that your father's pouring out of a fucking mason jar. Um, 
you know, it's not going to, it's, again, you're going to get results like this. You're going to have a guy who, who has clearly been brainwashed by all sorts of dumb shit. <laughs> the type of dumb shit that uh, Southern people believe when they're locked away in their homes because of all sorts of paranoia. Don't forget about the spitting in a small jar. Oh, no doubt. He's probably, and you know what? The only reason his teeth probably don't look like he brushes his uh, fucking, brushes them motherfuckers with a damn piece of wood is because he has enough money for decent dentures. Uh, Watterson, black all sponges with her knees and her nose, pure talent, real shit. Bryce fights all, for all the special needs. Absolutely. He, Bryce Mitchell is a prime example that if you are on the spectrum, you too can one day rise above and become something. Now, again, his schooling, like, we're talking about a guy who rode to school on a bus that was about this long. He had to wear a special little helmet, so his, you know, his hollow brain didn't get knocked around in the little bus. Uh, and then he had special classes in a trailer all day that probably didn't have any AC. The only air they had is when they opened... Uh, the fucking the fucking windows and let all the southern air pollution through the classroom there or the trailer in this case. So remember, there's not too much we can really res expect from this guy except to fight like an inbred maniac, an inbred American maniac. That's all we can expect from this guy. You know what I mean? When when you have that type of existence, fighting is your only means. Of becoming anything relevant in the world. So this guy needs to fight like his livelihood's on the line. Because I'm going to tell you right now. When he no longer has the sport to uh, fund his uh, lifestyle. He's going to be that blind guy sipping lemonade on a wooden rocking chair. Playing a banjo all day long. While he's waiting for one of his cousins to come over and blow him. Uh, let's see. A little more. Fights the box of feet of bed. Bryce Mitchell fucks chickens with a man and fight. Exactly. He covered in his own Carter Nas been a long ass day. Oh, I'm going to be passed out by the time that shit happens. Uh, let's see. Michelle Watterson release and sign to OnlyFans, says Alpha. Absolutely. Hopefully her face isn't too damaged, though, because she took a knee to the fucking face. Like, that knee to the face ruined her nose. I don't know if. I don't know if she could do OnlyFans after that, but I guess if the reconstruction's fine, she's all right. Fighting your way, absolutely. You got to fight all the way up. I didn't know Jay so passionately hated Bryce. I don't hate Bryce. I just feel like he's misunderstood. I feel like uh, a lot of people don't understand why he is the way he is, and I'm just explaining that when your existence... Uh, is in a trailer park and you bathed in moonshine and you ate paint chips and drank silver water, rode to school on a small bus with a helmet and had classes in a trailer. You know you're gonna have a you're you're, you're gonna have a certain view of the world, and unfortunately his view of the world is very skewed. But again, it's too late to fix him. You know he's already been through too much in his inbred life to go the other way. Give us another taste of banjo music. Oh no doubt. He's gonna be sit. He's gonna be sitting on his fucking, on his fucking little little rocking chair, all day long, sipping lemonade, looking blind. <laughs> Where the fuck is my sister over here to blow me? And of course, when his sister won't show up, he's gonna call one of his thirteen cousins to come over and blow him. Uh, inbreds are easy to hate. That, and they're very misunderstood. Imagine if that wasn't blood, if it was cocks out of her face, that's how this is Mexican D. Oh, no doubt. You would have to visualize that in order to get over the beatdown she just took. Uh, Embraid. Danny gave by disgusting bone-crunching walk off KO. Oh, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. And the worst part is, if he gets more, if, if Bryce Mitchell gets more CTE, just imagine what he's going to do. He's going to be one of those people that reads about uh, Pizzagate online and he's going to go storm a fucking like, sub shop thinking that uh, fucking little kids or immigrants are being held in the basement. He's only about maybe five knees of the head away from that. Uh, drinking sweet tea. <laughs> when Jay pulled out uh, the chair, I thought it was a reference to the Montgomery Brawl. <laughs> Shit. 
May as well be. Hillbilly Hell. Bryce Mitchell going to the Moonshiners after this. Oh, no doubt about it. He's 100% going Moonshiners. So y'all look up the Montgomery, the song Montgomery Prawl. <laughs> that song is fucking hilarious. Now that he mentioned it. Bryce has a master's degree in economics, says, you know, Alpha. Oh, I wouldn't doubt that at all. You can, you can pretty much get a master's in anything, really. It, all you need to do is just... Well, especially if you get it from, like, a southern school, it's not going to be that difficult. I will say, though, that man knows how to manage a good farm. He's a good farm manager, so it wouldn't surprise me that he at least knows a little bit about money and probably knows a little bit about horticulture and shit like that. That wouldn't surprise me. Let's see. Come on, Dan. Knock that out. A hick straight out of his overalls is Kiwi. Brian, Bryce Incest Mitchell, full on. Marijuana cheese. Marijuana cheese indeed. Cardio V. Grab this for you. That's the thing he's good at. <clears throat> Let's see. Bryce Pure Blooded Mitchell. <laughs> Let's see. Dan Ige, fastest, sixth fastest knockout featherweight in history. Oh, they took away all the other stats. Let's see. Oh, my God. Jay, so cool. That's cute. Bryce Retard Mitchell. Uh, I kissed upside the cranny with that aluminum bat. My name is Moise. <laughs> God, I love that song. And now here comes Bryce Mitchell. Says the man that lives near the best colleges in the country. <laughs> exactly. The Ivy League. Oh, no doubt. Oh, Lord. Here comes the banjo. <laughs> Motherfucker was only solo. And then, of course, right after he's done playing his guitar... He's going to go call one of his cousins to blow him, and then call his sister to come over and fuck him. <laughs> what an existence for old Brycey. Seriously, though, he should win this. If I'm being real, he should, he should win this. Ideally. But his last fight, it, it, boy, he got exposed. He was badly fucking exposed in his last fight. So the concern is still very much real for him, but uh, on paper, he should get this. Minus 200 for Bryce, plus 170 for Ige. I think that's, that, that's reasonable. Over 2.5, minus 260, under 2.5 at plus 200. Oh my god! Let's see, four bales of hay equals one jar of shine. Hillbilly economics. <laughs> oh, shit. Because Ben is a bad name. I give you days when I'm coming now. I really wanted to get killed. Uh, I do like that Oliver Anthony song. That is a good song. That is a good song. Need some KO's got to leave for Lion Fight. You got to let me know what Lion Fight is. Uh, nasty KO, gotta win this where he screws his Alex Small, and you're right about that. Bryce, new heavy favorite. Where's my cousin, sister, aunt, so I can give him the holding? <laughs> uh, Bryce, VC, Audi, Mitchell. What's Bryce singing? He's singing the Hillbilly Anthem. He's still in, singing the Hillbilly Anthem, America. Uh, the Hillbilly American Anthem. Uh, Jay's wild on this one. This two really ace the hoggies. I love it. Man is wild. Think about Bryce Mitchell is the man is vastly understood. It's a good thing this man can fight because there's not too much else he can really do. When it comes to top competition, Ige can't get over a, a hurdle. Ige not top dog in the division is nice. Vanilla Bryce, wild. <laughs> man, this going to be a good one. And Like real shit, this will be a good fight. Striker, grappler, I'll take it. Bryce is training with his buddies in the barn, though. That That's not a good sign. He's not at a proper gym. He's throwing hay bales around. His his striking is very average. His wrestling is phenomenal, though. Let's see. He's singing Cotton Eye Joe. Oh, no doubt. He's Hey, look. He's going to be doing the Cotton Eye Joe if fucking Ike hits. Oh, my Lord. My man's holding the Bible. He's holding up a Bible. Ah! <laughs>
is something else. This man is something else. I'm telling y'all, something ain't right with that man. That's that's the inbred brain. His inbred brain ain't right. <laughs> That man looks very angry, though. He got the inbred anger right now. <laughs> you sick motherfucker out of the Bible. Keep God out of this, you sick bastard. Oh, boy. <laughs> Big hook by Ige, though. Big hook by Dan Ige. Oh, my God. I got to get my fucking head together after that. Damn, Bryce. What the fuck are you doing, man? That damn Bible and shit. This man crazy. Double jab right hand for free kick. Oh my god. Sidekick by Bryce. Jab by Ige. Double jab by Ige now. What the fuck? Man, the animal are going to say it more than I can. They're like, what the fuck? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Good chat by Ige again. Bryce look a little nervous in there. There's a takedown by Bryce. Single leg. I've been waiting for this man trying to wrestle. Can you keep down Ige though? Can you keep Ige down? Ige though, kind of up for the moment. Oh! Oh, he stuffed. Oh! oh! He back up. Dan Ige's back up. That is not good. That's not good, Bryce. What you gonna do, fam? What you gonna do, fam? What the fuck was that kick attempt, Bryce? Double jabs out by Ige. Man, did a twirl after that kick. That was very interesting. Very interesting. Already there. Cut already. Oh, he is. Yeah, 253 to go. Good hook by Ige. Jabbed out by Bryce. Oh, this is getting tense. Here, Bryce Corner. Oh, takedown from... Stuffed again by Ige. What the fuck? Oh, never mind. He got him now. Got the head to body lock, so he did dump him. But Ige's back... Never mind. Back up. Bryce gets him down, but Ige right back up. Says, what made you drive to Bryce Mitchell's house and cut down his fruit trees, bruh? <laughs> Any grown man that got some fruit trees need to get his priorities straight. He need to be worried about that damn dog, not no damn fruity trees and shit. Then again, I think, actually, then again, I shout out to his girlfriend for doing that. Or at least taking the fall. Shit. Real one for that. Right hand by Ige. Low kick by Ige. Bryce Mitchell looks very concerned. Already cut in the face is Bryce Mitchell, by the way. A little bit of blood. Oh, wait. No, no. It's actually getting a little worse now. Blood coming down Mitchell's face underneath the eye. Jab now for... Oh, wait. Low kick now for Bryce, but it hit Ige on the dick. Now, 135 to go. Now, 130. Bryce going low now. Going low with the waist lock. Can he get the takedown, though? Can he get the takedown? Got the waist lock on tight. Drag him. Can he drag him to the floor? No, Bryce Mitchell just going to hold on. He can't even drag him. He's struggling here. He's got a hook in. Oh, tries to get him down. He does. Oh, yeah, okay. He's got him now. That looked a little weird, but he's got it now. He's got it. Oh, that's bad. That's bad for Ige. Bryce Mitchell is inside the guard. He's got the full mount. He's not he's not he's not fucking mounted up, but he's got full mount. He's laying on him in a full mount right now. This is where Bryce wants to be. This is where Bryce has been searching for the whole fight. This is where he's been searching for the whole fight. Right where he wants to be. Now what Bryce needs to do from here either go for the finish or just keep the striking activity high either get a TKO or at least score more that way it can you know count toward you if it goes to a decision that full mount is strong for him though oh now he pops up in it couple rights by Bryce 10 seconds he's running out of time he's running out of time Bryce there's an elbow Ah, uh, end of the round. The 
Ige gonna survive. Bryce looking for his position. Ige 10 9 says Maddox. That was what fucking Bryce was searching for the whole time. That's crazy. Ige definitely took the round, but Bryce took the momentum. I will say, interesting though, that Bryce has actually outstruck him by two. <laughs> See, Bryce did nothing with that takedown. He definitely did not. That takedown was big for him. It's If anything, it's a momentum gainer. Ige did enough to take the 10-9, um, but Bryce with the momentum into the next round. Ilya changed him. I agree with that insight. He definitely looked different in that first round. It's optics. Might go to Hibbs, AJ. It just might, especially since it, he got it at the end of the round and whatnot, but yeah, I'm with you. It's all about what these judges really rule because the, the criteria is never clear. It's always flip-flopping and shit. Bible do works. <laughs> this is nice. You ain't lying. That man held up the Bible and said, I'm going to do this in the name of God. He on some wild shit. Never thought I'd see him do that. Let's see. Croc hope to... Here we go. Round two. One zero. Bryce just came in. Brian, the Bible helped Mitch get the DT. By the way, minus 115 for both on the live line. What the fuck? Damn. Both are at minus 115 on the live line right now. That's crazy. Oh, three-piece for Ige now. And now Bryce going low immediately right after that three-piece. And now Ige going to sit on the head a little bit of Bryce to try to keep the sprawl there. But he's low enough to where Mitchell can't get this takedown. And he's going to get it. Yeah, he's going to get it. No, Ige stays up. Ige stays up. That was shocking. He stays up for the moment. But Bryce keeping the pressure on. And this clinch looks like it's going to be excruciating to deal with, even though Ige is able to reverse the position in it. I will say Bryce is now leaking down the face again. That blood once again coming down the face of Bryce. That cut has been reopened. Yep, that he is leaking. Absolutely, brother. That cut has been reopened on Bryce. That right eye... Uh, that opened up in the first round. It is now opening up again in the second round. Didn't take much either. There's a kick there by Bryce. Straight jab by Bryce. Jab by Ige. Ige switches stances. Waiting on Bryce. Hook now by Ige. Oh, that rattled Bryce. Bryce was skating on that one. He was skating on that one. What the fuck? Oh, no. Oh, no. They're bringing the doctor in to look at this. Damn, they're bringing the doctor in to look at it. That's a deep cut. Don't end it. Don't end it. He said, I, I'm okay. I can see. Oh, wait. That's close. Oh. Oh, that shit. Close it up. Time in. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, shit. Oh, stop takedown by Ige! He ate another punch. Ige stuffs the takedown. Now, Ige's on top. Now, look at Ige now move on the ground now. He was in the side for a minute. That's so bad. It is. His eye is closed, man. It is closed. And the fucking doctor's like, ah, fuck it. You can fight with one eye. Michael Bisming, Cyclops shit. Ige able to pop out. Look at Ige stuff him. Now, gets back up. Mitchell with a knee now to the body. Ige waiting, swinging with a big hook and a jab. Why well, Ige wrestling him? That's what I'm wondering. He finally let him back up. That eye is bad, says Alex. It is real bad, brother. It is real bad. Ige gonna make that thing. He's gonna make that thing worse too. That right eye of Mitchell is gonna really close up. I could tell Ige wants to throw more hooks and jabs at that thing. Jab by Bryce. Stuff takedown by Ige. Slips out. Look at Bryce. He's desperately shooting. Kick to the body now by Bryce. He's going to start to desperately shoot now. Ah, Michael Bisping joke. He's like, I oh, don't really need both your eyes. Good shot again. Oh, fucking slam by Bryce Mitchell. Clinch at a fucking boom. Straight in the mouth. Excellent takedown by Bryce. Straight in the mouth. Straight into the mount. Get a finish now, Bryce. You got the time. You got time on your side now. You got time on your side now. 
Don't let Ige back up. Nope. Oh, no! Now he's on the back. Now he's on the back. At least Bryce Mitchell able to stay with him on the back. Oh, no. Going for a rear naked right over the back. He's trying to work for that rear naked over the back now. Really trying to work the rear naked over the back. He's got a hook in. Right hook in for Mitchell. Trying to, he's got to, maybe try to go for the chin. No, he's got the hooks in. Oh, no, now he's going to split him. Yeah, now he's going to spread him out. Now he's going to split the legs apart, and he's going to spread him out. Going to try to spread him on the ground. Ige trying to escape. Wyatt, I mean, Bryce Mitchell, uh, and took that. <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, now there's a flat now by fucking Mitchell. Oh, shit. That's bad by Ige. That is bad. That is top. Oh, no. That's full mount now by Bryce. That's a full mount choke. He's trying to choke him in the full mount. 25 seconds to go. He's trying to get a choke in the full mount here. He could get it. That is tight. That is tight. But Ige's still showing that he's alive. He's showing he's alive. Ige still moving his arm 10 seconds to go. Ige trying to work on the bottom. Bryce is going to stay there, and there's the end of the row. That one could be for Bryce right there. Look at that. 36 29 on the total strike. Significant 21 to 20 in Bryce's favor. Bryce with the takedowns and the control. It is a close fight, but this is all... This is like momentum Bryce Mitchell right now. Momentum Bryce Mitchell right now. The inbred power has the momentum. And the question is, can he keep it? The wrestling is solid. The game plan is solid. Very close. Them judges, you already know. That's very true. Don't be too trusting of them judges now. Don't want to trust the judges too much. Don't want to do it too much. See, one eye is Hubbly Hunger. Bryce going to be calling his ex. <laughs> oh, shit. Could very well be. Bryce going to be calling his ex after this one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. That could happen. Oh, they're looking at Bryce's eye again. Yeah, don't fuck this up. Let him fight it out. Let the man fight it out. They're clearing him, though. Hey, he's going to fight off. Here we go, round three. Jab now for Bryce Mitchell. Good low kick for Bryce Mitchell. Bryce going low again for the takedown attempt. Bryce going low again for it. Going again with it. And a takedown there by Bryce is successful. He's all over Ige, though. Look at that. Now he's all over the back. The wrestling is tight for Mitchell, man. Very tight. Bryce going to be calling his ex after this one. Bryce 2 0. You don't need your eyes. See the Bible. Uh, God will give you all the fish. <laughs> Hills only have one eye. Movie reference. <laughs> Bad thing is he gets a murderous left hook for his Bryce circle and his power due to Bryce being southpaw. That is a very good point, too, fun as well. I'm surprised that Ige is on top. Oh, my God. Fucking Ige might be on. Oh, no. Never mind. Wait a minute, Bryce still maybe has control? Damn, this is AJ. Full on. Oh, this is crazy. We're going to need a banjo solo win or lose. Oh, no doubt about it. There'll be a banjo celebration or a, a, a banjo funeral, depending on the outcome of this. And look at Ken right here, right there. He's like, oh my God. <laughs> right back with this shit again. Mitchell with your fucking backpacking. Rolling over now is Mitchell. He's just holding Ige at the bottom now. Good punch there for Mitchell. Horrible position for Ige. Very horrible indeed. Horrible indeed. Down to 320. Well, 315 now on my clock. This has been all Bryce Mitchell ready. Ige, really Ige, you're going to let a blind man beat you? Real shit. You blind the man and you're going to let him fucking do this to you? You're going to let a blind inbred guy do that to you? About to flatten him today. Real shit. What the fuck, Ige? 
Ige is just letting this man hold on to him. The body triangle is tight. Bryce Mitchell has that right arm over him, and Ige has just been rendered useless at this point. And I, it really, it's like, what the fuck, man? You're going to be rendered useless by this shit? Bryce, though a badass transition to the back, high level. Very high level indeed, man. Where's Mike Bell? This better be a 10 8 round. This is because, right? You, real shit. Real shit, especially with this going on. Cheers, everybody. And now, Bryce able to switch over to the mount. Transition from the back to the mount. That's a nice transition right there. Ige can't even get the fuck up. He's being smothered right now. Full on backpack. Ige back up to the feet. Walking over to the corner. And Bryce wins. I'm sending my cousin a dick pig. You might get mad though. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. It's like a frog finally up. <laughs> oh man. Crazy shit. Mitchell now dragging fucking Ige on the fence here. Ige tr desperately, just desperately trying to shake this off. It was a mistake for Bryce to let go of that waist lock for a mount. That is a fact of life. Can Bryce drag him to the floor? Not quite. Just waist lock city for him right now. With them damn legs far up. Oh, he got Ige up and slammed him. Oh my god, there's the fight. That is it. That is check fucking mate right there. That is check fucking mate. Oh, boy. Damn, Ige. You really let a guy with one eye do that to you? That's no bueno. No bueno. No fucking bueno. Goodness, man. Oh, my God. Bryce Mitchell really gonna win this shit. Even after all that damage you did, Ige, after all that shit you did, you gonna struggle with this motherfucker. Vegas judging, said what is straight, damage incorporated, shit, it just might happen. Uh, won't let go, Ige must be drained, oh yeah, he's done. Ige is about done now. Ige is el fido finito at this point, I'd say. I'd say it's comfortable to say that. 25 to go now. Let's see, pride rules, Bryce wins. <laughs> Real shit. 18 seconds to go. 10 seconds. Oh, Lord. Now, Ige gonna smother Bryce to end the fight? Gonna smother him, but I don't know if that's gonna be enough. End of the fight. Ige gonna raise his hands like he won. Bryce Mitchell gonna raise his hands like he won. Two to one, Bryce. Good fight. Oh, no doubt about that. Let's see. Half blind, but wins. Real shit. Half blind, but he took it. He took it. Bryce Mitchell, 39 total strikes. 24 significant. 31 for Ige. 20 significant. Uh, seems like when your soul. It's took fighter never the same since James Saturn. Definitely kind of feels that way, no doubt about that. See U D E G A says Paul Mini. <laughs> Whatever significant strikes from Bryce. Twenty for Ige. Uh ten to the head for Bryce. Sixteen to the head for Ige. Of course, five out of fifteen takedowns for Bryce in over seven and a half minutes of control time with one sub attempt. It'll be very interesting to see what they score this. I imagine Bryce Mitchell will take it two to one split down the middle. Nice fight. But, yeah, Bryce Mitchell deserves to be the winner here. Bryce deserves to win this shit. Yeah, Bryce won. Oh, no doubt. No doubt. Only way he doesn't is if some bullshit about to take place. Which could very well happen. He better to fight. Judges will call. Oh, no doubt. Judges might do some weird shit. UST. <laughs> oh, shit. See, I feel like this is how the main event will play out. I can see it. Very competitive. One person taking it. I can see it being competitive. And, like, if it's competitive, like, Gamroot probably will outlast Fazeev. If there's going to be a finish, especially early, I can see Fazeev getting it. Alright, let's see who won this. Here are the totals. 
327. 228. 228. Oh, that's Bryce all the way. That's Bryce all the way. There it is. Bryce Mitchell. Inbred wins it for all the incestual motherfuckers. Beautiful. That is a Bryce Mitchell victory. Unanimous decision. 327, 327. Oh, I'm sorry. 327, 29, 28, and 29, 28. Easy. Congrats to Bryce. Looked like God helped him for real. <laughs> yeah, he definitely helped him in that one. Let's fight a few more stand up and be honest. Damn, damn indeed. <laughs> Cable belt coming soon. Banjo. <laughs> Big old banjo win right there for Bryce. As good as it gets. He earned it though. He did earn it. Oh, he's giving money. Oh my god, Bryce, wait, Bryce got his Bible. He's got his Bible with him. <laughs> My man about to go into a sermon with that Bible, bro. <laughs> oh, my Lord. My man got the Bible. He got his arm around Ige. He cutting a sermon right now. <laughs> this fucking guy. Reverend Bryce. Good man, Bryce. He's a good man indeed. Good man to have his... Oh, my Lord. He wants to lead everybody in... <laughs> Bryce Mitchell just said he wants Danny Gay to lead the world in prayer against the power of Satan. Thank you, Reverend Bryce Mitchell. Oh, man. There you go. Don't oh, fuck with baby Jesus, bro. That's what I'm saying. My man, my man playing an interesting game with that. <laughs> Very interesting game is that. Oh, boy. All right, so let's see what the standings are. Let's see, 28 is NDT, 27 is Cody, 26 is Kiwi, 24 Detroit, and Ashba, 23 is Kanaka, 20 Oxy and Roberto, uh, as well as Oliveira, 19 is Granite, 8, 16 is Hart, and Chris, and Davis, 11 is BT, Dees McNuggets, Priscilla, uh, Smullen, and AWS, 9 Papa Chuck, and Beto Sandwich 8 is Strickland 7, Data White Pay-Per-View 6, Sparks 4, Drew Blowjob Gaming and Insights 3 is Weedy 2 is Tucker, and still, Pullman is at the top, 480 and up next is 5 rounds 5 rounds Ige's a good man for partaking <laughs> oh my god, he really is good man Dan Good man, Dan. Up next, our five-round main event, our showcase, if you will, our lightweight showcase. Hold up. Five-round lightweights. Ooh, give me that all day, every day. Bazeev and Gamaru. Gamaru wrestle fuck time. <laughs> oh, look at this shit. Bazeev. Last fight was a loss against Gaethje. That's fights. That was win was against uh, RDA, but goodness, that was only like a year ago though. It's been a while since he won. Beat Riddell. Uh, let's see. Beat Bobby Green. Beat Moicano. No, sorry, and beat Moicano. So he won like four in a row, and then Gaethje kind of derailed him. Gamrut. Uh, submission. KO. Decision. Lost to Darius. That was kind of a heartbreaking loss right there because I wanted Darius to win that so bad. Uh, and then, of course, beat Jalen Turner in the comeback fight for Gamrut. Oh, he lost it in there. Uh, let's see. I got Gamrut. Oh, hold up. Uh, let's see. When on the ground, I got Gamrut. Top of both. Yeah, it is pretty tough. But Bryce could have at least thrown three elbows. Real shit. Uh, let's see. If he comes back from getting his soul to the last fight, most guys will come back. Maybe Bryce will. It's always possible. At least he's got some time to develop there. I see, I ain't a flat earth, crash is seven, six, seven, west coast, it's Bryce Mitchell's the man, spams the USA flag, skates the USA flag, yep, let's see, Ige is a powerhouse, the bottom half of the division, that's about it, pretty much, let's see, Pole says, Fazeev, that is true, 
The Animal Room has voted for Fazeev at 57%, and Gamroot, of course, at 43 So a good amount of people think Fazeev will get it done early. One-Eyed Bismink say Worshippers is guilty. Gamroot can fight, definitely can. Uh, is a against Power Bottom? <laughs> you, you're... I just checked, found out that only Tucker can beat me in the last fight. That is true, says, that is true, Pullman. It, you and Tucker are tied, but Pullman, it looks like you could win here. It's like you could take it. Once I saw a giant ice wall. Once, I, I once saw the giant ice wall, says Gonzalez. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> saw the giant ice wall. <laughs> oh, shit. I love it. It is now main event time, man. Holy shit. We have been on for six hours and 58 minutes. About to be seven hours. Good shit. That is a pretty damn good day, man. And surprisingly, this is a pretty good uh, This is a pretty good main event, considering that this is an Apex card. I feel like we're getting a treat. Hey, man, first ever went on Rush Hour. Really? Wow. I didn't realize that was the first one. I did not realize that. Let's see, Cardio Vic, he really did sever. What the fuck? I know, right? My man brought out the whole Bible and did a, a, a whole speech out there. He even he even said before the power of Christ, I'll fucking win this fight. Damn, that'd be the biggest achievement of my life. <laughs> uh, the pool, my brother's flat earther. His theories are hilarious. Oh, man, we I got one in the family. Oh, yeah, I'm pretty sure we all know one. I have an uncle who's like that, and he's like in a legit mental institution now, funny enough. Cheers, everybody. There we go. Let's put this one in. Oh, they're just showing a physique promo. Oh, shit. There's a good uppercut. Knocked out somebody. Let's see. Say never talk about it again. Main event already. Yes, sir. Main event indeed. Five rounds, five minutes. Fazeev and Gamroot. It's been a good card, actually. The decision went for Bryce. Uh, One-sided ass whipping from Marina Rodriguez. Uh, let's see. Submission. Submission for Brian Battle. George Rodin. Uh, Maljan. Decision. Tim Means. K.O.N.E. Cody Brundage, disqualification, Muhammad Usman decision, uh, an OA decision, and Rendon easily decision. Let's see, cheers. Uh, che, casually passing, family trauma, all goes in a mental institution, funny enough. Oh, that's not even trauma. I don't even know that motherfucker like that. <laughs> I just know he's my uncle, but I don't really know him like that. Uh, let's see, 2 a.m., says Gary, 3 a.m. for Paul Miff, his evening, really had to defend. Uh, against someone who chains takedowns well is going to be interesting, says Ryder. This is very true. Fazeev is going to be in for like one of those really competitive clash styles where it's all going to be about how Fazeev handles the ground. Like if for Fazeev, if he could take get if Gamru can handle his power in the first two rounds, then Gamru will win. But if he can't, Fazeev is going to put him out early. Uh, let's see, gang here. Yo, what up, Derek? Great to see you, Derek. Hope you're doing well, my brother. Uh, see what's up. Zeev accepted his humble pie. Let's see how good it was. That's true. He got beaten up by Gaethje. By a better striker, he'll get beat. Now he's in there with a guy that's mainly going to be a grappler. Try to survive the early onslaught. Beat him in later rounds. Now we'll see what he's really made of in the trenches and shit. Let's see, this should be a good fight. Oh, it definitely will. It's going to tell us where Gamroot is. It's also going to tell us where Fazeev is. For Fazeev, he lost to, to Gaethje, but the question is, can he still be like the top of the crop when it comes to the new crop at Lightweight? For Gamroot, kind of the same thing. 
can he knock off a very dangerous guy that's ranked, I'd say, pretty pretty fairly in the division. If he can knock him off, gain some momentum, he can certainly put himself in a uh, contender conversation. The weight class does need to progress on because it seems like it's stalled by guys that don't really know if they want to go 55 or 70 and that just want to wait all the time. But guys like Gamrud, guys like Fazeev, they could easily fight for contendership and for championship status. I'd say sooner rather than later, considering where the weight class is right now, but that's what makes, a, I'd say, a main event exciting. A main event like this exciting is the fact that we get to see kind of who's going to be next in line in one of the more exciting weight classes in MMA. And a fight like this is a good indication of it. When we saw Gamrud and Saruki in fight, that was like a that was like a preview, like a sneak preview. A lot has happened in the weight class since then. You know, we have fucking Makachev as a champion now. He's about to rematch Oliveira, and Makachev's going to need himself some challengers because we need to cut down on the whole. Oh, let me fight a featherweight bullshit, or let me fight. Fucking Colby Covington at 70 bullshit. Like, we need to find some legit contenders for the guy. And keep 55 moving instead of just having this log jam of guys that want to be up and coming but never go anywhere because we have a champion that doesn't want to defend the belt against them. Uh, let's see, Gamer the Real Deal. Oh, yeah. Damn, now I got somebody because of Carlos Pig. <laughs> Gamer might win. Might have this with the rest that he got. Absolutely. Take a Muay Thai, I don't know if his seat takedown defense is that good. It's definitely not the best, but I will say the way, Jay, a fight like this is going to show us how good it is, if it is any good. Break up, let's see, just break up with her. I expect Fazeev to defend a couple, but it's fif the 15 attempt, 16, 17 attempt, that's true, Cayman. It's, it's when the takedowns add up in round 3, 4, and 5, and the attempts are at like 15, 16, 17, 18. Can Fazeev keep himself upright. If he can keep himself upright, his chances of winning increase. If he gets taken down, he may not make it the whole fight. Let's see, cheers, animals. Cheers to y'all. Cheers, brethren. Absolutely. Cheers to y'all, family. Cheers to y'all, family. And by the way, just as a reminder, everybody, since this is the main event, let me go ahead and preview next week like I do every single time, so... Next week's actually pretty wild. We got two events next uh, next Saturday. But here's how it's going to go down. My next show is going to be Tuesday night for Contender there. It'll be at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Danny Barlow against Raheem Forrest. This is week number eight, by the way, folks. So we only have like three weeks of Contender left. The series is almost done. And then on Friday... We have one Friday fights at Lupity Stadium, which will be going down in five days. That'll be at 8.30 in the morning. And then at nighttime, we have Stamp Fairtex and Zoe Hom. That'll be next Friday night's premiere fight on Amazon Prime. And then Saturday, remember, folks, no UFC next Saturday. No UFC. We do have... The pro, like the high level MMA debut of Cedric Dumbe. Unfortunately, it's in PFL Europe, which means that I'll be forced to watch that. Uh, PFL, fuck you for making me have to watch Cedric Dumbe's MMA run in your promotion. Uh, and then our premiere fight next Saturday. I know a lot of you are looking forward to this. Canelo and Jermel Charlo will be fighting also on that card. Erickson Lubin's on there, Elijah Garcia. Your Dennis Ugas and Mario Barrios. I'm looking forward to that fight. Frank Sanchez is on there. I think uh, Kermel Martin is on there. Yes, he is. Against Flores. Okay, so I'm going to do that whole fucking card, though. On Saturday night. So it's going to be a Canelo night next Saturday night, folks. But my next show on the channel will be Tuesday for a Contender Series. Just for the record. But here we go, folks. This is our main event of the night. It's been a crazy day and a damn good day of fights. We have a lot left, though. It's going to be a fun week next week. Here we go, folks. Undercard's pretty good, too. It is, man. I'm actually going to do the undercard, Weedy, funny enough, for Canelo Charlo. I love that undercard. I like Kermel Martin. I like Frank Martin. Uh, Barrios and Ugas is a fight that has my excitement, so I'm going to do that. Uh, Where's the rest of the chat? See, make these comments for the Silver Walker. <laughs> 
Actually, if you hit all messages, technically you can see it. Uh, 4 p.m. PFL UK says, Gary, yeah, that's right. That's an early one for you. That'll be like uh, afternoon for you, like I think like way early in the morning for me. Herb Dean is the ref for this, by the way. So next weekend it is, let's see, Contender, One Friday Fights, One Fight Night, uh, PFL Europe, and Canelo. Tra Damn, so I'm bringing you five events next uh, fucking week, folks. It's going to be busy. Even with no UFC, we don't sleep around here. Y'all know how we do. Just because there's no UFC don't mean we ain't got no fights. <laughs> Y'all know how we get down. Mateus Gamrut in a, in being introduced first. Amrot introduced first. 8 p.m. Lubbock, Texas. Shout out to you, bro, out there in Lubbock. It is 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time where I'm at. 9 o'clock! You know what I'm about to do? My ass going to the fucking bar tonight. Fucking early ass night, 9 o'clock? Shit, I'm going out drinking. 709 Boise. That is early. Shout out to you out there in Boise. By the way, shout out to those. It's like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. out there in Europe. Of course, uh, Netherlands and UK, respectively. Shout out to everybody in the Animal Room from North America, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia, Australia, and Antarctica. You guys are the best. I've had a great time watching all the fights with you guys today. We've been on for seven hours and ten minutes. Just another Saturday out here. 9-10, Boston, Texas, Tuesday. Oh, you know it, brother. Nice and early, I like it. It's like halftime of some of the night games in college football right now. So I'm about, I'm definitely going out tonight. Here we go, folks. Round numero uno. Let's get it. Round one. There, Let's see, I'm going to Lion Fight like a non casual. I'm sure you and all five people there will enjoy it. Uh, let's fucking go. This is AJ Kiwi Brew 11 on 9 a.m. Oh, very early, very early indeed. I to say, you're actually getting your day started at 11. Funny enough, good job by Gamera. These guys are already really measuring each other for Vaziv. What I'm expecting from him is to blitz early. Besides, I'm actually surprised you're not watching Risen tonight and you're actually going to Lion Fight. That is shocking. Good jab by Fazeev. Right to the body. Ready to do with the striking. Very slow striking. Now a kick for Fazeev. Gamroot hasn't even thrown anything yet. Now there's a jab by Gamroot. That's like a fucking minute into the fight he's throwing something. Gamroot, low kick. Shopping at the calf. waiting on him, which is kind of a surprise. I thought maybe he'd be he he'd be a little more aggressive. Let's see, Jay, you about two and a half percent away from six K, bro. You're not right about that. I mean, you're not wrong about that. I am at. Hold on, let me see what the number is now. Actually, as we wait for these two to actually have some sort of some sort of encounter. Good, right? And by Fazeev, yeah, we are at. 5,948. Jesus, this green screen bleeds into it. 5,948, that is amazing. Thank you all very much. We're very close to 6K. We're, I'd say, just about almost halfway there. Just about halfway there. Oh, good right hand now by uh, by Gavin Root. We need about 52 subscribers, and we're at 6K, which I think we probably can do before the end of the year. Camera yeah, finally exceeded. Oh, they both. Oh, okay. Fucking Fazeev got hit in the cup. They both go low. Oh, no. They're not going to stop it. He's a looking jab by Gamma Root. Switches stances. Oh, good combo. Now Gamma with a single leg. Single leg on Gamma Root. And look at Fazeev get away from the takedown and the damage. Fuck. Uh, thank you, by the way, Grant. Appreciate it, bro. No bother combo. Fazeev low stance. Oh, yeah, this is going to get crazy now. Amazing fight so far. It is, Maddox. This is going to get crazy. Shit, you less the one now. Just about, Funs Flow. Just about. Just about, I'd say. 
jabs by Gamru down to two minutes to go. I love the distance by Gamru. I know he's going to treetop him. <laughs> uh, oh man, he definitely did treetop that motherfucker. There's a good low kick by Fiziv. By the way, looking at the oh, just checking up some scores. There's a good jab by Gamru. It's about to admit just something about the Ohio State game, but no, this fight is actually better at the moment. These guys are being very, like, very cautious and very particular with the striking. Meaning that they're throwing precise strikes and they're not going too wild. There's a high kick by Gamrud, 1-2 by Fiziv. Chess match-like, but not boring. They're actually hurting each other. A couple swipes of some uh, hooks there by Fiziv. Low kick by Gamrud is lovely, and that is money. 1-2 by Gamrud. Gamrut misses with a wild swinging hook. The one two low kick by Gamrut. Along with the body kick. Body kick and a good low kick now by Fiziv. 55 seconds ago. 50 seconds ago. Gamrut is very. Very, I'd say, very brave just to kind of walk down with Fiziv here. Low kick in the jab. Not even shooting low as often as he would like. Or as often as I would expect anyway. He's kind of standing in there with him. It's a good one, two, and standing there. Jab now by Gamaru. Oh, I tried to go low with it from Fiziv, but it didn't work. One, two now by Gamaru. Straight down the center that landed on Fiziv's chin. Right back in the center, I can hear the Azerbaijani language being spoken in the corner of Z. They're probably shouting some shit at him. <laughs> yep, there's takedown ten by a Gamrut. High fucking ankle pick. Going low. Can he get it? Ah! ah! Almost got it. Wow. Fucking action packed to end the round. Almost got the takedown there from Gamrut. See, this is the type of shit I'm talking about. This is competitive, man. This is the competitive shit I'm talking about with Lightweight, you know? Let's see, chop it down like a tree, two animals, Fiziv looking for a liver kick. That's what I'm saying, man. Lightweight in the UFC is going to be fine and well, ladies and gentlemen. Lightweight's going to be fine and well. It's going to be in good hands moving forward. When you see good fights like this, you know there's some gold here. Uh, man, it's great balance, nice defense, real shit. This type of competitive fight is honestly exactly what we needed. It, it's exactly what we need to see. Nothing one-sided. You're getting some competition there, you know what I mean? Slight edge, I would say. He didn't get the takedown, though. There are the stats right there. Fiziv is leading in the striking. Gamrod didn't get credited with the takedown, though. Here we go, round two. Slight edge to Fiziv, though, 10-9. Slight edge, Fiziv, 10-9. Who got that one, Jace? It's Gary. I'm going to say Fiziv, 10-9. Feels like a 10-9 Fiziv round. Gamrod didn't quite get the takedown there, but still a very close round. I'll give Fiziv the nod because he's ahead in the striking. Gamrut, though, can easily put something together in terms of striking and some good groundwork. Like, he's trying to put in right here with the takedown attempt. But again, look at Fiziv. Wow! And fucking Gamrut, man. He just won't quit. He's relentless. Fiziv's got to be careful. See, the knees are down. He's now down on all fours. That takedown is going to count. Waste lock target now for Gamrut. Bro, we need good balance, true shit. The dexterity of Fiziv lays crazy, bro. It says front flow. Real shit, man. Real shit. Gamru is an animal, too. As savage as uh, as Granite pointed out, this man doesn't want to stop. Very relentless with the pressure. Relentless with the takedowns. Relentless with the grappling. And this is this, this is the contrast to Fiziv's style that we were going to see here. Can Fiziv stay up? So far, he's been able to stay up. Been able to defend these takedowns from Gamrut. Gamrut does finally have a takedown, but it's like he got him on all fours, didn't hold him there. But this is what we're but this is what we're gonna also find out. When the takedowns add up in round three, round four, round five, can Viziv keep that up if the fight's gonna continue that far? 
We're going to see if Aziv is going to have that war of attrition around 3, 4, and 5 if it goes that far. The way Gambrut fights, I think it will go that far. Eventually, he'll tire Fasiv out. Yeah, that's what I mean, man. That's that's what we're going to have to wait and see. If he's really going to tire him out. And if he does, oh, yeah. Fasiv needs KM. Oh, yeah. He needs to really get... Oh, no! He threw a K. Fasiv just entered his leg. He entered his leg. Oh, my God, no! Oh, Fasiv's leg. Oh, no! Oh, his knee. Oh! He threw a kick and it hit the elbow and he fucking destroyed his leg. Oh, no. Oh, no. No. The fucking elbow caught the knee on the kick. When you defend a kick with an elbow, folks, that shit will break a fucking bone. Oh, my God. Oh, that's bad. That's bad. When you block a kick with the elbow, you are at risk of breaking a fucking bone when that happens. And that's what happened here. Let me see if it's the knee, the foot, the shin. Let me see. Ah! 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 Oh, my God. He caught the, the shin, caught the elbow. Fuck! Oh, fuck. Oh my god, that hurts. I've hurt my own fucking leg in kickboxing that way. Ah! Ah, god. Fuck. Oh my god, and I think he blew his knee out. I think he might have blown the knee out even before he threw that kick or throwing the kick, but the fact that he caught it like that... And that I think he blew his knee out before that kick even landed makes it even worse. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's that fucking knee. He blew out his damn knee. First blocking a kick like that hurts. Blew his knee out for real. Yeah, that shit hurts. But the thing is, I think he might have blown his knee out before throwing that kick, which made it worse. He blew his knee out and then he threw the kick. Which hit the elbow, so that means his his leg got some bad damage. Not only did he blow his knee out, I think that same leg might have like literally caught some damage when he hit the fucking elbow with it. Oh, that's bad. His knee bent funny in the slow mo. It did. It did. Got to make sure I see which leg it is because I see I did see his leg like knee pop out when he threw the kick, but I. I have to make sure it's the same leg, but when he did land that, and the elbow did catch it, he went down immediately. I got I got to see another replay of that just to make sure. Oh what? Oh yeah, he's limping bad shit. Let me see. I th all right. Let me let me see on the replay here. Let me see. Threw it. Goes down. Oh, damn. So he blew his knee out before that terrible... Oh, yeah, see, now he caught the kick on the elbow, but he blew his knee out before it. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. See, that's what made... Oh, okay, yeah, that's what made it even worse. That's what made it even worse. He caught the kick on the elbow, which is painful. But he blew the other fucking knee out before the kick even landed. Oh my god. That's what fucking did it. That's what fucking did it. He blew his knee out when he threw the kick with the other... Oh, fuck. I figured maybe it was a weird thing where, like, your bone does break on an elbow. Because when you do block with elbows... Your fucking bone can break, and I have damaged my fucking... I have damaged my shin on that. And the way it the way it looked live, it looked like that, but looking in the replay at his other fucking leg, the leg he used to post with the kick, the post leg blew out. So I believe he, like, blew out his fucking knee before even delivering that kick, which honestly makes that whole thing even fucking worse. God damn. Oh my god. So it looked like a case of maybe the kick, but no, it was the, the leg. It was the other leg that he used to, to post when, not the kicking leg, but the other leg. That's fucked. Basically, basically, it's like blowing out your knee when you run 
or when you like just walk or some shit and all of a sudden you blow your knee. That's fucked up. That's really fucked up. He out for a while. Oh yeah, he's definitely out for a while. Unfortunate turn of events. Really unfortunate. Knee injuries are horrible. That is at least a year right there, man. That's about a year on the shelf for Viziv. That sucks too. Knee injuries are no joke. You about to be out for a whole year. Oh yeah. You're right about that. He's out for a year, man. At least a year plus. Because that's surgery. That's surgery plus rehab. Surgery and re... Yeah, that's about a year. And knee and knee rehab ain't no joke. You're, you're going to be in rehab for a long time with a knee injury like that. When you just blow it out the damn socket. Well, when you tear the fucking muscle, apparently. By the way, folks. Oh, fuck. Tucker ended up taking the win. Oh, that's fucked up. That's really fucked up luck. Tucker gets it with 515. Pullman ends uh, at number two. Weedy at number three finishes at number three with 450. Inside at four. Lone True Blood Dog Game is six sparks. Seven Dana White pay per view. Eight burner. Nine Bando Sandwich. Uh, and Papa Chuck. 11 AWS. Uh, Alex Oliveira. Priscilla. McNuggets, Oxy, and BT. Fuck. Uh, 18 is Chris and Hart. 21 is Granite, Osbon, and Detroit. 24 is Robo. 25, Kanaka. 26, Cody. 27, Teddy. And 28 is Kiwi. Man. That is such bad fucking luck. That is such bad fucking luck. Not only for a Pullman, but shit. Fucking Fazeev. Not just the... Actually, wait, let me see. Where was Fazeev even ranked at? Hold up. Let me see something. Because that's a year on the shelf. Uh, let me see. Islam. Where was Fazeev at? Oh, he was six? Oh, my God. That sucks right there. He was number six. Oh, shit. Calls are going to pour in. What's going on? You're on with G. Yo, what up, Cayman? Yo, what an unfortunate end for this there, man. I mean, that's gotta suck. It does, man. Blew out the leg. I, I figured maybe it was the bone-on-bone -bone contact it looked like, but apparently before that bone-on-bone -bone contact even happened that caused more pain, he blew out his fucking knee, which is honestly a worst-case scenario for him. Rank number six... Had a chance to get a big win in a main event five-round fight and put himself in position to maybe fight for a contendership one even Now we're talking like at least a year plus. And they're showing that replay and it's fucking horrible, bro. It's horrible, Cam. And he fucking, he posted his foot on the leg. And I've seen like weird shit like that where you take a step and your knee blows out. We've seen that before. And that, like you said, that is just unlucky, unfortunate, and oh man, that, that really sucks. Yeah, and it was turning out to be a great fight, and it's like, I, th I thought the fight was kind of pretty much going how I thought it would, like, I thought Fiziev will have success early, Yeah. and then the Emerald will start to find the grappling maybe later in the first round, and then obviously he got the takedown in the second, Fiziev got back up, but I thought the takedowns were gonna pour on, you know, like, as I said, it's 15, 16, 17, that type of stuff, but, right. yeah, it ended too early, so... I agree. By the way, uh, Funs Flow, have a good one, bro. I'll see you on Tuesday for Contender. He's peacing out. But yeah, man, I'm, I'm with you. What, what, what sucks about this one here is it was actually a really good competitive fight because what we were seeing was what happens when Fiziev is in a situation where he has to defend, you know, takedown after takedown after takedown, and he was actually doing decently well. Uh, of course, Gamroot was starting to really turn it up as well. You could start to see that he was really going to turn up the pacing and the grappling and that he was going to make this a, a night of hell uh, for Fiziev, but it's a night of hell for all the wrong reasons now for him, and that's that's what's really unfortunate, and not just that, but for Gamroot now, now that this, even though a win is a win, and I imagine he's going to move up from this, there's going to be an asterisk next to this fight now, and a lot of people are going to say, oh, he only won the main event because Fiziev fucking his knee popped out basically his knee exploded yeah man and you kind of, kind of have to wonder like you know mma is such like there's so many variables in it it might also be like the scrambles might also play a factor too you know like Absolutely. wrestlers get injured a lot during the scrambles and like that kind of like you know uh builds up wear and tear and 
and literally every part of your body, like your back, your legs, your neck, just everything hurts because it's just all fast moving. You're trying to like either take someone down, you're trying to stand back up. You're moving so fast that like, you know, those things might come back to bite you at some point, you know, sometimes. I mean, maybe like, it doesn't happen like very often, but it can right. definitely happen maybe once for, I don't know, uh, many, once per many fights, so. Absolutely. By the way, have a good one, uh, Gary and Granite. They're also going to uh, hit the bed, but um, I'm with you though, man. Uh, it's, so it's weird. It's like, who, after something like this, who do you really give Gamera at that point? Because, you know, while he showed a lot of poise against a guy uh, that was an amazing striker, that was a good striker, and, you know, was able to pour on that pressure, it's like, what do you really do with him now? I know, I don't know, maybe you give him, like, Poirier, you know? Yeah, Unless like... Poirier it, is gonna retire, I don't know. Yeah, it's like, it's weird, though, it's like, Poirier, even though that fight would make sense, it's like, yeah, is Poirier gonna retire, does he even want to fight like that? It, it puts Gamru in a really tough spot, Man, that sucks because a fight like this was supposed to clear shit up. Yeah, man, it's always sucks when that happened. I mean, this is the second pull, you know, like uh, that the opponent tried to kick and it backfired on that opponent, on them, you know, like right. first was Bohovic, Rakic, and now this Gamru and uh, Fiziev. Right. Don't take Polish people, I guess. It feels like it, man. It feels like it. It's, it's it's crazy, and you know, and it's funny you mentioned Rackage. Uh, by the way, good to see you, MMA. Has, has definitely been a name, my dude. But uh, you're right, though, mentioning Rackage. Rackage has been out a long time. Like I actually saw him do an interview recently, and now he's trying to make his way back. And we're talking, it's been at least a year, year and a half for that guy being out. And now Fiziev is in that same spot. And what's unfortunate is, you know, when that happened to Rackage, you know, Rackage, of course not really able to hold on to the spot because the division was starting to shuffle a little bit without him. And now, Fiziev is kind of in that same spot where the division can shuffle a bit without him around. Cause he, that, we're talking, like, you know, knee surgery, which is going to take at least a few, like, four or five months to recover thanks to modern medicine. And then rehab from knee surgery, which is probably going to be even longer than recovery from the actual surgery. So, you know what I mean? We're, we're talking at least a year, year and a half for Fiziev, and a lot is going to change in the division in about a year and a year and a half. Yeah, man. Some people come back from it, you know, um, in one piece, like you see, like, Tom Aspinall. Right. He's able to come back from it, but there's some guys like Thiago Santos who just never looked the same afterwards, you know, kept losing a bunch of fights. Yeah, it's tough, man. It's one of those things. It might actually be worse than head trauma in terms of uh, being able to perform perform right you know like the injuries like having an injury but still being able to perform it might be worse than head trauma you know because like the knee injuries it affects your ability to move if you're not fully recovered it might make you more tentative like there's a lot of different things that could happen you know but we're, let's you know let's just hope that like Fiziev is able to recover you know like and end up so like someone like Tom Aspinall you know is able to right. come back you know better than before you know that definitely be you know the best case scenario so I'm right there with you, man. I'm right there with you. I definitely appreciate the call, my brother. Calling any time. All right, man. Peace. All right, we go. Appreciate the call right there. Came in right or came in calling from Iowa. Uh, and by the way, folks, what a night indeed, man. It has been a crazy one. Zang in the first round. He did, man. Zang set him up with that punch nasty. He did, brother. That was like my favorite. I'd say my favorite performance of the day, uh, if I'm going to be honest. It was, uh, well... Actually, I'll get to everything else in a minute because even the Bellator one had its uh, had had some interesting moments there for for a little bit for what it was. Uh, but this card not too bad. Hold on, let me get rid of some of the shit. Let's, get rid of that. Let's see, is this even updated yet? So I can do the full results. Oh, not yet. Okay. So going back over the UFC real quick. I'm over down here. Wasn't bad. We had a must right decision. Uh, hold on. Yeah, we had a must right decision. Uh, let's see. We had another decision by a Noe decision from Muhammad Usman. A lot of weird shit happened in that one. A lot of eye pokes and all sorts of um, all sorts of very sketchy shit. Uh, there was that DQ with the elbows in the back of the head from Malcoon on Brundage. Uh, good KO by Means on Fialo. 
Decision by uh, Miles John, Charles Jordan with a good submission guillotine, Brian Battle with a rear naked choke, uh, Marina Rodriguez with a full mount, uh, front mount, punch. I'm sorry, punches from mount uh, to KO victory. And she just pummeled fucking Karate Hottie, and hopefully she continues retirement, considers retirement after that, because that was brutal. Bryce Mitchell with a unanimous decision, uh, victory. He could have been split there. And a very unfortunate. Uh, win for Gamera because of the knee injuries staying the fizz even. By the way, Nas, I hope you're doing good, my dude. I'll see you next week. Uh, and speaking of next week, by the way, the performance of the day, I'm going to give it to, uh, even though I, I like what Anthony Yard did, Yard impressed me. Impressed me a lot. Uh, it was against a, a replacement, but this right here was performance of the day for me. Uh, and actually, I'll get to that in a minute. Eblin got his finish. Uh, against Edwards, and actually, him and Leon Edwards got into a uh, a little like post match brawl there because I think Leon spit at him or something. Uh, Aaron Pico got in the win column, and by the way, this is twenty fights, the full on Bellator Dublin Sales Circus. Sarah Collins with a win, Mads Brunel with a dub, uh, Chakelli with a dub. Uh, let's see, Queely with the no contest there, of course, happened in his fight, uh, and then just a bunch of other prelim wins there. Uh, but performance of the day for me was this right here. Uh, and by the way, only this part of KFC. Yeah, I agree. Rod Tang, Super Light, basically own Friday. And arguably could own the weekend. But like performance of the day, I would say, is this right here with Zhang getting the win over Joyce. He is now officially 26-1 and one and 1. He finished Joyce quicker than he did in the first fight. First fight, it was by round 6. This fight, it was round three, and folks, we're talking Usyk for this guy. We're talking Fury for this guy, Wilder, Ruiz, Anthony Joshua, you know what I mean? Like, the bigger heavyweights now. And he's 40 years old, and he is the interim WBO champ. So, really, time is now for Zayn in terms of big fights. So, that was my performance of the day right there. And folks, remember, I will be live on Tuesday for Contender Series. That'll be the next time I go live. And also, folks, remember, there is no UFC next week. Just a little reminder, zero UFC next week. We have Contender Tuesday. Friday, we're doing a doubleheader. We got one Friday fights in the morning. And then at night, we have one fight night. So, in five days, I'm giving you a one doubleheader stamp. Damn, this is actually kind of a rough one here. Uh, women's MMA, women's Muay Thai, that'll be good. Well, the Muay Thai will be good. MMA, I don't know. But then again, it's stamped, so hopefully she can win it. Women's grappling, oh lord, we're going to be asleep for that. Strawy special rules, I think it's just like straight boxing. Uh, Lineker's on the card, Dimitri Minishkov's on the card against Runkle Wee. That's very, oh wow. They fucking threw him in there with a big Russian, with a big Russian. Holy shit! Edward Foleying and Amir Khan. What the fuck? <laughs> oh, I forgot. One has their own Amir Khan. I forgot about that. Uh, Aston Poe. That sounds like he's from the t uh, the other Poe family. And Rambo looks on the card. Okay, so it's not bad. Uh, and then of course one Friday fights. They don't have shit for that yet. But that'll be on Friday, and then next Saturday after the two one cards. Uh, this, I kind of don't want to do, but because it's Cedric Dube, I will cover it. Probably just going to do, like, the top two, three fights on it. Uh, and then, this is the big fight next Saturday, though. This, this is our big event next Saturday. Undisputed versus Undisputed. Canelo versus Charlo. The Undisputed Super Middleweight title. And believe it or not, folks, this whole card's good. Erickson Lubin, Jesus Ramos, I like that co-main event. Elijah Garcia and Armando uh, Rosen Diaz will be good. Ucas and Mario Barrios will be a fun fight. Frank Sanchez, of course, will be in there. Scott Alexander, I want to see him fight. And there's another name I want to see fight. Oh, yeah, Kermel Martin, who's managed by Floyd Mayweather and the money team. He will be on there as well. So that's actually a fire boxing card. So that'll be Saturday next week is Canelo. That'll be a monumental event, speaking of boxing. But yes, folks. Next time I'll be live will be on Tuesday for Contender. And also, just keep this in mind, it is week 8 of Contender Series. So, we have like maybe three of these bad boys left. 
This is crazy. We kind of flew through the season. But yeah, man. Hey, you all enjoy yourselves. Have a great rest of your weekend. Thank you all so much for hanging out. As always, you guys are the best. You filthy animals are... I mean, hey, hanging out with you guys is more entertaining than the fight sometimes. But you know what? Actually, I'd say pretty much all the time. <laughs> even with an amazing fight card, the animals make it even better. Folks, I'll see you all on Tuesday night. Till then, I'm God. <laughs>